When, where, what, and why. Nothing escapes the eyes of a reporter. A tragic haven occurred in the mine, burying the miners deep within. The incident has now claimed 13 deaths, with only one survivor. Hide here, and don't make a sound. Whenever in doubt. Curse, child! Your family is All dead. because of fun. Whenever trouble strikes. <sighs> Face it, and it'll all be over. That is what I've always believed. first letter was the prelude to a change in tone, an accentuated sign of fate's shifting course appeared on the night the second letter arrived. Those fragile wings flew in with the dying light forgot one simple truth. The purer the light, the deeper its shadow. Young, Young bamboo, bamboo shoots, shoots could brave, brave the bitter, bitter cold of winter, winter graceful, graceful and serene in, in the face of adversity. Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Give me, I must defy our mantra. What? Grace to the family. Was I the one who brought this misfortune? Chi. Chi. <gasps> no, I mustn't hide for the Shao family, for vindication, and for her 
a safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship. A life of uncertainty and diligence. My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinching and steadfast in the face of adversity. Strange joy to yugga through the void. Father of the million favorite ones. Stalker among the stars. Through the sacrifice of you all. Mm. The truth shall now be revealed. <laughs> Now this is the key shot. from the pompous sham of this show. You can now listen to the whisperer in darkness among the stars.
Team Tournament Analysis, Club Analysis, Highlights, Call of the Best 6 Global Final Spectators Guide EP2 Playoff Special is here. 20 clubs from 6 tournament regions clash for 10 days in the group stages. Combination in 12 clubs successfully advance into the playoffs. The playoffs will be held from April 30th to May 3rd. Lots will be drawn once again according to the results of the group stage. The battle is heating up. Who will take the championship? We can't wait. 12 clubs join lots again. Club Wobs, Club FBXZQ, Club AXZ, and Club Do5 will be advancing directly to the top eight. The remaining eight clubs will be facing each other in the round of 12 matches on the 30th. What kind of sparks will emerge from their clashes? Let's get into the pre-tournament analysis. In the upper left half of the round of 12, we have Club GG and Club ZT. The winner will advance into the top eight and face Club Wobs. Club ZT is from Southeast Asia and the only non-professional club to advance. Club ZT has been using the veterans lineup to take their opponents by surprise in the group stage. Zed had an average containment time of 122.2 seconds. Potato made a display of reliability with 1.73 average rescues. Mel Pai's multiple skillful maneuvers and the hunter dazzled the audience as well. At the champion of COA 4 and the 2022 IVO Autumn event, Club GG is no pushover. The hunter Zom is an extraordinary player who performed magnificently as guard 26 and a breaking wheel this year. Pipisha, the one who went from hunter to survivor, has never ceased to prove himself from IVL to CLA. His multiple astounding containment performances have left a deep impression on the audience. In their first match, Club ZT will face in powerhouse from the Chinese mainland, Club GG. Professional coaching has prepared Club GG with even more experience. It may prove to be an uphill battle for Club ZT, and the pressure they face is no laughing matter. The lineup, player strength, and match control displayed by Club Wolves was extremely mature. In Group D, aka the champions group of the group stages, they seized four consecutive victories and advanced to the top eight. Both Club GG and Club ZT have a fierce battle ahead of him, regardless of which club ends up facing Club Wolves. In the lower left half of the round of 12, we have Club FL and Club WBG. The winner of their match will face Club FPS ZQ. Club FL is from Japan. Club WBG and FPX ZQ are from the Chinese mainland. Club FL has been making a stable performance throughout this tournament. They made a huge show of strength in the group stages. The thrilling dungeon escapes of Umpire's Perspector left a deep impression on everyone. Hasha, their hunter, had an average elimination of three, securing Club FL's smooth advancement. Club WBG's overall style leans toward a steady yet aggressive style. Their survivors have outstanding cooperation, allowing them to achieve 2.2 average escapes in a group full of professional clubs like Group C. Club FL versus Club WBG will be the first clash of professional clubs from China and Japan in the playoffs. WBG's advantage lies in its abundant tournament and training experience, while FL has an extremely daring and aggressive style. The outcome of their match is unknown, but the winner of the two will be facing Club FPX ZQ. During the final match of Club FPX ZQ against Club GG in the group stage, they played an extra round after three draws. In the end, their survivor endured the extreme pressure of needing four escapes to advance and relied on their mutual understanding and cooperation to see the victory, allowing them to successfully advance to their top eight at the club with the highest points in their group. Regardless of whether it's Club WBG or Club FL, that ends up facing Club FPXAQ. A huge amount of mental fortitude will be necessary to seize points from them. Now that the analysis of the left half is over, let's move on to the right half. The first match in the upper right half is Club ACT versus Club GR. The winner of their match will face Club AXZ. Club ACT and GR are professional clubs from the Chinese mainland after losing two points in the group stage in their final match against Club WBG. Club ACT survivor achieved three escapes twice. Their hunter, Yue, accumulated on average a score of 11,675 to become the MVP. With their survivor and hunters working together, they succeeded in nabbing the ticket to the playoffs. In this year's COA, Club GR is picking back up where it left off in terms of performance. Super Rage made an amazing place with the Nyad, and even if they were put in a Group D, the champion group in the group stage, their survivor win rate was as high as 70%. In the match between Club GR and Club ACT, the two professional clubs that both played remarkably well in the group stage will need even greater mental fortitude and meticulousness in the playoffs, and the better of the two will be advancing. The winner of their match will be facing the Club AXG from Japan at the first club from Japan to enter the top eight. Club AXG survivor and hunter have quite impressive status. To mean their new hunter achieved an 80% win rate and average elimination of 3.4 right off the bat and climbed to the top of the rankings for hunter status and average eliminations. 
In the quarterfinals, both Club GR and Club ACT will have to research and come up with strategies to counter Club AXC in order to have a chance regardless of which club faces Club AXC in the end. The first match in the lower right half is Club Zeta versus Club GW, and winner of their battle will be up against Club Do5. Club Zeta has taken the championship for the 2022 IJL Summer and Autumn events, and they are just a COA championship away from the Grand Slam. Thus, they have strong desire to take the championship in this year's COA. Beside the dazzling performance of their members, their cooperation is similarly outstanding. Their survivors have a win rate of 72.7% with multiple 3 and 4 escapes. The Hunter, Elf, accomplished many overwhelming victories as well, with the Geisha that took everyone's breath away. It's Club GW's first time in the Global Finals. They advanced steadily and surely in the group stage, with the experts at the Dancer and Thief, Yin L and Dis on the survivor side, and an expert guard 26 player on E acting at their hunter. They may be a professional club too, but when they compared with Club Zeta, Club GW still has room for improvement. In the match against Club Zeta, the pressure on Club GW is obvious, and they will have to bring their A game. The winner of their clash will be facing Club Do5. Do 5's hunter, Don X, is one of the best hunters in the world. Game psychology, meticulous control, mastery of the game's rhythm, and characters pull. He's an expert on them all. And his advanced knowledge of the game keeps his opponents from creating a strategy against them. Even in the current region of COA where survivors have an advantage, he's still fully capable of contributing outstanding results like 3 and 4 eliminations. If Club GW advances to face Club Do5, whether Club GW will manage to overcome the doubts about it and eliminate Club Do5 will definitely be the talk of their town. If Club Zeta advances to face Club Do5 instead, we'll be in for a treat with the clash of the two clubs from China and Japan. They are the favorite to see the championship. Who will come out on top? In this year's COA 6 Global Finals, 20 clubs have come together to bring many thrilling battles that will take root deep within our hearts. And it allowed us to win their glories in the world championships, although some clubs regrettably had to leave. Their outstanding performance will always remain in our hearts and minds. RC AKA's Matt Ice and Smiley Face, SZ Mirai K's Nayed, Before You Sprinter, OM Nico, RD Realms Hermit, GH God J and MS Imso Ovios and Chen Tress. Let's look forward to their awesome performance next year. The playoffs are Identity Vibes Call of the Abyss. Six global finals is about to start with a ban. Brutal battles are coming. Who will write history? Who we have created a new legend, April 30th. We'll see you there. Then, this time of the game, it's just a daily grind. Then, see your own performance. If you can get things done, it's enough. For the right answer, what we need to do is get ourselves done. If you can get yourself done, you can get yourself done. You can get yourself done. 其实还好吧，因为心态这个东西，看每个人不一样吧，就是各个调整方式，然后，呃，尽力就好，尽力就好，尽量不要留下遗憾嘛，对吧？尽力就好。向光而生，永不言败。GR 加油 ！GR 永不言败，向光而生。监管者把把杀四个，求生者把把跑四个。GR 加油！深，这次深渊我们拿一个冠军。我是朱雀战队的粉丝，朱雀深渊六加油！希望你们。一步一个脚印，勇拿冠军。
Hello, everybody, and welcome to our final day of the Call of the Six Global Tournament. This will be the decider of who has the right to call themselves the champion of the world for Identity 5 of this year. My name is Eli O, joined here with Chocho, and we have two final matches in front of us today. It's going to be the Constellation Championship for third place and the Grand Finals match, uh, the most anticipated one of this event, and it's GG versus Dowu. That will be the, the second match for today. But Chocho, our first match ahead of us, we do have um you know two teams that i don't know if, ex if people a lot of people actually expected to be in this spot the bracket has really played out in a weird way throughout the majority of these playoffs but you know how, how are you excited how are you feeling about uh, our two matches today uh for sure um really excited to see how it's gonna play out third and fourth um money pool is really different so we'll see that in a bit but before that we'll be looking at the supporting submissions uh, participation uh participation rules on the left uh hashtag COE6 global support and tag game identity 5 there'll be three lucky supporting uh prize winners on the left as well as um this will be the for the season's SSS of course and then on the right we have only one winner for this random store a costume so do send in your um work and hopefully you do get what you deserve Absolutely. Uh, yeah, again, uh, hashtag Code 6 Global Support. I came Identity 5 um, for a chance to win Essences. Again, know how much you guys love your skins and your uh, um, random store A costume cards. So, you know, get try to get that uh, by submitting your um, support for this tournament. Obviously, this is the biggest tournament of the year, the most exciting one. I know I've said it before, but for me, always the Koa season, even more so than Christmas, which... I don't know, maybe that's a bit excessive, but it is what it is. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, it comes down to this. We've had the top 20 teams throughout the world make it to this event, and we're down to the final, uh, I guess, four, right? Fighting for third and fourth spot and fighting for first and second. Um, and it's really going to be some very close matchups in front of us. Very exciting. Um, you know, I think something we do need, do need to talk about a little bit here is that we see FPX EQ in the top four, which I think a lot of people probably didn't expect to make it this far, right? Going into this event, they are one of the, um, I would say probably one of the weaker IBL teams, and they still managed to make it into this third and fourth spot, which we do see uh, on the prize pool here, as you mentioned, separately uh, in terms of placement. We have 30, uh, 320,000 uh, Chinese Yuan and 270,000 for third and fourth, respectively. Uh, and you can see overall the first and second placement. And here's our bracket. Again, very... Um, a uh, very odd way this has played out. We've seen a lot of teams go through that we didn't really expect. You know, teams like GG taking down Wolves, uh, teams like GW taking down Zeta Division. Uh, and it's really just sort of uh, played out a lot differently than a lot of people predicted. Uh, don't look at my predictions. They're quite inaccurate. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have our two matches here in front of us. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you're yeah, looking at this GR versus FPX ZQ for the first match right after this. And afterwards, we'll be having Dou versus GG. This is the battle between who will be getting the champion role, uh, champion title, in fact. So, yep. Dou or GG, do, do bet your apples inside the game. Uh, there is still time. So, do that uh, before you kind of, you know, um, sit down, sit yourself down and watch this live stream. Today will be a long stream, so do have your water bottles with you, your snacks, your food. Get everything ready because today it will be as exciting as the last three days as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also your protein shakes if you're, you drink those as well. But anyways, um, we do have, yeah, first match for the day, GR versus FPX ZQ. Um, I think uh, going into this one, GR definitely will have an advantage being one of the very strong teams out of the, the Chinese mainland region. You do, these, do see the statistics in front of us. Um, the survivors of GR have been so strong throughout this event, 69%. Uh, on the, uh, the start when they're there for GR. Uh, before, I think it was 74 going into the matchup yesterday against Doe, but they did have some difficult matches there as Dong Shuen is continuing to prove why he's uh, statistically the strongest hunter in the world. Um, and then we also have the hunter side with Super Rich there. Um, you know, just average, for the most part, able to secure at least around two eliminations on average. And then of course, on the FPX CQ side, we have D leading the charge, most likely on the hunter side for FPX CQ. Although D has struggled, you see only a 17% win rate. He's lost almost 50% of his games in this event, Chojo. Um, so I think really one of the big factors here is, is D gonna even, what can he do against the GR survivors? We've seen them be so strong in this event. Obviously again, yesterday, a bit of a tough matchup for them. But D really needs to, he's got to work out his his issues here. He's got to work out his, his, his um, um, sort of the, the kinks in his gameplay. And if he doesn't, isn't able to do so, then uh, I think GR is going to have a, a pretty easy time in this matchup. So going into this one, GR definitely has the advantage. I would say at least a 65-35 in terms of percentages. But 
Um, yeah, we will see d take the stage. He has been very strong before Koa, um, so he's really gonna need to go back to those old roots and try to put it out here against this GR team. Yeah, for sure. Um, we to see the condition of these Hunt as well survivors, and yeah, right, right behind him, strangely, we have a huge piano right behind him. We don't usually see that, but maybe there might be a performance later on, so uh, keep a lookout for that, and right now we're seeing GR survivors probably coming up for this BO1 first half against FX ZQ Hunter D and looking into players introduction we have AK first with the Antiquary as well as Prospector that's the two main characters they usually play he played the forward as well as postman in the qualifiers too so maybe we, went, we might be seeing that but just looking at this win rate as well as this escape rate pretty high definitely do we do probably might be seeing him escaping and most likely getting that win for his team and 106 seconds of containment time or harassing time very long we got this and now moving on to Shadow Shadow being the one of the uh, main support players of GR, we've seen Escape Rate of 63, which is um, uh, definitely on the higher side. It, it indicates, obviously, a support character that doesn't take a lot of early kites, although it is technically possible uh, to get chased. Only about 58 seconds of average containment time, which again, when the average containment time is lower, but the escape rate is high, it indicates that that player is getting chased later in the game because they're not going to be able to kite as long once the hunter has full presence, obviously. Um, so first kiter is usually going to have the higher containment time um, and the lower escape rate, whereas in vice versa, we have Shadow obviously being one of the support players, so not taking first kite majority of the time. We also have Seizai as well, only 68 seconds as well, again with the 66 escape rate. Um, so again, for the most part, while we do see a lot of kiting characters here, Antiquarian and Patient, majority of the time, probably not uh, going to be uh, kiting first, depending on positioning, of course, and spawn layout. Also a 69% survivor win rate here. And again, this is one of these things, one of the things that's really going to show how strong this GR survivor team is. Been winning so many games in this Koa, but today is one of the most important ones, obviously. They really need, this is their last chance to secure that third spot in this global event. Yeah, and just looking at Hart now, we're seeing that his, um, Hex, I don't know, is it hexagon? I'm not too sure. Anyways, uh, some gun thingy looking pretty full. Uh, we're seeing hexagon, average yeah. of <laughs> 1.28 average rescues. Very stable rescue, I would say. And also an escape rate of 88.9%. That's the highest wow. among all of them, which kind of shows that they kind of guarantee at least a one escape from hard, which is a rescue role. Usually a tough rescuer role, like mercenary wilding that we're seeing especially. They do get the escape, whether it be dungeon or just forcing that get getting that one escape. So that is very important for this team not to get four eliminated, um, all killed by the opponent's hunter. And looking at this now, FX D, we do see the wax artist as well as Bon Bon. He played the Body Queen as well as N yesterday, so we might be seeing more of that later on. Stats is not looking really good. Seventy point two percent win rate and a pretty pretty okay thirteen point eight percent for elimination rate. We might be seeing less than a tie possibly because we have we have a one point seven nine average elimination. So um, if D can at least secure a tie and above situation, it's definitely a win for him. So let's just anticipate how it's gonna play out. And now coach introductions just a slight bit and. We might be heading right into the first match. So, looking at this itself, Eli, uh, we might possibly be seeing FPX ZQ with the possible map selection, I would say, seeing that GR servers came up first. So, is there any maps that FPX ZQ has particularly played better uh, against opon opponents, uh, opponent teams? Uh, I mean, not particularly. Again, they've been very inconsistent, which is another very interesting reason to see why we, you know, why they made it this far. Um, again, a, a team we didn't really pre predict to make it this far in this event, but they are here on the big stage. Um, and, you know, again, I, I think in terms of um, character pools, we have a lot of similar hunters. I think the best map for round one here uh, for FPX EQ is Red Church. Uh, Red Church is not incredibly strong for night. It's a little bit weaker. There's certain areas such as the, the church windows and those long walls around the church building can be very hard for a night to loop off uh, within a reasonable amount of time. Um, so, so Nyad isn't necessarily the strongest hunter for Red Church, whereas D is most likely to lead with Bon Bon or Bloody Queen, which we've seen him do quite often. Um, both those hunters are fine for Church, so I think most likely that'll be the best map um, for, uh, for FPX EQ if they have this selection available. However, I think if you're Jerry, you actually just ban Church, uh, and then at that point, they'll probably end up uh, on something like Arms Factory. Again, most likely FPX EQ is going to lead with a small map, opens up round one, Bon Bon, round one, Bloody Queen uh, for D. But, you know, we did see him lead Bloody Queen yesterday, and it was a four-survivor escape for GG. So, uh, again, against another very strong survivor team like GR, G D he has to be really careful. Uh, he needs to at least, you know, obviously secure kills. If he's not able to secure kills, the GR is easily going to run away with this match. 
Um, so I think that overall probably should try to go small map lead Bonbon. Bon. He's been more consistent with Bonbon bon than he has been with Bloody Queen. Um, so that should be the strategy here, I would imagine, for FPX EQ. Yeah, I think that would be the possible case. And speaking of Forest Gate, yesterday GR's match against Dou In the first match, Superbridge also got Forest Gate at Red Church using the Clerk. So both Hunters actually got Forest Gate on their first match yesterday. So let's see how they're going to recover from it, how's their condition today, and hopefully things do turn out for the better for both of them. Um, yeah, and speaking of GR survivors, they are very strong. They have been um, at least getting a tie situation and above for the team. But then again, it might not be enough considering how strong FPX ZQ survivors are. If you're looking at this as a whole, Eli, do you think GR survivors are stronger or do you think FPX ZQ survivors are stronger? Uh, well, definitely the GR survivors have, have better stats here. They've been playing way better throughout the majority of this event. You see, again, uh, almost a 70% survivor win rate. It's incredibly difficult to do. Uh, and that's including ties and um, losses as, uh, as as not winning games, I believe. So, and it looks like it is going to be, uh, GR actually is gonna go for, uh, for Arms Factory first here, which actually works out fine for both sides. Um, we do see, yeah, so GR actually has selection, so not FX CQ, which is actually gonna be very good for GR. They already are pretty advantaged in this matchup, uh, I would say, and on top of that, being able to go map first here is gonna, it's really gonna put them far out ahead um, so Arms Factory here, though, is, again, it's perfectly fine for, for, for D as well. Uh, you have Bon Bon, you have Bloody Queen. You got a lot of nice hunters that he can work, that he can potentially lead with here. Does remove some options. Obviously, we won't be able to see things such as Wax Artist, but I don't think D really minds. Um, let's see what he actually opts to ban first. Uh, I would not be surprised if he bans Mechanic early. Obviously, Dancer has to go first here uh, if he's trying to play something like Bon Bon. They might instant... No, they're going Merc Anti. I think you should ban Mechanic now. Uh, GR is going to immediately go into mechanic if they don't, if he doesn't do that. So, um, I think that's best. Yeah, if he's going to play Bonbon, bon. Mech has been so strong against the Bonbon we've seen throughout this event. But he actually is going to go Seer Patient, which means that he might actually be gearing up uh, for Clerk or Bloody Queen instead. Yeah, it seems to be so. We're looking at the third selection. GR this time around um, securing their mechanic role, a decoder in this team comm, and they're just waiting for these last selection. He can still ban a Kaiter if not support, but we're looking at a harasser being banned, Prospector. So um, they do have selection still. Uh, what other possible. Uh, psychologist? Oh yeah, okay, so we're seeing a psychologist right in our face. Um, yeah, it seems to be the survivors are kind of prepared and also gearing up for this possible clerk as well as Bloody Queen. Mm. And just in case, if there is a Bon Bon, we do have a decode outside with the mechanics bot. So, Jira's team comm itself, it's pretty well-rounded well to count, kind of counter this corrector pool. And we'll see whether the... We're kind of still up for the Bon Bon, or if not, like you mentioned, Bloody Queen or Clerk. I'll probably play Bon Bon, uh, just because you don't have, there's no officer, so there's no guaranteed rescue. I think here, uh, if D doesn't have to, if D is able to ban Mech, this comp is actually really good for Bon Bon, but he didn't ban Mechanic. So now the problem is like, if you chase Mech first, you don't go double mirror bots in play, you're gonna get Cypher Rush, uh, and you might lose to Cypher Rush. If you chase, if you go Bon Bon, you get Cypher Rush by the Mech anyway. If you go Clerk, it's fine, you can chase Mechanic, but Psychologist and, and Antiquarian are counter. So the ban pick for GR is really good. Um, these kind of three round one hunters here are all sort of uh, countered throughout the majority of this team comp. So not banning Mechanic is really going to hurt him here. Uh, I would have actually liked to just see Patient Mech ban, give Seer and play Bon Bon. Because if they go Seer here, and he's going to go Bon Bon anyway, but if you give Seer here instead of the Mechanic, uh, Bon Bon's very strong against this comp. Psychologist is an easy chase, and Corrine's fine. Seer's an easy chase if they actually do pick Seer. Obviously, he wants to open up potential Clerk and Bloody Queen options by banning that Seer. But the majority of the time, D's going to lead with Bon Bon anyways. So if you give Mechanic, you're playing right into it. You're allowing GR to have so much leeway to just sort of run away with this match. If you chase Mech first and bots in play as a Bon Bon, you really see how that Cypher is going to take off and it's going to be very difficult for D uh, to secure a draw here. Yeah, it seems to be. And yeah, looking at the previous sets that we have, FPX ZQ versus WBG during this playoffs, uh, D actually played the Bon Bon for, for in fact, the... Uh, sorry, uh, at Rich as well, that was the Bing Town, and they did get he did get a 1k and also a 4k at Ever's Bing Town against WBG Survivor. So he kind of capitalized on the mistakes the survivors makes and made and got that advantage for, for his team, and that was really crucial in FPX EQ managing to kind of secure their top four spot that we're seeing right now. So looking at this spawn locations, um, I think most likely psychologists might be the first issue, right? Eli? 
Uh, yeah, I don't think he's gonna go all the way Shaq for mech here. Um, we actually see spawning factory. Uh, so typically spawning factory is good because you can force the survivors away from that factory area. Um, but then he doesn't spawn in the mechanic. Obviously he doesn't know mechanic's gonna spawn there. But majority of the time mech actually will take Shaq or middle uh, in some instances because what happens is you can drop bot middle and you can just rotate to factory and kite there and bots middle. Or you can start Shaq, drop bot near Shaq and then rotate to middle through middle over towards factory. You have that as a cutting area as well. Psychologist goes tied, which makes this first chase very easy for Bonbon bon on Psych. But the thing is he does have excitement, uh, which means that he doesn't have, it's gonna be a lot more challenging to actually down the Psychologist relatively fast here. Um, I still think he does go for first chase Psych. If you're able to injure the Psych early, Mechanics Decoding Cypher Rush is gonna be slowed down. Um, but because he doesn't have Blink, a triple A character like Psych is gonna be hard to deal with. Uh, uh, he might actually just go straight for the Mechanic, which is actually, I think, better for survivors. Or he can go for Anti. If he goes for Anti, you have uh, Excitement as well to deal with that. And it looks like he is going straight for the Antiquarian. He's gonna get rid of this character first. If you go to the Antiquarian, they don't have a stable rescuer to uh, obviously, they don't want to stay where it's going to but they don't have any support rescue, so it's very hard for them to get a rescue off here. Uh, we do see fast pallet breaking speed. It's going to be a trump card detention with, I believe, at least two or three on pallet breaking here, and he does have excitement um, to help with this chase. We're going to see Antiquarian loop around this area. Probably going to try to push factory in a moment here. He's going to dodge that first set of bombs. Um, still has some stick to work with. Able to avoid that chip as well. Uh, unfortunately, D off with the, the chips here. He's going to get that first one onto the Antiquarian. Has excitement here. Will he use it to get the first hit? It looks like he is going to do so. Yeah, and flying loop will be ready in about two seconds so uh and you can have half a stick a uh, half a bamboo flute to use and still flying wheel but is at a very deadly health at the point at this point in time three fourth and one more bomb chip she will be down so let's see how she's gonna make use of this flying wheel possibly and still oh. done after using that flying wheel amazing bombings on this side and field prediction on ak side and also will be oh. chat at mercenaries outside sandbag cypher in fact yeah, big mistake there, unfortunately, from the Antiquarian. That's going to give D a, a big opening here. Uh, already, we see the Cypher sort of taking off here, but even with the mechanic Cypher Rush here, it's not quite going to be enough uh, for a win at this point. And because, again, there's no Officer, and there's no Antiquarian to support the Mercenary's rescue, it's really hard to save off a of Bonbon bon here. We're going to see a Mercenary in there. He's going to feed Tinnitus. Does he push for a rescue at all here? Uh, antiquarian still has some sticks. He's going to go for the rescue. Elbow pass right past the Bonbon. Bon gets a free rescue off, uh, and we're going to see a, a beautiful... A really hard save actually to pull off there. He is able to do so. Antiquarian goes for the stick. He's able to miss that. Goes for a second one. Has one more bomb chip to work with. Is going to get that under the Antiquarian. Has the control bomb. Dodges it. Still has one more swing available. He needs to dodge this set of bomb right here. Uh, then goes for the stick. But he does get that final chip. Um, so it ends up not mattering at all here. And again, not enough side for our progress for a win just yet. Yeah, I mean, it was a free rescue on the mercenary side right now. Mercenary is full health and could possibly come for this second rescue if he wants to. Uh, but then again, these bomblings are just really accurate this morning. And yeah, very excited to see whether he'll be able to, you know, show more of that in this match. So yeah, mercenary seems to be kind of conservative, doesn't really want to go for this rescue. And we're seeing possibly a backdoor rescue on by mechanic oh. at the bottom left. So we'll be seeing that. Really good play from D to kick the Cypher there. If you don't abnormal, they actually could potentially have enough Cypher. If, because he abnormals the Cypher, now, even if they get this rescue off, he has so much more time to down the Antiquarian. Now they're gonna go for a double rescue. Can you go for the farm here? He may just drop bombs instead of trying to farm Antiquarian. He does have one more stick to work with. He needs to try to avoid it. Does get stunned there, but because there's survivors in the area, he's gonna recover from that instantly. Um, and he has one ship. There's one control bomb. Antiquarian able to avoid it. She's gonna stay alive a little bit longer. Um, but again, ciphers are not quite there. Uh, the last cipher only 30%. Two of them will go down here with the bot. Um, and uh, Antiquarian does have flywheel, so she can. Oh, he loses sight of the. He loses sight of the Antiquarian. This oh could buy enough time for the game. He doesn't know where she is. She's all the way to Shack. That's right, and Psychologist could possibly heal up the Antiquarian for a bit, but then again, D does not know where Antiquarian is, and Shadow it will be the next target. And yeah, we're seeing Psychologist whistling, possibly Antiquarian, and yeah, Mechanic trying to kite this out, and Cypher is looking really good, 60%, the one yeah. outside Sandbox, and Abnormal will be up again in about 20 seconds. We'll see whether D will be heading um, outside for this Abnormal once again. That is game changing that he loses the, the antiquarian there. He has no trait. His only trait is abnormal. Cyber Machine's gotta be ready. He's not gonna be able to kick the cypher in time. He can drop right. Okay, I guess he can drop right here. Uh, mechanic is gonna struggle free. They're gonna try to push it because if they don't push it, then he's just gonna abnormal the cypher again. The cypher is ready. They're gonna go for the pop. He has detention, but he's not able to get the hit here. And we're gonna play already for the end game for GR. Losing that antiquarian was so game changing. That's right. And yeah, getting this chase on to mechanic in this uh, late game and 
dungeon is at the center we'll see where the mechanic will be able to rotate all the way gates at 70 percent all of them are still around this area the heart is at the center opening a chest for mechanic i think so let's see whether it will be useful for mechanic a bit of a time over here Getting that basic hit and no chip damage, so Mercenary can still tank it uh, all yep. the way to the gate. He has two elbow pads, so it shouldn't be a problem. Mechanic is still here. Will Mercenary get to the gate in time for Mechanic to get to this dungeon? I think that's the question. And Flying Wheel is ready right now. Yeah, so Mer Mercenary can definitely make it to the idiot's two elbow pads, but the thing is, can. Uh, the he's, he, he lost them! He's around the backside, the dungeon's gonna be open! He Flying Wheel's at the gate, he's out! It's a four escape for GR! What a turnaround! He had a quick down on the Antiquarian, and then he just lost him! Completely, D just, oh, we talked about this earlier before the match, how D needs to secure kills or epic CQ will fall quickly in this matchup to GR, but he just completely lost sight of the Antiquarian. He had no trade for endgame because he switched to that abnormal. Uh, and then he just let the mechanic get around the backside there. The pal was already broken, so he really just needed to pressure the mechanic early, but he just lets uh, the mechanic get around there. And you really see how fast that mechanic Cypher Rush was. If he doesn't kick that Cypher without normal, the Cypher actually would have been primed after the rescue. And the first kite was so short. I mean, you literally see Mechanic does two Cyphers at one time. It's like, it's basically like you have an extra survivor. You only need four Cyphers to win the game because the bot literally does a Cypher for free. That's how strong Mechanic is. And you see why D has to ban Mechanic if you're gonna play Bonbon, bon, which again, the Seer ban for Bonbon for bon is just, I, I struggle to understand it. And that's, it really, it really hurt him here. But then yeah, losing the Antiquarian, the abnormal play was correct. He has to have normal the cipher there, um, or else he is probably going to lose the game on, on decoding speed. But he has to farm the antiquarian. He didn't farm the antiquarian. He just completely lost her, which was a huge, uh, unfortunate misstep on D's side. And um, GR took full advantage of it, even without getting an item for the mechanic by searching that chest. Still was able to get uh, a four escape as mechanic did go around the backside. I guess he just didn't see where mechanic went, and she was able to get out the dungeon. Yeah, that's right. So we're seeing how this kind of go about. Statistics-wise, we have 94.5 seconds, five seconds kite on Antiquary and uh, Mechanic with 111, in fact. So uh, we are definitely losing the Antiquarian was definitely a big moment. That normal was D's only chance to possibly get a tie situation because he did have detention during late game. If he manages to get Antiquarian before detention and secure one more during late game with even though he had abnormal, uh, it will have secured a tie situation, which is definitely something acceptable, especially when you're picking Bon Bon in this map. So, yeah, it just kind of begs the question whether the mechanic being banned could have made this match slightly easier for D, and also maybe not losing the Antiquarian. That one is something that he couldn't really predict, and it really felt felt really short, and it just the advantage went back and forth. Initially, it was Survivor side with the Cypher Rush, the abnormal went. With that abnormal, it went back to D, and then losing Antiquarian, it just went back to GR, and GR made full use of that, yep. and also mechanic at the dungeon with the dungeon escape, very well done with that rotation, and just a good job to GR with this five to zero lead right from the get go. Yeah, so for those of you who bet on uh, there being a four escape this match, you've already got it right in the first half, so congratulations. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was uh, it was probably a given with how strong the GR survivors were playing that. In a best of five series, it's usually safe to assume there's going to be at least one four escape uh, in this survivor sided meta. But already, right out the gate, uh, for GR already with a 5 0 lead here. Um, and there's definitely a comeback from what we saw yesterday. We saw them drop 5 0 uh, with a four elimination in the first round yesterday against Dong Shuen. So, uh, an early turnaround against D here is really important uh, for GR to, to work back into this matchup. <gasps> um, and we are going to see PPX. PPX. For a long time, it's been a long time, it's been a really long time. Huge fan of PPX, and finally, we're seeing him once again. The last time we saw him was actually in this Chinese Man qualifiers, their first match in that qualifier. So, afterwards, it was full on super rich. We don't see PPX anymore. And finally, this time around, in this final day, we're seeing PPX taking on the stage in this BO1 Arms Factory. We could possibly be seeing a Dream Witch, I think, or if you just want to secure that one kill, a Bloody Queen is actually fine as well, Eli. So, Okay, yep. Heading on to player introduction, we have Drop. So Drop, we're seeing the entomology as well as uh, Pristis, a support role we're seeing over here. Um, doesn't really do a lot of rescues, we're seeing a 0 0.16 and a kiting time of 64.55 seconds. Uh, possibly a late game kiter or uh, able to get this blink out of this hunter with this containment mm -hmm. time. Yeah, again, only 54% win rate uh, for epic CQ here. So definitely a little bit lower than a lot of these teams and it's going to be really important that they're able to turn things around here if they want to secure a potential third spot in this Call of Us tournament. Uh, we do see uh, we see Mama's Well, which uh, average time of 80, 
eight seconds, which is actually quite high. But again, still win rate is just a lot lower. It only escape rate of 58. Even with first kite, uh, it means that he's not being able to get out the dungeon a lot of the time. So um, it does mean FX EQ survivors, they struggle to get four escapes. They struggle to get uh, even three escapes with long first kite. So uh, it's going to be very important they're able to turn things around, especially because they're already down 5-0. They have to really try to work out of this one, at least minimize the damage here. Uh, maybe they can try to push for a for escape in return. It's been a while since we've seen PPX take the big stage here, so uh, we'll see if this condition is up to par uh, to play at this global level. Yeah, and speaking of which, right now we're heading on to the next member, Lee Bao, with the psychology as well as here. He played other characters such as the Patient and Bomber, Barmaid, very crucial kiting characters that can potentially turn the game around. So, looking at the 70.47 seconds containment time, most likely would be the first chase. And looking at the containment time, it's decent enough for a possible almost three cypher kites. So, excited to see how it's going to turn out. 64.5% of escape rate, even though he might potentially be the first kiter. So, it kind of ensures that um, FPS you might potentially go for this uh, forcing hunter to change targets after being chat so we might be seeing that and looking at sun as uh sans sun sui uh we have this mercenary as well as first officer so taking on this rescue role for his team um 1.16 rescuing a, li a bit less uh, compared to um part from gr but uh definitely stable rescues as per normal 71 percent escape rate guaranteeing that he will most likely escape even if it's a four elimination kind of matchup against a very strong hunter. Yeah, you typically see that of the rescuer player, they are able to, because again, rescuer is never really getting chased. So the majority of the time they are getting uh, a lot of escape. So that's actually very important uh, for those of you who uh, want to rank up faster in your rank matches. Uh, when you actually get escapes, you get more deduction points, which means you get more points for ties and wins. So playing rescue characters is quite relevant. Um, so it's very important to know how to play rescuers. So. Um, never say, I don't know how to play Rescuer because then you're losing points in rank. Anyways, we are going to have uh, PBX on the hunter side. Very limited data, obviously. We haven't seen him, I think, what, one game? Uh, uh, probably from... Uh, I'm not sure actually how many games he's, he's been able to play um, as of two recently. Games, but two games, okay, yeah. So, and only an elimination of one in those games. Average elimination of one, so... That's right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we'll see how his, his conditions improve. Keep in mind, this is not a game that GR is throwing away, obviously. This is the this is the the, uh, the Constellation Championship. There's a huge difference between getting third and fourth place in a global event like this. Uh, so that means that GR has uh, really worked PBX up to, worked up the skill and, and got him tournament ready. Um, this is not just GR saying, you know, okay, we're, we, we can no longer win the tournament, so PBX is gonna play. No, that's not how that works. Um, this is exactly, GR really needs to win this. They really wanna win this. You wanna be the third best team in the world here. Um, so they're really still going all out. Uh, so don't be phased by this this uh, this hunter change here. And keep in mind, yeah, PPX only needs to get a single kill here for Jira to take this first round. Yeah, I mean, with a single kill, pressure is definitely not a lot. And yeah, uh, actually, my mistake, actually, told Eli is too. Actually, it's only just one match that PPX actually right. played in the Chinese Man qualifies. It was against GW. Mm -hmm. And at that point, time, he picked the clock and got that one kill only, like right. you mentioned. So, um, very unfavorable results from PPX. But hopefully, this period of time from qualifiers all the way to this playoffs final day, he has probably be training up training and also gearing up for this so um allowing ppx to come up for bo1 i think maybe afterwards in bo2 we'll probably be seeing a switch to super rich most likely uh um, yeah it's definitely possible yeah, um, let's see the condition of ppx today first right yeah i just saw his mom it sounds like mama like cat right yeah mama is cat okay that's why i just saw it because they just had the cat ears on the little mouth i was like okay now i got it yeah uh -huh. <laughs> i didn't realize that until now I, like that's what okay anyways um yeah uh so uh yeah as you mentioned uh potentially gonna go back to super rich depending on how this plays out i mean again maybe ppx is uh is is kind of came in prepared maybe he's i mean again he hasn't seen this stage in a long time he used to be one of the strongest hunters back in the day um back in his day but uh he's gonna make uh um gonna make his performance a lot of people i think have sort of ruled out ppx thinking that oh this hunter's past his prime he doesn't have mm -hmm. the the character pool to keep up with the current meta um and that's why we don't see him play anymore and you know sometimes this does happen you see some of the best hunters really sort of fall by the just just fall off to the side because they don't have that character pool to keep up with the current survivor meta um you know we saw this with hunters like afu right and ppx mm -hmm. as well so uh but yeah we're gonna see the comeback here let's see if uh he's able to 
work himself back into a potentially uh, starting position on the Hunter faction for GR. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been seeing PPH uh, kind of struggle with this meta. Actually, a me quite a number of the metas that has been constantly changing every season. So, um, hopefully, things to become better. And yeah, definitely gearing. I'm actually excited to see how PPH is gonna perform. It's been a very long time, months, in fact, uh, since we last saw PPX. But then again, he's still one of those top hunters in the Chinese uh, ranking list. So. Um, excited to see how it's going to play out. Right now, we're starting the ban pick phase. Uh, PPX will see probably a Seer ban right from the get-go. All of his character pool, as we're seeing right now, is... Oh, but we're seeing a female dancer right from the get-go, not yeah. Seer. So... He wants to play He wants to play Bonbon. Bon. I mean, he only needs to secure one kill, so he's just going to play Bonbon bon here um, and just go for a... Um, and just go for at least one. I mean, obviously, he's going to go for a tie, but the dancer ban has to indicate Bonbon. Bon. Obviously, it opens up some other opportunities here. Um, he can now ban Dreamwitch counters, still play Dreamwitch. Uh, you can ban PQ counters, which we are going like, to see Seer Patient um, as well. So he's sort of cut opening up any sort of opportunities. You can see whichever comp he gets uh, the, the best possible hunter for, and he's just going to play that. So Seer and, and Patient ban here. Um, uh, this is good for Dreamwitch. This is good for Bonbon. Bon. Patient counters Bonbon. Bon. Uh, Seer is strong against Dreamwitch. Seer is strong against uh, Clerk. Patient strong against Clerk. So you're strong against Bloody Queen. So he's just really giving himself as many options here as he can. He did not ban Mercenary. So Mercenary is still open, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. We actually see Double mm -hmm. Rescue, uh, which is very uncommon in this meta. Um, so a very interesting approach from FPX CQ. The only time you ever see Double Rescue is typically uh, when you need to go for a Forest Gate because Rescuers are more... Uh, they're more durable in the end game, and it's a lot easier to get an extra escape with that sort of character. Um, and because FPX CQ does need to get a 5 0 to tie up this match, Ooh. we are going to see um, uh, Explorer as well. Explorer is another good character for a situation like this because, again, he's not chaseable. You're not going to, as long as Explorer hides well, he's never getting found, right? So you basically create a situation where you have to either chase a rescuer and get kited for a long period of time or chase the Antiquarian. Uh, and Antiquarian, of course, will have a kiting build here. Um, so that's sort of the, the the main gameplay. You still have fast Cypher Rush with Explorer, even with two to, uh, slow decoders. And then you just have a very, very durable team comp. Um, so you can secure uh, your your stronger end game. Now, the only problem with a, a play like this is now Dreamwitch becomes really strong because Dreamwitch can easily find an Explorer. When you walk around the, 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 the map with the main body, uh, if you see the Explorer hiding in the grass, it'll still show the purple mark over their head. So even if they're hidden in the grass overall, it'll still reveal the location if you're on that main body. So it's very hard for Explorer to actually hide against Dreamwitch. So that is a little bit risky here. Yeah, and leeching onto Explorer would be an easy case for PPX if he does pick a Dream Mission. And also for Explorers, when you're in miniature size, usually you'll be, you'll be see the Hunter with that red color indication on your book. For Dream Witch, there is no such indication. Only when she starts using the follower, controlling it by himself, that's only when you can see where the follower is. And Explorer wouldn't have any idea where, which direction PPX will be coming from. So that is kind of a risk that about picking this explorer but then again you talk about durability picking considerary as well as first officer they are durable mm. during the late game but decoding might be a possible problem to kind of speed things up but looking at this ppx has confirmed his pick of that dream Witch in his arms yep. factory very favorable map for extreme Witch. so let's see how this is going to play out um definitely favorable for ppx if there is a double center cipher three pilot one as well as the one just to situ situate that center so if that's the case, PPX might have an easier time trying to camp out and map control um, during this game. Yeah, absolutely. This comp is incredibly good uh, against something like um, against something like Bonbon, bon, uh, because again, mercenary officer, you, you can't chase that. Spore hides away. Uh, as long as Antiquarian has a good kiting build and spawns in a strong kiting area, she can kite Bonbon bon pretty effectively. So, similar to Bloody Queen as well. Uh, Antiquarian can also kite something like Bloody Queen. I actually think we might, there's a small chance we see Flywheel and Broken uh, broken Windows on Anti in no borrowed time. Um, it is definitely possible because she is most likely getting first kite. You need to have a kiting build. But because now there is a Dream, which Dreamwitch can immediately rotate straight into that Explorer. So let's see. Um, I, I think, I really think it makes sense for them to go with a, one of those batter similar strategies where, again, just a straight kiting build with the Antiquarian. But um, because it is Dreamwitch as well, uh, he, he really just should go single all that explore. You can even chase Officer. He can just play Patrol or Dreamwitch and just chase Officer. That's another thing you can actually do here. Because Officer struggles against Patrol. You patrol her into the, um, uh, into the pocket watch. You can still stop them and get the hit in watch. Uh, so there's a lot of ways PPX can approach this matchup. 
Yep, that's right. And we have to see how this match is going to play out. Match between GR's Hunter as well as FBX ZQ Survivors. But before that, we will be seeing the Persona first. Uh, and speaking of Patroller, um, definitely a feasible chase if he picks that a skill. But then again, there is this thing that Tongshan has been going with, the Insolence Blink. So mm. we'll see whether PPX is going to follow the meta that... I'm not full of meta, but follow what Tongshan picks or this is going to go with the old one. Patroller, Drum Card as well as Detention. Yeah, it looks like he is going to go patroller though, because again, you have to, you have to have a way to deal with the officer. Um, and it looks like we are going to have Antiquarian. So it's actually going to be Explorer that goes no borrowed time, which is also good against non dream Witch, because Explorer is not going to get found, right? If you have a non borrowed time character, um, it's usually a character that's probably not going to get chased, right? And in this case, that would be Explorer because you can just hide away from the hunter. But dream Witch is one of the few hunters that can find Explorer very easily. Um, and again, he also has patrol, so he can actually chase the officer if he wants to go for that as well. Mm, Looks like he's gonna yeah, go straight I mean, towards the factory uh, and try to single out that explorer first. Yeah, that's right. And we're heading right into the match. So we're seeing explorer with broken windows as well as flying wheel. There's no board time, so we'll see how it's gonna play out. PPA is just gonna tunnel. Oh, he's not gonna tunnel. We'll be chasing the uh, the first officer, in fact. And if it's like like what you predicted, Eli, most likely a patroller bite onto first officer and getting that basic hit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it looks like, uh, okay, so the watch is already baited out here. Um, and he's just going to go ahead now putting the leech into play. Uh, Cypher's already off to a good start here. He's, he's not he's not going to single out Explorer. He's just going to commit to this chase. Does now have anybody patroller available. Now the watch isn't cool. If he can basic it here, that'd be really good. Go swing at the pallet. Officer cannot get, oh, he gets mind game though. And Officer is able to avoid this spawn hit. You cannot give a free hit to the spawn follower. That's really bad. It's still possible if he has hunt, he would potentially get this, but now we do see the next watch coming out. PBX really needed to get a hit with the spawn follower there. Um, he can now go for this spawn patroller, and we actually see the officer does not rotate away, which means that he's actually right on top of the spawn, so spawn can actually get a free hit here. You see his wait for the patroller bite to happen. There's the bite, and he does get the hit onto the officer with the, uh, the spawn fo uh, follower, which is a really good position for the Dream Witch. Yeah, but uh, Sun Sunsui's uh, leech actually hasn't been moving yet. The distance yep. is still not enough for that uh, following to just come along. But uh, Sunsui is running towards the leech, in fact, and PPX will be putting another patrol that is no more use to, leech to use. But, but he has the elbow pad right now, so there is a change in tools between Mercenary as well as First Officer. Yep. But getting that pellet snipe shouldn't be a problem to get this basic hit still, regardless of this patrol bite. Yeah, and he can kite this. He can definitely kite this patrol now because of that elbow pad. It gets him to this next pallet. He's able to time the pallet mm. to the bite and cancel that out here. Um, and I was, if he didn't get the pallet stun there on the follow, there's a good chance he goes down to mm. the spawn there. Uh, Mercer needs to not give a free hit here. That would be really bad. He's getting trapped between both followers. Mercer is going to give a free hit mm. to the spawn follower. And you see, again, he switched out the item, so he doesn't have um, any elbow pads. But yeah, but he luckily, does have the, mm -hmm. the syringe, yeah. To... Yeah, but lucky enough, he does have the stream so he can kill himself up. But PPA is not going to allow that. Pressuring the mercenary as well, but we'll be changing targets, I think. PPX will be changing targets, but going back to the shack, we'll be seeing the first officer there as well. Antiquarian wouldn't be giving the support to, so PPX is just heading towards the area where Mao Mao is at, but Sunsui's follower is here as well, but. Yeah, he's just following along right now. He doesn't really know where Sunsui is exactly, and now because the follower's leech is moving along, he's moving along as well. Cyphers are looking pretty good. Three and a half Cyphers. Explorer, I'm not sure how much he has dicked. 90% in fact right now, so he will be having a 50% really soon, and let's see how this chase is going to prolong it much further. He still has one more elbow pad to use. Yeah, this position is actually quite weak for PPX. We're going to see him give some swing of the power. does get the down on to the officer here with the spawn follower, so uh, that's actually very important that he's able to do that. Uh, because Explorer has a lot of decoding available with the 50% page here, there's a good chance that they are going to have the Cyphers ready for endgame. Uh, the question is going to come down to, can they actually get a 4 survivor escape, considering that um, Mercenary no longer has an item? They need to set themselves up for endgame. This is a position where Explorer is actually really good, because Dream Witch likes to camp the last Cypher, but Explorer can just pop it instantly if he has a 50% page. So it's really, Explorer is actually, Explorer doesn't get chased first. He's actually very strong against Dream Witch. Um, but he's very weak against Dreamwitch because he can get found. But look, we can see here, uh, if they get that server 50%, Explorer can just pop at any time. So Mercenary is coming for the first rescue onto the officer here, goes for that swing. Mercenary does not have any items here uh, to work with. So if Mercenary gets chased endgame, that could be very bad for the survivors. But Officer, he's going to hold on to this elbow pad. Uh, he needs to save it for his endgame kiting. Um, so there's a potential chance for a four escape. 
Yeah, that's right. We're seeing that the cipher is most likely primed already. I think the pop might be happening really soon. Explorer is at the at the cipher right now, and the cipher will be popped. Sunsway still has the elbow pad, and the dungeon is at the factory area. Using the patroller once again, will he be able to secure this one kill that he desperately needs for his team to get this advantage? We're seeing the patroller out now, spotting on the first officer, and just biting him immediately. Gates is being opened at the front gate. Let's see how it's gonna turn out. Yeah, I think he can get this out with the leech. He's gonna he's gonna go down to the leech follower there. Uh, Officer still has one more chair, so they can actually still push this if they want to. The problem is, Mercenary doesn't have any items, um, and he's going to use... This is a really smart play. He's going to use one of those followers, uh, Mercenary's Leech, to potentially push him out of the game. Mercenary should have that Leech Prime by now, though, I would imagine. Um, so, yeah, he's going to get it off. It looks like they're going to go... I think they're just going to take them all the escapes here. Explorer's going to go out for sure. Now, the question is, does Anti and Merc want to push for this? Looks like no. We are going to see... Uh, PPX does secure the one kill, so that is the bare minimum for, for GR here. But FPX EQ with a very convincing three survivor escape. PPX is yeah, really struggling um, to, to deal with the team comp that Dream Witch would typically be pretty good against. Again, I think it makes more sense for him to try to just find that Explorer early. It's a good chance Explorer doesn't have borrowed time uh, because he's not going to get chased, but Dream Witch can find the Explorer. He just went straight for the officer instead. Uh, and uh, the item swap play from FPX EQ, I think, was very good. He was able to kite out one of the patrollers, which was very relevant. Um, but, yeah, overall, he just had a hard time getting it down fast enough. Explore Cypher really took off. Even with a double rescue, Explore Cypher uh, is actually very important. Yeah, that's right. And it was important for First Officer not to be down at a point in time and use the elbow pad. Reason being, if he dies at that point in time, he will die right at the center. Center Cypher is not popped yet, and they could... PPX might potentially be able to camp out certain ciphers around the center area and that would be might have possibly changed the game but then again right. we're seeing the first officer just dying at this shack corner so there is really nothing PPX could really do and there is no map control at all there is no chance for that and yeah ultimately even though there was a free hit onto mercenary it didn't really change the match a lot everything was just worked up, working out perfectly for FPX ZQ but then again a 3 to 1 still not enough to get, get back the advantage GR's map selection, they got a 6 to 3 points, so that is actually looking really good. And looking at the stats itself, Sunsui with 107.8 seconds on containment time. Definitely enough against a Dream Witch. And I mean, we could see that how the how the Cyphers was just popping left, right because of Drop. You know, Drop's ability to decode is just incredible. We, we saw that how, because he's not the one being chased, he could just focus on Cyphers completely. And even if he didn't have borrowed time, that didn't matter at all, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it usually doesn't matter against characters that, um, that aren't Dream Witch, right? Because characters like Bon Bon, uh, really struggle to find, uh, something like an Explorer. Characters like Bloody Queen struggle to find an Explorer. Even if Bloody Queen finds an Explorer, it's actually hard to kill an Explorer's B, because you go for a mirror, you actually, the survivor doesn't get highlighted until they go into the, the mini mode. So it's very difficult to, um, for a Bloody Queen to deal with that as well. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of forcing him off of, those guaranteed tie or not guaranteed but those strong tie hunters such as bon, bon and bq and they forced him on the dream witch which dream witch was again pretty strong against that comp if you uh chase officer first or you solo out, uh, solo out the explorer but yeah he wasn't able to to get find the explorer and officer with the item swap play actually was able to cut it up a troll by which ended up wasting a lot of time um and even with double decoder explorer cypher still had a nice impact there um so overall yeah they're still able to get three escape here which minimizes the damage the best i think that they could in that sort of situation um keep in mind gr did choose arms factory first here um so this is um still not too bad a result for fpx eq obviously three point difference instead of a two point it could be a big deal breaker in the long run but as of right now uh fpx eq definitely um again minimizing the damage on the opponent's map selection uh, is pretty ideal for their situation yeah, that's fact. And right now we'll be looking into BO2. FPX ZQ will be having their map selection. So I think the questions comes down to uh, we'll be heading short into a short break and we'll just continue this conversation in a short while.
And we are back with more fan photos. Hashtag Oasis Global Support. Uh, live towards light and never surrender. Leave no regrets, GR. So yeah, definitely GR do need to support. I mean, a difference between third and fourth placing is definitely huge in terms of prize pool. And also um, the title that they'll be given after the COA. So third and fourth placing, it might seem small, but it's actually not. And you know, just talking about it, we're wondering whether PBX might be switched out and Super Rich might possibly be switched in. I mean, Super Rich definitely not weak. We have seen how he has actually played Oh, we've switched how they've actually played uh, against ACT, in fact, um, 4K Bloody Queen at Red Church and 4K X Boy at Leo's Memory. So, for sure, not weak, and usually BO2 Hunters are actually stronger than BO1 Hunters. So, we might possibly see a switch considering how PPS condition doesn't seem the most optimal today. Yeah, definitely not. Um, even a situation where you have a, a pretty decent comp for playing Dream Witch, again, they, they sort of, uh, this, this team comp is very unique. And it's actually very smart. Uh, I don't know if it, it's sort of more of an older meta strategy. Uh, we used to see, um, I think it was back in Koa 4, where one of the common strategies is you go triple rescue on Explorer, uh, and mm -hmm. then you have very hard chase targets, or you go double rescue on a very strong kiting character, and then Explorer. And that's what this was, where you have double rescuer, which is very hard to chase, and then you have Anticorn, a very strong kiter, then you have Explorer, and Explorer just hides, uh, and then still promotes Cypress, even with a heavy rescuer team comp and the Cypress being slower. You have a character like Explorer that's a decoder to promote Cypher Rush, and Explorer won't get chased because he's very good at hiding. Um, so you'd see map like, maps like Leo's Memory, Arms Factory, Lakeside, and it's very hard to find that sort of Explorer hiding away. The thing is, Dreamwitch wasn't strong back in that meta. Dreamwitch is still pretty good here. Uh, so Dreamwitch in this situation would have been quite nice. Uh, to, Or it would have been easier to find Explorer, I think, if you went to look for it. But, ooh, what? Ooh. Oh, but I think we'll be seeing PPX coming up for this BO2 once again. Yeah. We, they won't be switching out Super Rich. Even though even though BO1, we didn't see how PPX actually performed. Um, not uh, what you know as, as good as we've expected, in fact, but still able to secure that one kill. Definitely something, still something, but um, just quite shook that we'll be seeing PPX once again in this BO2. Um, Maybe in the later rounds, I suppose. Uh, so fans of Super Rich, don't be too disheartened. We might be seeing Super Rich later on. So we're seeing um, how this is going to go about. FPX ZQ Survivors will be up first in this BO2 first half versus seeing GR's Hunter PPX. So just looking at this, right? Um, knowing that PPX character pool is just really quite limited. Um, what do you think FPX ZQ could possibly pick to kind of counter PPX? Um, I think that here, in terms of map selection, uh, obviously Dreamwitch, Bloody Queen, Bon Bon are kind of his three main hunters that we talked about. Those are going to be kind of the biggest, um, uh, what is going on there? Uh, that just totally they broke flirting. my... They flirting, they flirting. Yeah, you see the blushing, bro, like, crazy. Dude, uh, there's you. The cold uh, is the bird and the, the guy is you. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you uh, touch your head 24-7, alright, so... Okay, bro. Anyways, <laughs> um, at least I didn't lose 29,000 apples, but, okay. Um, no, nah, just kidding. Uh, but yeah, Never basically... Like <laughs> <laughs> but basically, uh, but yeah, so, in terms of going back to PBX Hunter Pool, he mm. has basically three hunters we talked about, right? So, it's very easy for them to pick a map. Um, you could, uh, you get Bon Bon, and then there's a lot of characters that counter Dream Witch and Bloody Queen. Mm. Heavy hit characters, like Psychologist, Barmaid, uh, are going to be very strong. Uh, you can also go very uh, like big maps, such as Lakeside, Moonlit are not too strong for Dreamwitch. So I actually don't think they'll ban Dreamwitch. I think they're going to ban Bon Bon, and then they're just going to play uh, multiple hit characters that are strong against Bloody Queen and Dreamwitch. Mm, I think so. I mean, it just comes to the big question whether they will kind of respect ban uh, PPX Dreamwitch because they actually had a lot of potential to kind of force escape in that match itself. If they're confident enough, they might not even want to ban Dream Witch and just ban out other hunters that could possibly be um, leaning more towards a tie. So um, I think possibly Ever Slipping might be a possible map selection, I would say. I mean, definitely not to eliminate that possibility. Dream uh, Bloody Queen doesn't really excel very well on that map, mainly because there's a lot mm -hmm. of like um, buildings and stuff. Hard to put your mirror, so um, let's see how this is going to play out. We're still waiting for the map selection on FPX ZQ side, but I think in a short while we will be seeing it. A lot of discussion we're seeing from FPX, uh, PPX, in fact, and right. yeah, no smells at all, so they're taking this really seriously. 
Yep. Yeah, allowing PPX to come out, so definitely they do have a plan, possibly a strategy they're kind of going for. And hopefully that works out for the best. Yeah, I think that uh, Ever Sleeping would probably be more pretty likely because it's very standard, it's a very standard map. Um, but I also think that FTX DQ should be trying to take some risks. We also actually have, I forgot, we also have uh, Geisha available for, for PPX too, so um, that's also a possibility we have to consider too. Um, but I feel like Moonlit is good here for FTX DQ. You know, Moonlit, uh, he has you know, Bomb Bottom Moonlit, he has Geisha, he has Bloody Queen. He's a lot of good, he has Wax he's a lot of good characters for that map. Uh, Lakeside as well. Okay, so Lakeside and Moonlit, both of those, again, big maps here. Now you don't have to be in Dreamwind. Uh, you could potentially ban Bloody King, you could potentially ban Geisha, uh, you could potentially ban Bon Bon, you can leave Trimage open and just counter combat, and then also the Red Ranger as well. So, and considering that if you get strolled with Trimage the first round, I don't even think it'll go back to the any. Well, a big map is actually quite strong for XDQ. It opens up options for DQ. No Bloody Queen opens up uh, Geisha. Uh, he's a max artist here. He has a lot of things, uh, a lot of fun for those situations. So, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what he openly goes to. Yep, that's right, and we'll be heading right into this ban phase. We're seeing this here as well as the mercenary being banned. Just cancelling out all the possible stable rest, uh, cancelling out the rescuer over here as well as a possible bird support that might be coming in. Um, let's see whether there will be a respect ban on this room bridge or maybe they, they might be just banning something else, but then again. Uh, we are seeing how this might possibly be. Uh, just waiting this... Oh, but before the... Oh, we'll be seeing a night ban actually, so... Kind of interesting. We haven't seen PPX play Nyad throughout this period, so um, hopefully, um, if PPX have con have already you know looked through his condition, he definitely do know that um, Dreamwitch might not be the best pick in this map. At the same time, it's it's, it's a huge map itself. So uh, Dreamwitch tend to excel better in smaller maps such as Secret Heart, Arms Factory, like we're seeing just now. But unfortunately, the conditions wise is not good. So picking the Dreamwish again, it might be a killer for him. But looking at this, uh, Survivor picks Antiquarian as well as his first officer. Definitely, they kind of had to secure this first officer. At this point in time, this meta, the two very stable rescuers at this point in time is Mercenary as well as first officer. Without, without either one of them, it will be Gravekeeper, and it sometimes might not be the best. But then again. Right now, looking at the picks and bands, I think it might possibly be leaning towards um, PPX picking a Geisha. We've seen how Geisha actually is okay at this Lakeside Village map. Uh, you know, rotation, uh, not rotation, but kind of going around this map with the butterflies, it can be quite interesting. And we've seen Zeta Elf also playing at this map against GH, getting that 4 kill as well. So we might possibly be looking into that. And Lee Bao wise, we've seen this toy merchant. So toy merchant set up as well. Uh, usually we do see the catabolts being set up at the outside um, area, kind of jumping towards the outside stairs, going upwards elevation. So that could be a possible strategy that FAXQ might be going towards, which also means that... Oh, but we're seeing an interesting cowboy pick over here. So just going a little bit back towards uh, toy merchant. Toy Merchant wise, she's actually great at this map, but if you're talking about it going against Geisha, it actually kind of counts as Toy Merchant. Reason being, Toy Merchant when she glides or jump, Geisha itself can also throw the butterfly, fly upwards, and also fly even further. And butterflies wise, you just need 7 seconds to go for your next fly. Toy Merchant is a way longer cooldown time, and I'm not too sure how that might possibly play out. But Cowboy Pick is interesting though. I've, we rarely see Cowboy being picked at this map, but looking at a possible harassment by Cowboy, we might not see too much of it. And if PPX is kind of scared of Sansui's Cowboy, excitement could be possible. Also trying to counter Antiquarian's Bamboo Flute as well. Um, but then again, looking at this, Cowboy, we've seen how it actually goes against Clock. It can actually just uh, push for distances. But Eli used to, uh, but Eli, I'm not too sure if he's used to me. But, um, oh, but we're seeing a Spider pick. We've seen how Spider doesn't really excel in this map. The most that they've gotten was just a tie, if I remember correctly. And also, GH going, against, going up against Zeta during the group stages. Uh, God, J actually got uh, destroyed with that Spider pick. So, um, Oh, but oh, this is this might not be looking good. The thing, the thing is that cowboy can actually help with transitional kiting. Yes, which kind of brings you away from an area that PPX might put a lot of webs in. 
but PPS can use those webs to catch up with you even even though Cowboy is actually extremely fast so we have to see how this might possibly play out um I would say it might not be the best pick I would say Geisha actually might have been a better choice for some reason but uh We'll see how this really plays out. PPX picking a spider against the team called Cowboy, Toy Merchant, Antiquarian as well as First Officer at this lakeside map. And we're looking at the spawn locations. Most likely we'll be seeing Toy Merchant at the double story area, which is at the big boat. Yep, that's where we're seeing that. And Cowboy will be spawning at the shack area. Right at the center, we have the Antiquarian as well as First Officer. Spider can go uh, two ways, either the Cowboy or the Antiquarian. Really depends on which one he wants to go for. It's a headache to go against both. For Spider at the start, he does not have the spitting skill yet. That only comes after first skill happens. So going against Antiquarian, Spider's just gonna get constantly disarmed. And the only thing he can just do is speed up with those webs and it might be potentially useless once he gets very near to Mau Mau. We've seen how Mau Mau used the Antiquarian, swiping, sweeping the Hunter left, right. And also against yesterday's N, he managed to sweep the Hunter and prevented a possible stun at Arms Factory. So. Mao Mao, definitely not a character that you want to chase right from the get-go with no skill. So, yep. I think Sun Tzu might be possible. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, let's see, obviously, uh, Soyver is not a character. I mean, obviously, it's a character we've had, you know, seen PBX play in the past. Um, but it hasn't really been... Uh, I mean, obviously, we haven't seen it for quite some time. It looks like we're going to have uh, double flywheel and broken windows on the merchant, which is actually... Uh, not quite as common. Typically, we don't see Merchant on Big Boat bring Broken because a lot of times it's just going to fly over the window and doesn't actually need that Broken Window speed boost. But it uh, looks like it's not going to be the case here. We do have, uh, of course, the double flywheel and the harassment characters, Cowboy and um, the uh, the Antiquarian here. So we have seen Soul Weaver in the past and also be very strong on this map in general, sort of the second best map um, next to that Chinatown. Looks like he's going to rotate. He's going to go straight for Cowboy first. Uh, this is definitely his one of his better chase targets. Uh, Cowboy's a very good transition kiter. Um, he's going to lasso use those speed boosts to make distance. But against something like a uh, Soyver, it's definitely going to be a lot less effective. We do have a catapult set up for the merchant as well. Look at his bottom of two story here. Um, he sort of has him out in not such a strong area here, but he's going to use this time to transition towards middle, it looks like. Yeah, and speaking of which, we're seeing a possible jump onto the catapult. I think we might be seeing that now, we're just entering into the big boat without that catapult. So it will be... Oh, but changing targets, Toy Merchant drops. So I would say it's not the best chase. I mean, once Toy Merchant goes to double story, she can just glide down and then the distance be established between PPX as well as Toy Merchant will be very far. So jumping upwards with this catapult, really interesting play over here. And oh actually that catapult is not the easiest to be placed i've tried that mm. many times and actually it's possible it's actually highly possible we'll see that later on and changing targets once again back to cowboy yeah it looks like he is gonna cowboy has there's a lot of nice rotation here we have two ciphers the thing is the, the merchant hasn't decoded yet so cypher is a little bit behind oh we're gonna see lasso over uh the the soul over here and that's actually a very good lasso if you have a lot of distance um, because it allows you to, to push yourself forward very far here. Just a blink of He's probably going to use blink for this first hit, I would guess. Now it looks like he's going to hold on to it a little bit longer here. Using these webs to try to cut. Using a lot of webs here. He really needs to get this hit if he's going to use this many webs. Cowboy still fly. He's going to fly well through the swing here. Able to avoid that. Um, but he will lasso over. Able to avoid that hit. Uh, but he still is going to take that first hit eventually. Uh, I would think here. PPX still struggling to get this first hit. Finally is able to do so. But a lot of time wasted there. Two cybers already down is able to catapult himself onto Big Boat now. Keep in mind, Merchant hasn't decoded up until now, so the Cypher is still a little bit behind. Um, and so it's actually still not a bad position for PBX if he can get this down fast enough, um, just because that Merchant Cypher has just slowed down a little. He's gonna take the side drop here, which is actually smart because Soiver cannot drop any webs uh, in this little area, uh, which is gonna buy him some distance. That's right, and is there another catapult being placed over here? Oh no, there isn't. So, uh, Sunset will be down over at this lake area. We'll be chat possibly right at next to Lee Bao's Cypher right now. So, uh, Lee Bao is ready for this rescue. He is already around this area with this tight turner as well. First officer watch. So, this rescue should be very stable and should not be too difficult for Lee Bao as well. Yep. The issue here is that because there's no uh, Cypher Rush on the, the Toy Merchant side early, it's very difficult for them to actually finish the cybers in time here. Especially because PBX actually has blinked. Is able to get the hit from the distance there. Um, and he's gonna use the web shot going back to is it is able to avoid that rescue onto the uh the cowboy. So uh, yeah, as you can see, he doesn't even have to use blink here. So he still has blink 
for this next uh this next kite potentially here. He's trying to uh I'm not sure what he's looking for there. This actually is gonna waste more time. He has to get catch all the way up to the cowboy. They're all gonna pop one of their ciphers. Um and they actually actually sorry, I spoke a little too soon. They actually do have enough ciphers still to win. That cipher rush is insane. The last cipher rushing 30% of the way down, and that's with the toy merchant supporting heavily in the early game. We do have the uh it looks like it is gonna be Lee Bao, uh coming in for a second rescue Even I'm officer can save twice using that pocket watch. Um, we'll see if they have the Cypher Machine ready by the time they go for that rescue or if they need a body block at all. Yeah, that's right. And just looking at this, Cowboy do have a flying wheel still to use during end game. And to Korean as well as first officer will be coming for this double rescue. Last Cypher is at 70% and Sleepa will be doing this backdoor rescue. And oh, he the swing. The swing. The, yeah, misses the swing. He, and he has blink still. If he can blink through this or at least get the swing through, he gets the swing through onto the Cowboy. He can potentially switch to excitement if he's worried about the end coin. He can go for a web shot and go for the pickup. Uh, there's the web shot. Uh, doesn't get the pickup just yet. They're gonna double four seal. He's just gonna hit. They're gonna pop the cyber right now, and they are playing for the end game here. And Aquarian going for a double stun as well, but she can just get blinked right away here. PBX needs to bait this out. Oh, he doesn't go for the blink immediately. It looks like he's worried about flywheel. Tries to blink there, gets the flywheel out. Um, but now, yeah, they're already pushing for the XK here, so you're gonna change targets to the merchant. Uh, merchant is a very easy kill here end game because of no items and no flywheel. Um, but they're just probably gonna go to the other Exegate instead, uh, if he's able to get the blink out right now. Yeah, that's right, we're seeing drop will be possibly done over here. There is no flying wheel. Drop will be headed into onto the chair right now, and the bank gate is actually being pushed at this point in time. I think all of them are rushing there. Uh, PPX, if I remember correctly, he does have a trump card, so, yep. uh, but I think he'll highly, I highly doubt he's gonna bet on this. Might just yeah. get this one kill instead. Well, he can't teleport right away because then someone can make a rescue. So he needs to make sure this merchant is expired long enough or he needs to guess when the survivors are pushing for the gate. So this teleport probably will happen at some point here, but he needs to... I guess he's just going to secure one kill. Uh, um, I, I think it's probably worth it to try to teleport here at some point, but it looks like now nah, he's just securing just one kill here. It looks like three survivors. They all are able to make it out the exit gate here. Uh, and this is a three... Survivor escape here for FPX CQ, uh, which is actually very ideal um, for their situation, and they really need to work themselves back into this uh, into this match. And this is exactly how they're going to do so with the survivor side staying strong. Yep, that's right. And right now, Lee Bao, sorry, Lee Bao, D has only one goal, and which is to get at least a one kill to kind of balance things out. And but because it's a map selection, of course, a tie would be the best. Right. So just looking at this itself, it seems to be that. PBX is actually really having this conservative playstyle. Um, the blink was not used at all <laughs> during this entire match. Right. Uh, and no trump, no trump card switch. I think just now when he was trying to go to the Cypher, he might be looking at the Cypher progress and also thinking if the Cypher is a lot, he might possibly change to abnormal. But oh, but then again, there was three survivors outside. They can come for a double rescue. Tom Merchant is the only one forcing it out. And we saw how difficult it is. Two person force healing the cowboy on the floor but with just one spit will only spit onto one person and after that they can just continue force healing and everything sweeping by the uh the integrator also just kind of disarmed the hunter and prevented hunter from getting any hits onto toy a cowboy possibly if the chase were to be continued onto him so right. just looking at this stuff is there any possible highlights that you have to mention Eli? Uh, I think an important one to note at the end there, uh, when they went for a double force heal, it's really important that they were able to, to have two survivors force healing. Because you only have one force heal against Soul Weaver, even with the Antiquarian harasses, as long as you have 70 webs, because the web shot is 10, the cocoon is 60, you can web shot the survivor off of the heal and then cocoon them immediately after, right? And then they don't have to worry about picking up at all. So what has to happen in that situation uh, is they have to have two survivors force heal. If you don't do that, you're just gonna web shot one of the survivors, which is gonna stop the force heal from happening, and then you just cocoon right after and you get an instant share with the cocoon. So that that was a really important play that they that um uh, GR was prepared, uh, sorry, FX EQ was prepared for that situation. Um and yeah, the 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 merchant support, it looked like it was gonna be a little bit of excessive, not excessive support. I agree with them going for that support. I think that's very important. However, the biggest issue is that um the cypher is just slow down by the time the the first cutter goes down two cyphers are done but merchant's just starting their first cypher but apparently cypher is so fast in this game that that's still enough for a win so um excellent job uh from the survivors of fpx cq uh you see why toy merchant really needs to be banned on a map like lakeside this is one of the strongest maps if not the best for merchant whether that's kiting on big boat or whether that's support it's so hard 
for many hunters to deal with. Um, and yeah, and they did ban Nyad, right? So, so Geisha is technically still available. Uh, I think obviously Geisha struggles against Antiquarian, but against characters like Merchant and Cowboy, it's not bad. Um, so I think I actually would have liked to see Phoebex potentially go Geisha there instead. I understand the idea of Soul Weaver, and Soul Weaver is obviously very strong on Lakeside, and he can deal with characters like Cowboy, he can deal with characters like Antiquarian very effectively. Um, but the problem is, you fall really susceptible to that Merchant support, whereas Geisha a little bit less so, because you still dash onto Big Boat and catch up, you can deal with Merchant a lot easier, uh, whereas Soul Weaver uh, can sometimes struggle there. Yeah, that's right. And just moving on to this BO2 second half, we'll be having GR Survivors versus Inc. FPX ZQ's Hunter D. Um, mm -hmm. Just looking at this itself, we've seen... Oh, wow. we have the technology over there. <laughs> but, you know... Uh huh. But you know, yeah. we've been looking at how this had really been played, been played out. We did see how D's bonbon got for for escape in BO1. So, if GR is aiming to get a three escape, or if not a possible four escape, to get that advantage in the opponent's map selection, what could they possibly ban from D's character pool, considering that he has possibly bonbon, Rex artist, bloody queen, etc. Well. I think it's another situation where D needs to tie. It's just another situation where D has just struggled to secure a draw. You see Epic CQ survivors, uh, typically a survivor team that struggled to be consistent, but over these last two matches, uh, yesterday and today, they've actually been very effective in getting three survivor escapes. But the biggest downside is that D struggles to not only tie, he struggles to get a kill. I mean, we've seen so many yeah. four survivor escapes um, and teams have just constantly been able to take down Epic CQ after their survivors get three out because D just, cannot get two down um i would not be surprised if we saw a potential hunter substitution um at some point because d just again having a hard time getting uh single kills here and it, it's sort of been a big factor in these matches oh. um but i don't know we will see uh if he's gonna if he's gonna come out again still has a lot of hunters for a map like lakeside good tie yeah. hunters such as uh, geisha such as bloody queen such as bonbon bon, uh, could all oh. be good here yeah, and right now, yeah, I'm totally agreeing with you. And just looking at this mascot, we ha I think it's Super Rich that's on this mascot, right? Yeah, the back of the shirt, it says Super Rich, and... Um, uh, it could be Super Rich, I would say. It could be. I mean, giving your support to your Survivor team right in front of them, I guess, that's the biggest support <laughs> they can have at a point in time. So, I, I do... I, yeah, I guess... I, yeah, I guess that's kind of kind of. Oh, I actually didn't expect the mascots to be the members themselves. I thought they actually hired someone. I think they're to... usually. I think they're usually not, but maybe mm -hmm. they just uh, maybe super special... volunteered today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's like, okay, I'm not gonna play Hunter PBX. You do it, but I'm gonna play the mascot. Okay, that that should be yeah. fair. So, yeah, I guess that's how they kind of went about with that, and maybe or maybe super just gave him the huh. maybe just gave him the jacket. Also, could also wow. be. Wait, so, so he's like shirtless backstage or something, so... No, he probably has multiple jackets, he just gave him one of <laughs> Why would he be... <laughs> he probably just gave him, let him borrow it or something, I don't know. Like, they probably have a shirt and a jacket, you know? They, yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I think it would be really valuable to be kind of naked at backstage. But then again, yeah, I don't we're looking so. at this match. <laughs> we kind of digressed a bit, but right now we'll be heading right into this match. BO2 for the second half. Uh, in this... In BO1, let's just quick recap. BO1, GR's map selection, they got a 6-3 against FPX ZQ, winning the first round. In BO2, yes. first half, FPX ZQ's map selection, they got this slight advantage right now, 3-1. Servers got 3 escape against PPX Spider at Lakeside. Mm -hmm. So, um, right now, scores are not looking very far from each other. In fact, it's just a one point difference. So, if GR wants to maintain their advantage at this point in time, which is a 6-3 at the start, they get to, they have to get this three escape in this map, this match, this round in fact. So um, let's see how that's possibly gonna be played out. Right now, D has one goal. Tie, right? Yeah. It sounds easy. Wow. So maybe we should just go with one kill first, one kill before detention, and one kill during detention. Right. right. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah. So we'll see. And then another important thing is, I do. Are we gonna actually see Super come back in again? Because FTX ZQ is not a very in terms of survivability, their survivors have been very, again, very underwhelming. They have been playing well recently, but they are uh, in this uh, in this playoffs statistically one of the weaker survivor teams. Um, and PBX is still struggling to tie against a survivor team like FPX ZQ. If that's going to be the case, then uh, we might just see Super Rich come back in. But 
Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. FX EQ survivors. They have been playing well recently, so if they can keep that momentum, uh, it, it's going to come down to D as well. You know, he has to he has to start tying games. If he's not able to do so, then uh, it's not going to be looking good for FPX EQ here. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, it is Lakeside Village again. Very good map for his potential hunter pull here. You got Wax Artist, Geisha, uh, Bloody Queen, uh, Bon Bon are all fine here. Um, so uh, could potentially go Soul Weaver too. So many options for this sort of situation, but again, it just comes down to can he get two survivors eliminated? He struggled to get one in the first game, struggled to get even one in yesterday's match. So D really needs to, again, figure things out right now in this match. Yeah, that's right. So we're just gonna wait for this damn pick and I think we will be seeing that really soon. Yeah, still very, tensions are still pretty high at this point in time. Um, both teams are not smiling at all, so um, yeah, th I think this is being taken really seriously. Very competitive. Third and place, yeah, very competitive, even though yeah. they are kind of secured. I don't thought of off place. Definitely a lot of money, but there is a difference. So looking at this, yep. straight away banning at this toy merchant like you've mentioned, definitely can be a can be annoying during mid game, during mid kite. So toy merchant is here, as well as a bon bon ban in fact. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, in competitive you only get to smile when you win. So take note of that, everybody. There's no smiling allowed. <laughs> if you don't win the game, you don't get to smile. That's not how it works. But actually it doesn't sure, really matter. Sure. But anyways, uh <laughs> we are gonna see <laughs> Mercenary and Antiquarian, yeah, very standard. Obviously, the Merchant, we have to see that character go down here, uh, as we saw in the last round. It's just such a strong character on Lakeside. It sort of forces Merchant ban, and we do see D finally is going to ban Mechanic now. Maybe a little late. Obviously, Mechanic is... Uh, you you want to ban Mechanic when you're trying to play Bon Bon, and, um, but I, it's, this, it's a similar situation for Bloody Queen as well. Um, with uh, with these two bands of Psychologist and Mechanic, he, he could definitely try to go into BQ here. A uh, character like Patient would be very strong right now, uh, as it is going to be a counter to something like Bloody Queen, and it's very strong on this map. Composer! <laughs> oh, wow, so Composer is actually... Uh, huh. Composer... Composer is can be decent against Bloody Queen if you're able to, uh, to dash away, if you time it right to the mirror. But it's very hard. If she mirrors and gets a hit before the Composer's getting that speed boost, it can be challenging to kite a Bloody Queen, so um, I don't know. Uh, um, you can also mm. spawn. Actually, you know, actually, it's not bad because you can also spawn Composer Big Boat. Uh, if you spawn Composer Big Boat, um, you can have your your main decoder on that that Big Boat kiting area. It's very difficult for Hunter to chase there, so um, Composer actually work can work out pretty effectively on Lakeside uh, if you go for that spawn. Yeah, that's right. So excited how this possibly might be playing out. Bloody Queen, like you've mentioned, looking at the bands as well. Seems to be it's leaning more towards that, but um, I guess D also has a uh, Wax Artist. I'm not too sure whether he might be going for that, but this map is not ideal for Wax Artist, right, Eli? Uh, it's not great, but it's not bad. It's sort of like the one map that's just very neutral. Uh, mm. So you could, but the problem against a team like, team comp like this, it's not too good. Uh, Priestess, if she's able to make it a big boat, it's a hard chase for Wax Artist. Uh, Composer is easy for Wax Artist, but not on big boat. Um, and then Antiquarian's fine. So Wax Artist isn't bad against this comp necessarily, but in Big Boat area is very challenging. Uh, as long as Composer's able to break line of sight, um, it can be it can be very difficult. On open maps, Composer is very weak to Wax Artist because even if you zoom away, you can still wax them from a distance. Mm -hmm. um, but on maps where there's a lot of walls, like the mini boat area and the big boat area, as long as if you're very fast as a Composer, you can stay behind those walls and avoid line of sight from the Wax Artist. So I don't think D's gonna play Wax Artist because of that. Uh, I think he'll probably play... Uh, I think Geisha is not too bad here. Uh, Antiquarian obviously is difficult, but Priestess and Composer aren't bad chases. Uh, I think Bloody Queen is decent. Um, so we'll most likely see one of those two hunters, I think. Yeah, very... Yeah, I think so. Just looking like a really strong team comp to go up against. I think D kind of forgo his last ban, in fact. I think he might not have had enough time or kind of missed out that last ban, unfortunately. So um, it allowed GR to kind of secure that Priestess, but even though Priestess um, portal support wise might not be um, as 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 good as I mean in terms of support if you're comparing it to like Sacred Heart, Red Church, yeah, those are like straightforward. But we're seeing a Geisha over here, something yep. that we actually kind of ex wanted PPX to pick, considering that team comp just now. But looking at this team comp as a whole, Eli, right now, this is a different team comp. How is Geisha possibly going to chase? Um, I think that, uh, obviously Antiquarian's not great, but character like Composer isn't too bad. 
uh, it's hard to because what happens with geisha is obviously you can use the composer's speed but the problem is geisha closes that distance so fast right you it, it can compose a good transition what makes composer pretty good is that he's a transition kiting uh decoding character the the biggest weakness of decoders is that they're not good kiters but in a meta where transition cutting is very important, something like Composer mm. is actually very good. But the problem is Geisha is in this meta because she cuts off the, the transition kiting, right? Because you can just dash and catch up right away. On top of that, if you dash, if you instant dash, uh, like a pallet or a window, Composer cannot speed boost away fast enough. You can get the hit before he's able to, to use his ability. So Composer is actually quite weak to Geisha. Um, Priestess as well is actually one of the few characters that uh, Geisha is pretty good at chasing. So Geisha has good chase targets on Priestess and Composer, not so much an Antiquarian. I think that Jero is kind of baiting, uh, betting on the fact that he wouldn't go Geisha because there's an Antiquarian here, but the other two chase targets are good. So I think Geisha is strong into this comp for D and on a map like Lakeside, uh, I think this is a very good pick for him. Um, and he also spawns into relatively close to Composer and Priestess, so you can kind of choose which one he wants to go for. Um, I do like Composer spawning next to Anti because then uh, if Composer does get chased first, you can just rotate towards the Antiquarian and Antiquarian can support that first kite, um, considering that Composer is the easiest chase target for this Geisha. Yeah, definitely. I'm just excited to see what the Persona, the persona build over here. We're seeing AK with the Flying Wheel, uh, Broken Windows on Priestess as well as Composer. And for Mercenary as usual, a Titan for Hunter side, very steam, uh, simple one as well. Detention, Trump Cut, as well as the skill Blink. So we'll be heading right into the match match between GR Survivors versus FPXEQ's Hunter. This is BO2's second half, and this is your caster Chocho and Eli O will bring you the live commentary of this match. All right, looks like he is gonna go, uh, he's gonna go immediately go towards Big Boat instead. He's gonna go single out the priestess um so he doesn't want to have to play into the antiquarian support which is understandable but it does of course he's going to, of course going to allow the cypher rush of the composer and you know we talk about priestess is not a bad chase target for geisha so we're going to see him commit to that early gear priest is going to immediately rotate drop down uh trying to break that line of sight uh still trying to catch up still trying to see where the priestess is going here uh she's going to go ahead and take that big boat loop here he's going to look down building up that hunter's instinct along him to get that 1.5 uh, percent speed boost here. Not gonna take down the portal. Actually, he's gonna go down. He's gonna probably break it now. No, he's gonna leave it up completely. Um, which means Priestess can't go back to it at any point. And she can just use it again. So because D doesn't break the portal, she's gonna portal right back to it. Now he breaks it. So I'm not sure why he didn't break it right away here. That's gonna allow for the kite to extend even longer here for Shadow. He's gonna use that dash here. Should be able to get that first hit uh, as there is no flyable to work with here. Um, and does have that blink online. So not too bad of a start here. Now the, the goal for the Priestess is Sorry about delay the inevitable, delay the blink as long as possible, and you are going to see that portal use just to create that distance. Yep, that's right. And Cyphers are looking really good, really fast, in fact. So let's see how it's going to play out. There is a basement over here. I think I saw that correctly. So um, if Princess wants to down, she can't down over here. There is no. Um, there is a rescue boat, but it will be difficult. It might potentially be a double down. So yeah, rotating away from this big boat area and interrupting a little bit of his teammate Cipher, but that's okay. Shadow though. Missing that thing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. This is the way he's gonna hold see it. See whether he'll be able to fly over. Oh, he but does get the down. Mm. Yeah, he's gonna get the down on the priestess. But that's enough cipher progress for a uh, for a win here. Uh, Seventy-seven on the the third one is is definitely enough. We have mercenary save twice against engagement. You go for first rescue. What's gonna happen here? Okay, is that mercenary's gonna go for first rescue? Uh, he's gonna get the save, and he's gonna pop the ty the the cipher machine that's at eighty percent while the priestess is kiting with tide turner. Even if she dies within twenty seconds, that's enough time for mercenary to pop. Then he's just gonna go save again, and cyphers will be primed. And you see why if you don't chase composer, that cipher rush is actually important. This is why composer I think is actually not uh, a bad character, sort of underrated. And you see GR is gonna bring it out here. We saw GH sort of being the first team to bring that composer to the table, and now GR is using it here, and it's actually working out quite nicely for that Cypher. You see Mercenary, she's gonna take the hit, and she's gonna die away here uh, from this chair, and then Mercenary's gonna pop the Cypher. Uh, but the problem is, is Priestess is actually dying on this Cypher again, so Mercenary's unable to pop it. He's forced to use an elbow pad as well. Um, but, okay, so they are playing into the, the antiquarian harassment strategy. We do see Anti is in the area, could potentially help this Priestess struggle free. He's trying to double hit the Mercenary, like not gonna allow that. And Priestess heals very fast, so uh, D needs to be careful that he doesn't fall into this play. But the last two ciphers, 50 and 80%, Antiquarian is in for the harass. Even if Antiquarian doesn't harass, they will have enough cyber progress to win. So D is not looking too good right now. And there's no way he can play around this Antiquarian. Oh. 
Yeah, that's right. We're seeing that D is being uh, bullied by AK, in fact, anti Korean, and Heart is forcing that 92% cipher right below Big Boat. That cipher will be popped, and last cipher will be dependent on Composer to decode it and swing once again, disarming Hunter. And body blocking for Pristis, but she'll still be downing at that area. Cypher's 80% still. We still need about 20 seconds for that Cypher to be primed. And Blink will be up in about 30 seconds. Yeah, he's going to go for... This still is a flyable work, but still is a stun to work with. He's going to use that uh, to avoid this hit. No survivors in the vicinity, so it will be a long stun. Uh, holding that skill check. He has flywheel. Doesn't need it. Cypher machine's already ready. They're going to go for the end game here. Uh, you see the Priestess was able to get out of that area. Um, and now his chase is going to be onto the Antiquarian, which is actually a very good end game kiter. She has stick. She has flywheel. Uh, so uh, Antiquarian can still cut this out. He's going to go for that drop. They're going to go for the swing. Has blink on line in about three seconds. Uh, so he can blink to secure this one kill, or he can potentially switch to excitement uh, to get the down. Is going to just use the blink, downing the edge for in. Now this game is not over. The gate is not open just yet. Uh, if he went to the gate there, he could have potentially tied. Yeah, but he's not. He's just going to secure one kill, which, again, the bare minimum is you got to get at least one kill to tie this round. But FPXEQ would have loved to jump ahead early uh, in this match. And it looks like they're not going to take this escape they're actually going to potentially push this still 70 seconds of attention so pushing for this escape is actually quite risky i think what's going to happen is mm -hmm. composer is going to go middle priest is going to long portal the composer and then mercenary is going to rescue and they're, they're, they're uh... going to try to make it to the portal um the problem is the tension's still mm -hmm. here and there's no tide turner so i don't think this play really works but uh we'll see uh if they're still able to get it off yeah, when you said about that long portal thing, it kind of reminded me of yesterday's match, GR against break the it. opponent's team. Yeah, and getting that free rescue was so, it before half though? I'm not too sure. I don't know. I don't know if it really matters because he's going to chase Composer anyway. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. going to chase Composer. He's just going to chair him away. So this play doesn't work. Yeah, he's just going to he's going to down Composer. He's going to chair Composer over at either this uh, this chair here or he's going to take him all the way to mm -hmm. Shack, uh, or he's just going to go to Shore. Mm -hmm. Priest's long portal is on cooldown because he, what, he did break it. Uh, so, yeah, this play, I, I don't think they really have many options to go for a four escape. I think in a position where GR is leading, it's better just to take the three here. Um, but it looks like maybe I they still they will try this. Mm -hmm. I think they are pushing for more. I, I guess they, they feel that they have little to lose and actually more to gain in this possible fight. And possibly kind of also confident in getting this three escape for sure, even if things don't work out. So um, let's see how this is going to be played out. The tension is offline already. Indy Korean as well as Mercenary is here for this rescue. <gasps> Can he get to Terror, terror Shock? shock? Merc gets Terror Shock. He doesn't have elbow pads, so I don't know if Mercenary can actually make it to the gate in time. We are going to see a portal set from the Priestess. They're trying to set up a network to get them all the way to the X gate. Going to use that stun. But D has teleport, so he can cut this off here. He needs to hit one of these survivors and then teleport, so that way there's only one person that can body block. Uh, uh, let's see. He's going to teleport early here. He needs to either stop Mercenary or he needs to stop Composer. Mercenary has an illusion. He can he can illusion past him potentially with that speed boost. There's the illusion. Is it enough time to make it to the gate here? Goes for the swing. No, Mercenary oh. falls down. Antiquarian still has stick though. He's gonna go for the swing. He's gonna hit one of the survivors. But Antiquarian can stun. They can all make it up. There's the one stun. Mercenary makes the call. Oh. The gates are, they're all out. How does that work? Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and all of us thought that that one kill was kind of definite already. I and they just wanted to secure that one kill by pulling back uh, Antiquarian after she was down with that blink all the way to Lakeside. But things didn't work out. They were pushing for more and everything ultimately did work out after detention ended. That terror shock happened, unfortunately. But Antiquarian though, this shows how strong Antiquarian is. Even at the end game, that late game, even at inside the gate. Able to stun the hunt to prevent him from doing pretty much anything. And well, what a play I would say. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. I mean, that was... I, I didn't think that could work. I mean, typically you can see... Uh, you can kind of mm -hmm. see a situation and you're like, okay, so, you know, the the, the sort of the possible outcomes is like, we set up long portal here. First thing you get a save and go for the, the long portal, you get a four escape. Uh, or maybe Priest can set up... But it, it, it doesn't... Even a Priest that sets up a portal and, and you get them close to the gate. These cells teleport, so you can teleport and cut them off. Um, and there's just so many ways where uh, it's still possible it, it's still it's still very easy there's so many situations where you can still get a one kill you can you get the mercenary down uh you can uh down one of the other survivors but he chaired at he chaired at shore which when he down the composer he chaired about the sh the shore the shore cipher uh, the short chair which doesn't really make sense because it's like okay uh, i was thinking okay it's like you can take him to shack 
you can share them at the, this chair near, the, near this area where you down the map, and it's very far away from the exit gate, right? But he shares mm -hmm. it short, so that actually gives, that puts him closer to the gate. So I don't really understand, right? Like, why would you chair closer to the gate when you can literally just chair away from the gate and secure one kill? I yeah, think, right. I, I think that if he chairs uh, at the um, uh, at that chair where he's down the composer at, or he chairs at Shaq, they're not going to go for that rescue because it's way too far away from the gate at that point. Priest no longer has long portal. But because he chairs at Shore, it actually opens up a possibility for them to portal through the big boat uh, and make that extra escape. Um, and that's two four survivor escapes. D, two rounds in a row, struggling to get a single kill against this GR survivor team. Um, and we're looking at a potential three round sweep here from GR at this rate. Yeah, and yeah, someone might be right about this three to zero, not gonna lie. But anyways, uh, just looking at this itself, right? You might be wondering why D just dis dis decided not to ch to you know bring mercenary, mercenary from their balloon into their balloon state. It's because Antiquarian is still there. Antiquarian still has stick to use to to kind of stun Hunter and as allow their escape onto uh, for mercenary at that point in time. So there was actually no kind of counterplay to that. Mercenary just needed to crawl, and if Hunter does not pick him up. She's just gonna disarm him, stun him, and then everybody just escapes. And that was exactly what happened. And it just kind of showed though, because we were saying how Priestess might not be really strong on this map, but looking at it again, it seems to be that Priestess actually gave enough pressure for that free respect door rescue by Mercenary. It was a free right. rescue. And also afterwards, that portal, that thing at the big boat area, and allowed that kind of that smooth transition yeah. all the way to front gate. You know which portal I'm talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's just. Amazing though, priestess wise, antiquarian, um, composer may not have been shown to have, you know, but then again, we'll just come back really soon after the short break. And we are back once again with another fan photo. Very cute mask, I would say. Uh, GR, come on, leave no regrets and win again. Yeah, GR has been uh, actually won three times uh, uh, in a row for COA. And really unfortunately, afterwards, it was uh, Wolves and GG afterwards. So this time round, uh, there'll be possibly another champion. It could be Tho for the first time, or it will be GG once again. So that will be the next match we'll be watching. But right now, we're still on this FAX GR match. And at this point in time, BO1 and GR, BO1 and 2, GR got this advantage. And also in uh, opponent's map selection, in fact. So GR's survivor's condition is just extremely good. Able to tank, even though PPX is, um, may not be showing really optimal kind of conditions to get possibly a tie, in fact. Yeah. Yes, uh, PPX, yeah, very... Kind of struggling to, um, to to tie any games here. Still getting at least one elimination, which technically has been enough because of the incredible gameplay in the GR survivors. And yeah, D just remains sort of uh, just not not really just ready for this GR team. I mean, yeah. we saw yesterday against um, uh, I'm totally spacing out against GG had a very difficult time eliminating even one survivor. 
in mm -hmm. some of those rounds, right? It, we saw him leave Bloody Queen, one of the best characters for getting one kill, at least. And there's a Force Fire Escape, and that's with a comp that Bloody Queen wasn't was was pretty strong against characters like Thief, right? It's like usually easily for easy for Bloody Queen to deal with, but he just had a very hard time there. We see today a hard time getting one kill in both of these matches. So uh, even though PPX obviously looks sort of out of shape and not really, uh, he's struggling to to get ties. D is struggling to get one kill, and Shiro survivors are just taking clear advantage. You see how strong they are, um, and and obviously the again very strong survivor team. Um, but yeah, it, it's just imagine you know in both of these rounds if D's able to get a single kill in the first round, a single kill in the second round, we'd still be tied up. But uh, unfortunately, just fallen short in both of them. Gr survivors, although you know did struggle a little bit against Dunkshan yesterday. Today, two four escapes, very impressive, um, and it, it's just really carrying this Gr team to a potential three zero sweep at this rate. Yeah, definitely. I'm just excited to see how this might possibly play out further. And just speaking about yeah, just now that team comp, right? It was everybody contributed to that forest game. So, right, we saw how Princess Bottles and the Koreans disarmed. This too. And then also Mercenary, even if, if it wasn't Mercenary, it was any other characters, any other rescuers. A Terror Shock would have been immediate down, but that was Mercenary. And Mercenary contributed with that rescue, even though it was Terror Shock. And then Composer, you might not really see him, but he's actually f um, pushing a lot of that Cypher progress. And yep. all this four added together resulted in that Forest Gate. I would say it's amazingly done, beautifully done, very seamless. I would say the only possible mistake at that point in time was probably, probably a Terror Shock, but they recovered from it and the Forest mm -hmm. Gate still happened. So, yep. very good job done. Right now, the points difference is 12 to 6. 12 to 6. So, um, FXQ is very much behind. Yes. If they want to catch up, they can't really catch up, I would say, uh, in terms of small points anymore. They kind of have to win with rounds, just like we've seen Dou versus GR yesterday. And seeing Super Rich right now, yeah. maybe maybe our mascot is possibly another person. I uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited though, because Super Rich, uh, we've seen how amazing performances from him on the first day of this playoff. Bloody Queen as well, Super, uh, Super Rich. Bloody Queen as well as X Boy, so uh, let's see whether that could possibly be played out or if Epic ZQ is just going to give their respect ban to those hunters right from the get-go in BO3. Yeah, you saw unfortunately, we did see PPX back in for those first two rounds, seeing if we could potentially turn things around, but did fall a bit short there. So yeah, now it's on to, uh, uh, now it's back to Super Rich here. Let's see if you can just close things out for JR again. They have such a, uh, such a wide lead. You know, it's, it, you never really see a team get two, three survivor escapes and still be down 12 to 6 after two rounds. I mean, that's just how strong these survivors have really been. Two, four escapes. Um, very, very impressive. So uh, let's see what's uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, Super Rich, again, just needs to hold the lead. GR now has map selection to work with here. FPX EQ very far behind. Um, so let's see again. Uh, I think Super Rich, he's just going to play for ties. Again, he's been very consistent throughout this tournament. He has allowed some four escapes, but also got some four kills on average still able to hang around that two elimination, which is exactly what a strong survivor team needs. Uh, as mm -hmm. long as you're able to consistently get or two twos for the most part on the honor side and your survivors are winning games, um, then it actually works out quite nicely in the long run. So um, yeah, Super so just gonna go out. He's just gonna try to play for a tie here and just let the GR survivors clean things up when their faction comes out to play. Yep, that's right. And I'm excited to see what Super Rich might possibly bring out to possibly surprise us, like how Dongshan actually surprised us. With that Leo's memory, re Evil Reptilian, but before that we're looking at this map selection by Jurasite, Ever Slipping Town, one of their best maps in fact. Um, very iconic, uh, AK getting hit by the tram, and also um, Super Rich Knight getting hit by the tram two times in a row in a single match, but um, we'll see whether that might possibly be happening. Uh, tram God is always on GR's side. Every time they get hit by the tram, they always win, so we'll see whether that will be happening. So the ban pick phase will be starting now. Let us, let us see whether the respect ban will be happening on FPXZQ side against Super Rich. Mm, so I think we'll see probably... Okay, it's gonna go Axeboy again. Axeboy, Nyad. But this does open up Bonbon, bon, and considering that Super Rich just needs to tie this round, Bonbon, uh, bon, I think, is fine. I mean, let's see. Uh... Let's see what the survivors go with. I think they're gonna try to build uh, an anti bon, bon comp, and then he still has Bloody Queen. So you have to cover kind of all the grads. There's a Mercenary and looks like Prospector. So they're gonna prepare for Bon Bon with this Mercenary and Prospector, but the problem is now uh, you do fall susceptible to a potential Bloody Queen. Although it is ever something town, not one of the better Bloody Queen maps here. 
Um, it's still going to be um, uh, difficult. Prospector can struggle a little bit against Bloody Queen. The Prospector's best way to deal with the BQ is you run into the main body, you fly well past the main body, so you don't get trapped between the mirror and the main body, and then you magnet push her away. Um, looks like we're going to see Dancer and Antiquary, uh, not Antiquary, sorry, Dancer and Merchant Band as well. Um, and we're going to see Cowboy from FPX DQ again here. So this is really, uh, this is really interesting. Cowboy on Ever Sleeping Town isn't quite as strong. Um, there are some areas, I guess you can die uh, in the corner of Graveyard. That can be pretty strong for a Cowboy. And then also in the corner of the Corner House building as well. Uh, and actually, corner of, uh, of Fake Gate as well. There's actually some, I, I guess there are some areas where Cowboy can be strong here, so. Um, we'll see if it actually has an impact. It could be very good against a character like Bon Bon, if Super mm. H does have to go with that. We took, we took, we've seen it before, right? Where Cowboy's a very strong kiter. Uh, we never, we haven't seen the harassment just yet, but the kiting, very strong for Cowboy versus Bon Bon, and the harassment could potentially have a factor as well. Yeah, and chair placements are very important as well. We'll see whether that uh, Cowboy action harassment will be seen later on. We're seeing double harassment, Cowboy as well as Prospector, and someone just being picked as well. But looking at the team comp itself, Entomologist, Seems to be that um, they might either be forcing Super Rich to pick a Bon Bon, mm. or they are not prepared. I think they're forcing him to pick Bloody Queen, because this comp is really strong against Bon Bon. So Prospector's strong against Bon Bon, Cowboy's very strong against Bon Bon, and Tomorrow just not as much, but still can kite with good rotation. Um, so I think they're, they're trying to force him to like Bloody Queen on a bad BQ map, because Bon Bon has mm. such a hard chase target against. Cowboy and Prospector, and then with any sort of Prospector support as well, uh, and Entomology just constantly be able to make this, and she can look corner house against Bon Bon very well, as long as you break elevation with two double story maps here, Entomology is actually pretty good against Bon Bon as well. So yeah. Bon Bon is very weak to this team comp. So they're trying to play anti Bon Bon, uh, and then they're trying to uh, force Bloody Queen on a weak Bloody Queen map, and we'll probably see a heavy flywheel build. Yeah, I think we might be possibly seeing that Super Rich though, will he, you know, decide for the, um, decide to choose Bloody Queen at a Bloody Queen? But no, we're seeing Spider once again, once again, but it's a different player this time. Uh, just now uh, we saw PPX playing Spider at Lake Side this time around Super Rich. So this team come against Spider. Prospector is not good. You've mentioned how like using the Magnus, she can just uh, push Hunter away even if he has speed boost. Entomologist wise, the Beast can push Hunter and then there is this cowboy that can do transitional kiting. So, oh, any possibilities why Super Rich might be choosing this against this very strong team called that counters him? Yeah, so basically, um, it, it doesn't necessarily, like Endemonge is a good kiter against uh, against Spider. Uh, Prospector is good, but also you have to be careful because the uh, Soilers, when they're, when they're very fast, you can't repel, you have to attract. So if you attract, then it's gonna be, have to be in a good area to attract. Um, the, the, the issue here is that he's playing around he's playing around Cowboy and Prospector in that they want to go for a struggle-free strategy, right? You die in the corner of the map and you can go for a struggle-free, but Soul Reaver can cocoon. So Soul Reaver hard counters Cowboy for two reasons. One, you can chase Cowboy very easily. If you transition cut, you just we use webs, catch up right away and get a free hit. And if Cowboy goes for a struggle-free play, you just cocoon instead. So Soul Reaver actually counters, hard counters Cowboy in terms of chasing and also Cowboy's harassment. Um, so he's really just playing around the Cowboy here with the Soul Weaver. Um, and then also, again, you can chase Prospector, but this spawn is actually really good for survivors because the weakest chase target, uh, sorry, the hardest chase target for the Soul Weaver is the Entomologist, and he actually spawns into the Ento, and the second survivor spawns into the Prospector, which is the second best target, but Prospector gets two-story spawn, which is one of the strongest kiting places to start out uh, as a survivor on this map. So, uh, he was, I think he was hoping that he would spawn into Cowboy, but he actually spawns into Ento, which is a lot better for survivors. Mm, yep, that's right. And we're looking at this sauna, Cowboy with the Flying Wheel, Entomology as well as Prospector with the Broken Windows, and Titan not unusually uh, on the Mercenary. Detention Trump card on, as his persona as well as Blink as his traits. So we'll be heading right into the match. Match between FPX Zeke Survivors versus GRS Hunter. This is your caster Chocho and Eli O bring you the live commentary of this match. All right, uh, obviously cannot go for Entomologist first, so we're going to see him immediately rotate towards Prospector. Prospector actually spawns below the two-story, which is really bad for survivors. You see he's already... Prospector rotates straight to Graveyard. He could have rotated the other way and kept uh, kept making distance, but he goes straight to Graveyard instead, so he already gets found. This could potentially be an early hit, so unfortunately bad rotation for the Prospector is really going to hurt him here. He cannot use a Magnet in this area as well, because there's no way, there's nothing he can attract to. He can only repel there, and that would cancel attack recovery. So we are going to see him get that broken window speed boost plus the um, 
the locker speed, the magnet speed boost on the, the Cypher machine, so it's going to allow for some distance here. But this is going to force Beast to come early, which means Cypher Rush is going to be even slower for survivors uh, of FPX CQ. So unfortunately, that rotation from the, uh, the Prospector is perfect for Super Rich. Yeah, and Super Rich also, you know, doing a preventive measure just in case Prospector do get on this tram if he rotates that way. And just forcing Momo to stay in this area and not leaving. Uh, he has 2 minutes now, so we'll see how this 2 minutes will be put into use. Um, Blink is ready, so let's see how it's gonna play out. Oh, he goes for the Blink, he's gonna play around the Entomologist support there. Uh, quick down here, and yeah, because the Entomologist wasn't able uh, yeah. to support that early, that is a, it's a very fast down for Super Rich. An excellent start here. Um, and again, the Prospector's rotation is just such uh, an unfortunate downside for FPX EQ. So um, we will see Entomologist Beast coming with the Mercenary Rescue here to potentially force uh, attack recovery, use the Beast to push away and allow the, 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 the distance to be made for the um, uh, for Prospector. But the problem is, is that Cyphers are just so far behind because Entomologist is moving the Beast around early game. Yeah, that's right. It's not really looking enough. Mercenary will be coming for this rescue. The bees are being put to use, so let's see whether it could be a possible safe rescue. Terror shot, unfortunately! Wow. And this bees will be pushed. Uh, will be pushing Super Rich backwards, and Distance Savage is really large. Two minutes for Prospector to use, and there is no flying wheel. This yep. terror shot, though, it might turn the game around from a potential tie situation to possibly three or four kill for Super yeah. Rich. Yeah, I guess the, the one upside, though, is that. Uh, can make it all the way to the corner house, which is a strong kiting area, but you have to be careful because Spider's actually good in corner house. You can drop the webs, you can catch up very quickly, and you see, yeah, he's actually going to rotate away here. Uh, I think what Mama's going to do is going to rotate around the, the back side here of this building. He's going to potentially go back to corner house, and then uh, we could potentially have uh, a body block or some support. We do see the, the track stun to, to cancel that. We're going to see Entomologist try to support with the bees there. It's going to take the body block hit, which I think is actually good. Uh, Entomologist doesn't need to rescue at any point here. But the problem is, because Mercenary got Terror Shock, Cyphers are so slow here, and there's a lot of webs in this area. He might not even make it to this pile in time. He goes for the web shot, goes for the swing, gets it down onto the Prospector here, and the Cyphers nowhere near enough here. They still have not st started either of the last two Cyphers. Mercenary's still on the ground, so the Cypher is a lot slower here. So this is looking like an easy, easily a drawn position uh, for Super Rich. Yeah, and we saw that on the bottom left just now, Entomologist was just staying at that area and just placing a beast over there just in case there is the support needed. But then right now, wasting time and also now the wasted beast. No decoding process at all. And right now, last two ciphers just barely touched. Looks like we're going to see Cowboy's going to push the save here. No tide turn available. Hits the web shot from a distance as well. Uh, still has flywheel to work with, but again, the last two ciphers are not a lot of progress, but FEX EQ knows they need to go for this play. He's gonna get the hit here onto the uh, onto the cowboy, so he's gonna eat that. He's able to dodge the shot here. Can he potentially? He uses the magnet boost instead. Goes for the attract to cancel the the, the web speed boost. Uh, and only ten webs here for Super Rich, so a rebound kite is possible. The problem is now there is uh, there is blink available. We need to see the cowboy coming for this harass. He's gonna use the blink to get the down. Can cowboy do something to potentially harass right now? He has to. Goes for the web shot. Is able to avoid it. Here comes the last. He does not have enough for a cocoon. He has to. He gets the drop, but he's too close to the chair. Cowboy can't get this. He's just going to chair right away. Uh, we needed to see him die away from the rocket chair there. Prospector was not able to do so. So Super Rich has his first kill, and everybody's injured here. So they're forced to open up an extra cypher in case somebody does get chased and shared on this last cypher. She's actually going to go uh, for a lead by Mercenary. You know, for that web shot, he's able to avoid that. But uh, again, Super Rich knows if he ties this game, GR probably uh, will easily have enough to win from there. Yeah, and everybody just looking really weak at this point in time. Entomologist, no beast, mercenary, three elbow pets still, but the health though. Cowboy as well, just one web shot and he will be down. Lee Bao has to be careful. Did not get that web shot, unfortunately, but looking at this as a whole right now, Cypher seems to be that it will be enough. Right now, Super Rich is not finding anybody in particular. He's just rotating around, not camping any Cyphers as well. So, oh, Cyphers are looking enough, in fact. He's going to get the web shot onto the uh, Entomologist here. It does have that broken window speed boost, so she's able to make it to this graveyard window uh, before the next web shot is available. I think he was trying to bait that he had web shot back so it, uh, so she wouldn't vault, but uh, no, he obviously still on cooldown. We do see the Mercenary actually searching a chest. Gets the web shot to the Mercenary, gets the down right away there, catches the Mercenary in a, ba <clears throat> in a bad area, and now... <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, and now uh, he's actually gonna. Oh, this is really smart. He's gonna take him to the corner and he's gonna cocoon him. They need to pop Ooh. as soon as they drop him right now. They have to pop right now. They do get the Ooh. pop and the elbow pad. Beautiful pop from FPX CQ to keep themselves alive. If Super Edge got that cocoon off, uh, this probably would have been uh, a three elimination or they just wouldn't have been able to save at all because uh, everybody's injured. They could have gone for a web shot. 
um, and he's just turned so far away. And look at that distance. Mercenary actually makes trade is on cooldown. Uh, if they could potentially, oh no, the problem is Entomon is not to the exit gate here. So, uh, and Cowboy zoom into the gate. Cowboy's not even going to risk it here. He's going to use every single one of his webs here. But Cowboy has a pallet. He has lasso, and now Super Two's webs uh, are on cooldown. But he lassos into the, he lassos into the Soul Weaver. But he didn't have any webs. He could have just transitioned away. Uh, but Cowboy just. Ah, oh, huge mm. misstep from, from Sansoy here. He could have easily tidied that out if he just kept running forward. Oh, but teleporting to the gate right now, Mercenary. Half health, unable to get... Oh, getting that web shot! But, oh, he won't be committing to that. Drop will be coming for this potential rescue. That gate over there is 52%. The Mercenary's gate is 77%. Let's see how it's going to be played out. And some just do have a perfume though, so... But Tinnitus will be popped up on the pop... Yeah, it, Tinnitus has been popped up on the top left-hand corner when he got nearer to the gate, so drop! We'll be spotted oh, out with Oh, he has crows. That. Oh, wow. He has crows. If he touched the gate, he wouldn't get crows, but he just never touched the gate. So actually, drop making a big misstep there. Uh, if you touch the gate, it removes your crows. And he gets he gets the pick, he gets the down onto the entomologist here. This could be a three elimination, potentially. We're gonna see the mercenary. Mercenary doesn't have the gate open either. Uh, he's gonna, uh, go to the web shot on the I chair. Think. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it looks like Mercenary is gonna be able to get the gate open here. And there's no tinnitus, so he knows there's no way, uh, to make this rescue. He's just gonna go for the chair onto the entomologist now. Mercenary is out the gate here. Um, and I guess he's just waiting for the cocoon so he can't struggle free, maybe. Um, but I, no, okay, he's just gonna, yeah, there's gonna be the surrender there. And then is a three elimination here with Soul Weaver. And you see why Super Itch is just so strong for this GR team, so consistent, uh, and why, why we've seen him come out as the main hunter for this GR team. A three elimination here, that puts um, a uh, uh, FPX CQD in a really tough position. He has to get a three kill just to force an extra round. And even if he does do that, right, they're still down six points. They still have to win the last two rounds uh, and gain back six points in those rounds. Um, so I guess the best bet now, I mean, really the best bet for for FPX EQ is he has to try to four kill. I mean, that's, if he doesn't yeah. four kill, then it's just almost, a, it, it's very difficult for them to even make a comeback at that point. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him play Bon Bon and get a four kill against WBG, but that was only when WBG survivors gave quite a little bit of opportunities to D to cap, 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 capitalize on. And I doubt that GR would be giving the kind of chances to D to get that 4k definitely at least we'll be getting a tie situation which is exactly what Jira wants and that's exactly what Jira needs in fact to get this 3-0 to zero, ending this match securing their third place and fourth place to FPX DQ so just looking at this itself you know we were kind of doubtful with that spider pick honestly but honestly just let him cook you know we saw how he managed to get that almost instant down it was a great chase. He did everything that he needed to with perfection, in fact. That terror shot, though, it was added. But yeah, he managed to capitalize and just force survivors to come for this rescue. Because at the point in time, if they don't come for this rescue, Mercenary would still be down on the chair. I mean, chair on the chair. Down on the floor. And also that cocoon trade-off, though, even though he didn't manage to cocoon Mercenary, that enough web was a lot allowed him to kind of speed towards the gate, forcing Cowboy out of that. Um, op from opening the gate and everything worked out perfectly. Entomologist also a bit of the misstep over there, not touching the gate to remove the crows, possible crows that could be appearing mm -hmm. on his head. So, yep. appearing of crows on the head is something that unpredictable, but kind you kind of can feel it that you haven't been doing anything. So, uh, the crows might potentially be onto you very soon. Yeah. So. I, the thing is, like in that situation, um, there's like there's a lot of there's so much going on where. You know, if you're hiding out for a long period of time, then you're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna get crows eventually. But Entomology isn't hiding. She's rotating around. I think she was probably uh, probably searching a chest or setting up for, for Exigate or, mm -hmm. or whatever. So you don't really realize, in a situation like that, it's very difficult to realize that you haven't interacted with anything for a while, whether that's a Cypher Machine or an Exigate or healing a survivor. Um, so you don't really, it's very difficult to actually recognize that you're gonna pick up crows in that sort of situation. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's still at, at, at this level of competition, as a survivor said, so you have to acknowledge something like that. And unfortunately, uh, just a uh, mess up from the entomologist not to, to pick up on that. You have to touch the X gate. You have to remove those crows. You have to prevent yourself from getting crows. You have to interact with one of those uh, one of those crow removing uh, things. Again, whether that's the gate, whether that's healing, whether that's uh, decoding a cypher machine. And uh, unfortunately, wasn't able to do so. That allowed Super Rich to eventually spot him out. I still think that Super Rich could potentially three kill, even if um, he 
didn't have crows because Enemol just kind of trapped there. There's not a lot of places you can actually go from that place. Um, and he knows he has tonight, he knows the survivors in that area. Um, but the crows, yeah, definitely just secures it there. Um, and again, yeah, uh, excellent display of, of Soul Weaver from Super Rich here. Yeah, definitely. The Terror Shock definitely added to him possibly winning as well. That was possibly a condition because Terror Shocking Mercenary, he's only able to decode that little bit before he is downed. And at the point in time, and so just looking for this body block and the only person that could be decoding possibly was Cowboy. And Cowboy was actually situated at a situation where he was at this shack direction. So he was really setting up already. That means that the Cypher's actually at the standstill at that point in time after the Cypher's popped. So very well done on Super Rich side. I did not expect this 3 kill by Spider also on Super Rich side. We've never really seen him play Spider as well. So. Good job, well done. And we're now moving on to the second half. FPXZQ's Hunter D will be playing up against GR Survivors, which has been getting four escape in BO1 as well as BO2. Getting this three kill onto D side will not be easy at all. Yeah. Also, that endgame was very interesting as well. I get the super trying to be very careful because it almost ended up working out for FPXZQ with that, that endgame play. As you saw, he dragged the mercenary to the corner. And he's going to drop the merc mercenary and then use the cocoon. And if you could cocoon Mercenary in the corner of the map, it's so difficult for them to rescue from that situation. Um, so he's going to take Mercenary in the corner, he's going to drop him in the corner, he's going to cocoon him using 60 webs. And then since it's such, it's in the corner of the map, he can cut off the rescuer from so far away. Um, and But yeah, I mean, it looks like uh, they, you know, they had the server machine ready. They had a perfectly timed pop there, so excellent play from the survivors. And he was able to help out away. But yeah, it's still the problem was he's able to get a quick down after the teleport. And then there was another survivor ready. The FPXEQ didn't position themselves on exit gates in ideal positions, right? And that ended up being perfect uh, for Super Rich. So, um, or he didn't know, he didn't teleport, my bad. I think he just zoomed all the way to the gates, something mm. like that. Uh, he was NASCARing, so. Yeah, he was um, zooming. Yeah, from Berwyn. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, anyways, are you, you good? Uh, I'm good. Sometimes when you guys do really unexpected things, right? The casters especially, when they do really unexpected things, I, I just get caught off guard sometimes but yeah we see a little wave on LPZ side definitely really happy it is his ex team he is the ex leader the forever leader of GR even though he's not physically in GR anymore um a very good a very great supporter of GR we saw him yesterday as well with that GR shirt even though they did not get the put uh, the chance to play for that champion uh once again uh competing for this third place is still important it's still a competition definitely yep. won't be given e I mean, this third place definitely wouldn't be given easy to FTXZQ and FTXZQ as well will not hopefully um, give this possible third place to GR as well. But looking at the situation itself, it's not looking easy at all. 15 to 7 right now. Yep. Um, so let's see. Uh, again, FTXZQ, even with a three survivor elimination here, uh, that does force a fourth round technically, but then. FPXEQ has to win both those rounds and they have to win by six or they have to get back six or more points. So they can't just like five to three, five to three. If they five to three both the rounds, then they're still down two points and they still lose on points. They're tied in rounds, but they lose on points. So then it's a situation where it's like, okay, you get a two, you get a five, three, and then you have to go for like a five point game in which you get a, you gain, um, and actually that's even, that's so bad because six points is so hard because even if you get like a five to three, you're still down, you're still on four points. So then you can't like get like a 5-0 and then like a 3-1 because then it's still 6-3, you're still down one point. So they have to get, four, they have to, he has to somehow three kill, which he struggled to even get one in any of the first two rounds, but he has to three kill here. Uh, and assuming he even does that, they still need to mount a huge comeback in the last two rounds. So the, honestly, the best possible chance of a comeback here for FPX EQ is D should just try to be aggressive and try to four kill. But um, considering that again, yeah, he just struggled to even eliminate one survivor in any of these first two rounds. Uh, GR is looking so good. They just need two survivors out the gate and they will win this thing right here. Yep, that's right. And uh, all, all all hopes are on D, especially fans of FPXZQ. If you're aiming, you know, kind of betting on him as well, FPXZQ. Uh, things are not looking good, of course. So do support your favorite teams on the live stream itself. And also do bet your apples. I believe right now apples for this is closed, but the apples betting for GG as well is still, is still open. You can still do that in game. Uh, and yeah, just looking at this, it's not looking easy. He needs to get at least a three kill and at least a three kill and preferably four kill. So it's easier for him in BO4 and 5. Because if he gets a three kill only, 
BO4 and 5, the survivor or hunter side has to get 4 kill or 4 escape uh, one, at least one time in each match. So it's gonna be difficult unless like a 10 to 0 situation like yesterday GR against the wound BO1 could happen. But that really calls for a miracle. So um, looking at the probability, it seems to be it's leaning more towards GR, but hope is definitely not lost. Yeah, uh, definitely not lost, but still, yeah, a very, a very big uphill battle for FPX CQ. So, um, yeah, it looks like D, yeah, coming back out for this third round. Let's see what he can potentially pull out here. Um, the only hunter we've seen him be able to four kill with, I believe, was Wax Artist in the B4U matchup. So I don't think he really has. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he has the bond body against Weibo, but that was mainly because Weibo tried to play very aggressive. Yeah. So he can't. Re here, the GR is not going to play aggressive. I mean, they're just going to try to tie. It. The only way Bonbon bon four kills is if teams try to play extra aggressive and he's able to stuff a rescue and he can take advantage of survivors being too aggressive. That's the only way Bonbon bon actually wins. Bonbon uh, bon doesn't win on killing survivors quickly. And they're just going to ban Wheel and Sculptor because they're just going to ban the potential four kill hunters from D, right? Because he has to four kill, essentially. He doesn't have to, he has to three kill. But he mainly has to four kill if he wants a chance of winning. So they're just going to ban uh, the two hunters that have win potential that D has here, uh, which of course are Sculptor and Breaking Wheel. Um, and then he can technically still play Clerk, but they're just going to go forward and Psych already, two direct counters to Clerk. Um, and then he's left with Wax Artist technically, which has win potential, but it's still very hard uh, to win with Wax Artist in the Cypher Rush meta. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, oh, and we're seeing this. We're seeing this ban pick still ongoing. D is taking time to kind of process what he possibly want to ban. Looking at this, female dancer as well as mechanic has been banned. And they pick an embalmer, you see. Yep. Oh, embalmer will be difficult. It kind of eliminates them from coming for this rescue, which allows Cypher Progress to be progressed so much further without any interruptions at all. So this, is just, this team comp itself is just looking really difficult. And there is still a Toy Merchant. We do know that Shadow do play the Toy Merchant. So uh, let's see what other things they... Oh, but they need the Toy Merchant straight up. So they do have limited choices, but still... <laughs> limited choices? Oh, but a Whipping Clown. So yesterday we actually saw a Whipping Clown. I believe it was Do'u Survivors kicking a Whipping Clown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, no, no, no. It was... Um... Was it Do'u? The other team. It was the other team. G GR? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Weeping Clown is um, Weeping Clown is there. So Jira's bringing Weeping Clown again. So uh, Weeping Clown is essentially very strong against Clerk because it's a very good transition kind of right. You can also pick up one of the survivors and help them transition. Um, and so uh, uh, oh, yeah, she has like the like the, the little girl hair, right? Yeah, she's a little girl. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so basically uh, this comp is essentially for mainly for Clerk here, right? Is that? Uh, forward, obviously, is a good harassment character against Clerk. Uh, Psychology can take multiple hits against Clerk. Weeping Clown is a good transition kiter against Clerk, and also carry a survivor to help them transition and make distance against Clerk as well. And we saw Weeping Clown be very strong against Dunchwin's Clerk. clerk. Yes, Jiro was actually able to beat it, uh, and Dunchwin is probably the best Clerk player in the world. So um, I think here that's probably the strategy. And then Abomber's just there as Abomber's a very good tie survivor. Obviously, we talk about Abomber's very good for. Uh, getting an extra survivor out the gate in certain situations, but also when you need a tie is very good for just tying games. Because you can just self-rescue with Embalmer. There's two approaches you can bring with Embalmer. You can go for just self-rescue yourself, uh, and then so no one has to go for a rescue, you continue to tie. He's actually gonna go Hermit <laughs> as his potential four kill hunter here, which uh, uh, playing Hermit into Psychologist is really challenging. Um, so I don't know. I guess the idea is that you have two slow decoders with Clown and Forward. So you saw it on the side rush, you could potentially still go for a four kill, but Ooh. yeah. Yeah, uh, but this, thing? yeah, but give me a second, but this fan phone is saying Lampang is a quiet, which means it's LPZ, which is GR's ex leader's uh. birthday today. And speaking of birthdays though, today is also Porch Spy's birthday, our commentator that will be coming up later on. So do wish him a happy birthday later on when he do come up for that next match, Do U versus GGR, right? So. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not sure if he's hearing this, but here's what they thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. What? Nobody told me. He told. Yeah. He just told me that bit right, right, right before this, and I was like, oh, uh... all right. <laughs> yeah, but do wish him happy birthday, though. Even though it's something sure. small, but, at, but I mean, like, you, you do get an a year older, which is not something you really want to celebrate. But 
Then again, uh, nice we kind of digress a little bit. Let's just go back into this. <laughs> Looking at the spawn locations, we do have Hermit spawning at the Geisha area. Right next to him, we have Shadow, the Embalmer. Uh, he could potentially go for that or part the Whipping Clown. So, mm. uh, looking at this, it's just not a difficult chase either way. It's not gonna lie. So, yep. um, I think so, uh, mm -hmm. I think I'll go for Embalmer first. Typically, you see Embalmer spawn in a two story area. You can set up coffin in your two story and then cut away from it. Um, but yeah, uh, he spawns into Embalmer, which is very good. You want to spawn into Embalmer. Because you spawn into Embalmer, then you make it so there's no, um, he doesn't have a lot of time to set up Coffin. And so that's really, t if you set up Coffin, you waste a couple a second or two, which allows the Hunter to catch up. Looks like we have double Flywheel here as well, Forward and Embalmer. Uh, we've been clowning bringing Titaner. He has, does bring Trump Card. I think in this situation you have to have, Trump Card's uh, more aggressive. So having that as an option, it gives you more map pressure late game. Um, and yeah, first chase definitely needs to be on Embalmer, but the thing is, see this very standard of Embalmer, broken windows and flywheel. So he has a very heavy kiting build here, uh, and it's going to be very challenging to uh, to chase that. Yep, that's right, and we're heading right into the match, match between FPX EQ's Hunter and GR Survivors. This is your commentator Cho Cho and Eli O bring you the live commentary of this match. So heading right straight to the center, it seems to be that he wanted to potentially chase either psychologist or forward but yep. uh psychologist might be the potential chase with tight tunnel though there is no broken windows if i saw... no borrowed time oh, oh there is so, no borrowed time mm. yeah which actually is smart because in a situation where you only need to get a tie uh the first kiter doesn't need to have borrowed time right you can just allow them to go down and who cares right as long as you get two out the exit gate <laughs> so that's sort of the strategy is you want your first kite to be as long as possible um and then that way you can just play for tie a lot easier so it looks like he's going to put a shock at the window here. So if the survivor does have to go back to the window, they're going to pick up a charge in the process. Um, is Shadow going to go right back to it? Looks like he is, and he does pick up the blue charge. So nice little setup from D, but he does have the tram to work with here. He's going to... No, he actually opts to not take it instead here. Uh, we do see Psychologist is in the area. And this is where Psychologist is so good against Hermit. Because Psychologist can just constantly take damage. Yeah, he's going to take damage here uh, for the Embalmer. Um, and the Psychologist is just going to have it healed off instead. Yeah, that's right. We're seeing a possible flying wheel used by Shadow. We could be seeing that. Oh, oh a little bit baiting out. Yep, baiting that quite wow. early and still kiting around this area where his coffin is located at. So, um, may not be the best choice, but then again, uh, Hunter's first skill has been used. Eye of Sauron has been used as well. Will he be able to kill up, kill up Shadow though? There is no more blink anymore. Uh, yeah, but he has a he has a, a shock back in a second here. Um, he can't go for this and because flywheel. Yeah, was oh he actually misses it, but it doesn't mm. matter. Uh, he's still going to go down in this area over here. Um, he's going to get the down onto the Embalmer, and he does uh, get a little bit of extra chip damage across the board as well. Embalmer still has that coffin to work with, but he wasn't able to get too far away from the coffin. This start is actually good for D. Uh, Hermits usually take a lot longer to get their first kill. Um, and again, the Cypher Progress is going to be slowed down a lot because it is a Hermit. You spread out that, uh, that Cypher Progress throughout the board here. Um, so, if there's any chance for D here, it is right now. Looks like he is going to get the stun onto the forward, is able to get that hit there. We're going to see forward. Going to go for a long stun. Gets the stun into the tram here. Psychologist making the backdoor rescue too. This allows Embalmer to actually get away, potentially rebound kite. He can't catch up with the stun, uh, or with the teleport ability. And he is, yeah, just back on the Embalmer. So the stun actually ends up not mattering too much. You see why Hermit is very good at closing distance off these transition kiters. Yeah, that's right. And just removing all possible... He stopped linking them, right? Correct? Yep. Oh, but uh, what could be a possible... Because they, can't, because they can't change the charge to blue, so there's no way they can take a charge for an Embalmer. Uh, so this way, Embalmer's going to go down to one hit. So he removes the charge here, uh, but the problem is now, if you do that, the Cypher is going to be very fast. Um, it looks like Ford's going to come for the Sun, yeah, and extending the kite even longer. Yeah, so he breaks the charge there. Um, that way... Uh, they can't switch to blue, so Embalmer, they, they can't take a, mm -hmm. uh, a chip hit for Embalmer. But if you do that, Cypher Rush is a lot faster now. So you really want to do that right before you get your kill. I think D actually did it a little too prematurely. This allows them to decode for free now. Uh, and now, even if he does down Embalmer, Embalmer has such a long, uh, a lot of distance away from the coffin, a lot of free Cypher Rush, and all of a sudden the survivors are now into a good position. Does get that shock there um, onto the Embalmer. He's going to bait him into vaulting here, but uh, he's not going to go down without a shock. Excellent job from Shadow. Oh, but he kind of has a last still, probably the Cypher almost priming because he does not have borrowed time as well. So um, he can coffin himself all the way back to Graveyard and getting him down after hitting him with the polarity uh, and just going to waste a little bit more time chairing him. So Cypher's are looking at almost 90% and I believe after this 
um, coffin thing, it should be enough time for that cipher to be popped immediately. Yeah, you see, he doesn't need to have borrowed time because he can just coffin himself instead of using that borrowed time, and they're just gonna pop the cipher machine. Um, right about now, I would imagine. Yeah, and they're just gonna play for the end game here. Again, this is why Embalmer doesn't need borrowed time in this sort of situation, because you can just coughing yourself out, it sort of acts as like a free rescue, a free borrowed time, then you pop the ciphers, go for the end game here, trying to find where the Embalmer is. Keep in mind, D has to get a four kill right now, and he's in another situation where he may not even get one. We're gonna see Embalmer still has flywheel, still has broken windows. He does get the stun here, which is gonna hit the Embalmer, but because they kind of spread off the damage here, and Bomber gets looking at it. He's going to switch to teleport and go to the exit gate here because he has to, I mean, at least three kill. But yeah, it's not looking too good. GR survivors are just playing this very well. Yeah, that's right. And I believe GR survivors are also aiming for a four escape once again. So Cizai is just oh, removing that charge so that one gate shall be open faster if they just says focus on one and that's exactly what's happening. Caesar is just trying to kite this out. Nobody can tank the damage for him so he might be taking this attention hit all by himself but there is that coffin onto him so he wouldn't be down immediately. I believe coffin is at the center area where the dungeon is located at. We've been kind of late with that but Shadow is forcing that cypher opposite. It's not done yet. 80%. 20 sec 10, 5 seconds more might be enough but oh will he be, will he be <gasps> it's enough and it gets open it will be a forest yeah. game. Uh, Once again, we oh one two three four escape from wow. Jira Survivor site. What a play! What perfect survivor gameplay from GR 15 0 in terms of survivor escapes. On they didn't allow a single survivor to be eliminated in three rounds. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, so GR with a very, very convincing victory 3 2 0 over FTXCQ, securing themselves that third place spot. Uh, as the winner uh, of this uh, of this Constellation Championship, then they will, again, ultimately be the third place team in this Call of Abyss tournament. Um, I just got um, uh, a mm -hmm. message from, I got a message from Joggy that he bet 10,000 apples on GR winning and 10,000 apples on four escapes in this match. So if you did that, then good job, guys. Um, so that's... That's totally not me, so... Um... <laughs> yeah, with your 34 apples remaining. Yeah. <laughs> 31, in fact. But anyways... Um, 31, okay. Sorry. Yeah, right now the points is looking really good. GR winning with ultimately 18 to 7. So 18 points onto GR side. Very convincing, like you've mentioned. Also, congratulations GR once again. And I believe this might be the best birthday gift for GR's LPZ. Mm. Uh, yep. Even though it's his birthday, yeah, it was above day, and they got the third place as well, which is the highest they can get at this point in time. So, congratulations to GR, you know, um, just cementing your title as the third place in, um, second round up, in fact, in this UA6, and for FPXZQ, the fourth place. Yeah, absolutely, which is still fine. I think FPXZQ, again, going into this playoffs, one of the uh, teams predicted to not make it very far in the playoffs. I think a lot of people expected them to lose their matches early. They were able to get their Weibo Gaming, which was not one we really... I mean, FPX ZQ ended up doing a lot better than predicted. I mean, they did not... They were definitely not predicted to be the first seed in their in their group. Actually, a lot of people maybe thought they might not even make the playoffs. And they ended up being the first seed uh, in that uh, matchup where they were able to um, get that four escape against Shama in, 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 the, uh, in the group stage. And then they were able to get through Weibo Gaming with a win, which was, again, very unexpected, but they were able to get through there. And then making it all the way uh, to the semifinals, unfortunately, did fall their last two games, um, which, you know, obviously they're going against uh, some of the best teams in the world here. And because they are one of the lower level China IVL teams, still making it to the fourth place in the call of this global tournament is very impressive. But GR ultimately will be securing the number three uh, for this world championship event. Yeah, I think some of us might not even also expecting GR to reach this far in this playoffs as well, but they did and they got secured their third place as well with a very convincing win, like I mentioned, 15 to 0 survivor side. You didn't give a single point to the opponent's hunter at all, showing that they are one of possibly the strongest survivor team uh, amongst these top four teams as well. So just looking at this itself, statistics wise, we have uh, Shadow with that first chase, 161 seconds. Uh, but then again, with the support by AK with that stuns, very well coordinated, I would say. This team has very good teamwork, communications, and definitely expecting a lot more from this team in future tournaments, such as the IVL ones. And FPX EQ, they, of course, they will be competing in uh, future IVL, so do yes. look out for that. And also for people that are missing out, not are missing out, not, but I'm missing this Japanese team, this SE team, this uh, any EU teams, uh, 
fret not there's also tournaments after this so do keep a lookout for your favorite teams follow their socials uh whether it be instagram twitter wherever it is they will post their upcoming matches soon so um hopefully you guys do continue supporting them after this coa I, I do believe we also have a uh, at some point today we usually have an announcement from the uh, creator of IDV usually talking about the future events for this year. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if we'll have that or not, but if if we do, then you guys will be able to see um, you will be able to see what events are potentially coming forward. Whether that's more events for Southeast Asia or NAU or Japan or any region uh, in particular, as well as new crossovers and things like that. But uh, that is, of course, still yet to come. So don't forget to, to stick with us for that. And we still have the main event of the day upcoming Doe versus GG, which will be our, our grand finals match fighting for that number one spot in the world who can claim themselves as the world champion. Uh, and uh, I don't know, Jojo, what do you think about that match? Who do you have potentially winning there? Um, It's Honestly, uh, I guess like a lot of us are thinking that G might possibly win, but because uh, of this um, bad um, thingy, I uh, kind of leaning on towards Do Wu, and hopefully Do do make it though. Oh, okay, Cho Cho has an airplane going by. So those you don't know, she lives basically inside an airport. So. Um, she would probably make a good pilot if, uh, if ever, but yeah, I don't think so. Anyways, uh, we are gonna, yeah, so talking about that match, what, as Chocho waits for the airplane to slowly fly away, um, talking about GG versus Doe, I think that, um, typically we've seen survivor teams versus a hunter-sided team. The hunter side in, in a survivor meta, typically you'd think, okay, survivor team's probably gonna have the advantage. However, the biggest problem is that Dong Chuan has just been so strong, was so consistent. And he's actually been taking down these survivor teams. We saw yesterday um, uh, in the Doe versus um, uh, GR matchup, a survivor sided team, a team that just got four, three, four escapes in a row, right? Dong Chuan was able to take them down. Uh, now, similar to GG matchup, GG has a very strong survivor team. But the big difference maker here is the hunter side of GG. Shama has been so strong in this tournament. Um, he's been able to win. Talk about he's been able to win a lot of games. He's been able to win with Bon Bon. He's been able to win uh, with um, with Anne. We saw that yeah. earlier as well. So he has a lot more win potential. It's not just the same matchup we saw yesterday where it's a survivor-sided team versus a hunter-sided team. It's a hunter-sided team versus a survivor-sided team who also has a strong hunter. So I think that's going to make the difference in this match. And we've seen the Doe survivors just be very inconsistent. So Shama, I, I think the, the key, the biggest key, typically we talk about the hunter of Dou versus the survivors of the strong team who's going to come out on top. But I think in this next matchup, it's actually the um, uh, the GG hunter side versus the Dou survivors. Can they actually be effective against Shama? If not, if Shama comes out and continues mm -hmm. to stay strong, which we've seen throughout the majority of this event, I think GG will win. And I think when it comes down to stats, GG is actually favored uh, because of that, um, because of that uh, scenario. Yeah, I mean, Xiaoma's uh, condition in this past three years of this playoffs has been really incredible. Even just yesterday, the last match, BO5, first half, he got that four elimination using a Wex Artist at Chinatown. Very impressive play on his side, very consistent as well to get that at least one kill, if not a tie situation for his team. Definitely something that they would need, especially mm -hmm. when GRG servers are so consistent, getting A3 escapes, or sometimes even battling out for that four escapes. So... I'm um, excited to see how this might possibly play out. And also for those side, um, we saw a very interesting pick on uh, Dong Xuan yesterday, Leo's memory with the evil reptilian. So seems to be, right? I mean, I was looking at yesterday's stats itself. Seems to be that Dong Xuan likes to play different characters for different BOs. We see the Dream Witch, Geisha, Cluck, evil reptilian, followed by lastly, N. So I think he yep. kind of want to play something new, something different. And I think yep. we'll be seeing that later. Maybe. Uh... <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we might potentially see that, but uh, I don't know. I feel like yesterday in that sort of situation, in the interview as well, he talked about how um, he had such a, a large lead to work with, so he kind of wanted to play something fun, which was, is always nice to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've we kind of seen uh, teams that are very hunter-sided hunters. They sometimes will bring out that, that surprise character that we don't expect to see. You know, obviously we saw Lizard this time around. Um, and maybe we'll see that potentially again. When it comes down to the, the the World Championship match, obviously it seems very unlikely, but obviously you know, anything's still on the table here. So he actually almost won with a tie build, an up down, up down blink is the most high heavy build possible. And he still almost won with one of the worst hunters in the game. So uh, it's very impressive. But um, yeah, again, it, this matchup really comes down to 
the hunter, the survivors of Dogo, can they actually put up a fight against Shama? If not, the game's gonna be over very quick. If so, then I think Dogo actually can come out on top, but that's gonna be a, a huge decider here. Yeah, definitely, and I'm excited to see later that match. We will be around so to watch it. So, I mean, it's the biggest thing and the biggest last portion of the COA6 that we're having. We're definitely really excited to see, but before that, we'll be looking at the album MVP, GR's AK Best Seduction. Uh, we saw him, you know, harassing the hunter non-stop. So a 94.19 containment time, whether it be harassment or containing the hunter, both works the same. And yeah, not decoding a full cipher of 100%, but just 83.67 on average. So yeah, but he's looking pretty good stats, definitely a deserving one as well. And We'll be moving on to this short Chinese interview section right after this. So hopefully we'll be able to see our MVP player AK and possibly PPX. I mean, it's been a long time since we last saw PPX in this interview section. So it would be a pleasant and nice surprise if we do see him. So we're just going to wait a little while. And before that, because we will be leaving soon and after that, it will be down at Posh. And remember, reminder to all of you to wish Posh later on a happy birthday. And before that, I'm just going to give a little bit of a shout out. I see Divorced. Hi Divorced. Hi Fikiame. Hi Roni. Hi Ruby. Julie Bliss. Hi Nano. Hi Venus Ambassador. Uh, hi a and Maria. I'm so sorry if I can't pronounce your name. Eve, May Rose, and... Uh, Posh and Nell later will come back, so we're just gonna look at our short interview. <laughs> so we have Super Rich wave waving the flag this time around. And mascot wise, not too sure who, was, who it is. And we have Heart as well as Shadow for this interview. Welcome and congratulations. And congratulations getting this uh, second runner up, please. We have two other interview, two other people today. She's talking about this too right now. I'm not too sure who's below the mascot. Maybe, yeah, it's Cizai. Yeah, we saw the back of the shirt. It's Cizai. See, <laughs> hard say, I don't recognize them. <laughs> he doesn't want to claim them. Now she's mentioning how they won with three rounds for four escape. How, how's today's condition and how do you feel about it? Uh, after yesterday, our communications and teamwork got a lot better. And for heart, uh, we played really happily. Uh, yeah, she said that it's pity that you guys didn't make it to fight for this possible champion, which is the next match. So, what is your biggest takeaway? I feel that the communications, uh, connections wise, and I guess friendships wise in the team got really bad. I mean, not really bad, <laughs> it got better. Alright, so she's gonna hit into questions about the match in the first match. Uh, the opponents are chasing uh, D's bonbon at Arms Factory was very clear to down the antiquarian before the tension. Yeah. What was the situation like? Oh, Shadow was the mechanic, so she she felt that I he felt that Hunter possibly could have like was kinda lost, couldn't find Korean. And then and because they could actually hear Shadow screaming because after that, Hunter lost target, so uh, there was a bit of shout, and that was from Shadow. He was a bit too excited. Uh, the, the cipher actually popped really suddenly. Uh, the people that were supposed to open the gate, open the gate, the people that, so, yeah, they were all doing their own things, and it worked out. In the second match, do you guys hit on with the match with like we must four escape, and then Hart said, yeah, we actually had that idea to we that we wanted to four escape once again. 
卡梦古董上化身守护神的那一刻，一直把你打下来，那波是怎么沟通的呢？ Uh, Alpha was a communication like when Priestess of、uh, Shadow died at the corner of Lake, and then Antiquarian was there to keep、uh, disarming the hunter. Well, AK just told Shadow to just die deep inside the lake area where it's really it's deep inside the water. So he just followed along, and AK just did the work. She's asking about the end game of that lake side match. We could only rely on the long portal, and then because a、uh, hunter changed targets from antiquarian to a、uh, composer to be on the chair, so that brought up enough time、uh, for detention and also for us to set up everything. Uh, speaking about the match now, Embama. Uh, uh, Shadow said like because I'm the Embama, I didn't bring a、uh, bar time. Uh, I just rotated to a way that I wouldn't rotated and kited to a way that I wouldn't be seen by the hunter. I rotated around the the other way. Any words to your uh? Any words for your fans, people who have followed you guys all along? Thank you for guys for your support. Well, he 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 believes in GR's uh survivors as well as Hunter's ability, and we will play even even better next time. Oh, so. Oh, he say like this time round. Uh, yeah, you got this certain award. You didn't catch it, but he asked, "What other award do you want to get?" Then Hart said, "As long as it's not the most terror shock, uh, award, I would, I would gladly accept it." Uh, thank you for coming for the interview, and thank you again. I mean, congratulations again once again, uh, for winning. And getting this second run out, please. And we'll be having we'll be having a short into a、uh, short um thing after this, so we'll be headed right into a short break. We'll see you guys right back for the last match later on. With steam dense as a veil, and 
wine sweet as honey. One can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics. Surrender restraints. Relinquish thyself. Like the eagle, plummeting straight down. Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship, we indulge. The truth is an endless sea of darkness, and humanity resides on an island known as ignorance. If I knew of the madness waiting beyond the door, I would have never gone on a voyage into the unknown. I heard the scenes as The ancient texts point to the city of stars, Providence, and the shepherd I have yet to meet is long gone. That night, I had a dream. A new opportunity broke the deadlock. They heard my calls, the organization behind Halsey. I know now that they are not mad. They are searching, pathfinding, and calling to him. From then on, this recurring dream grew clearer every night. They truly understand my existence, and I yearn to be with them. Eons have passed, returning at last. Under the endless darkness, the mountaintop ritual is our final call. That was the beginning, and the end of everything. I have thought about what I might encounter here, but everything I've encountered so far has still exceeded my expectations. The girl mentioned in here, Emma Woods. Sichuan Opera artists hold many secret techniques. Performers transform themselves in the legends of old. I heard a new face changer is performing in the Lion Pagoda.
But wait! Not everything is as it seems. To truly understand the meaning of a play, you must perform it. Join me, and let us solve this mystery of the opera stage. Who? When? Where? What? And why? Nothing escapes the eyes of a reporter. A tragic haven occurred in the mines, burying the miners deep within. The incident has now claimed 13 deaths, with only one survivor. Hide here, and don't make a sound. Whenever in doubt. Hurt, child! My family is All dead. because of her. Whenever trouble strikes. <sighs> Face it, and it'll all be over. That is what I've always believed. Place at its finest In July they came And met in August For flowers they were named They stayed and dwelt in September Bathing in the sun, oh sway She let down her guard Grow, grow, lurking to Tura, feeding up Rosemary who couldn't let go of the scars. Night at night stood aloof from the light, down and down fell into addictions and took to life. At its finest bellow stain Where passionate vines often chase the butterflies A place with fragrance and bellow stain And now to dust the flower has returned What happened on the island? Let's go and see. The arrival of the first letter was the prelude to a change in tone. Accentuated sign of fate's shifting course appeared on the night the second letter arrived. Those fragile wings flew in with the dying light, who forgot one simple truth the purer the light, the deeper its shadow.
What is the blessing you received? An extraordinary physique? last forever. I take pleasure in watching them wither. Calamus, turning hope to despair. Datura, severing love with grasping snare. Rosemary, indulging in past memories. Tuberose, falling off the edge of jeopardy. <laughs> All of them are now withered. <sighs> and more gorgeous than ever. to the plateau of Lang. She brought light before my corpse. She could have told me the bitter truth so that I could escape the intolerable surge of emotions. She could have gouged out my eyes so that I could not see the demons of hell in the skin of gods. Or his ugly face. That is so like my own. <laughs> but it matters not, for the secret is forever buried. After all, corpses do not speak. But the price of it all, her humanity fell into the bowels of the gods. Fret not, mother. The hunt of the gods ended on the night the blizzard laid waste to the plateau of Lang. <laughs> I received a revelation to judge without mercy.
that remains upon this throne is nothing more than a fragile, incompetent heart. After the embers fade and die out, our homeland, ripped asunder by the flames of war. At the height of my desperation, I finally saw the light of a star above. She was the one who brought the light of dawn back into my life. But when the sun sank below the horizon, I saw the flames of war burning without end. Flesh torn and blood spilled before me. The illusion of my utopia had lost the favor of the sun. Do you wish to escape, my dear king? In this everlasting Colosseum, you will forever be my gladiator. Stay a while. I have an interesting tale for you. Sergi, once the backbone of this circus, he brought numerous joy and laughter on stage. But he was a slave to the bottle off stage. His mistress began to fall for a more considerate man. And after a heated argument, she sought refuge in that man's tent. Sergi couldn't stand for this. He destroyed that man's wretched face with acid and ruined his life forever. The truth was finally spilled in a fit of drunkenness. In turn, on that drunken night, Sergi also lost his face. I don't like this face. Oh, it sickens me, but this face has become a new symbol, belonging to Sergi and to me. The Islanders often say the wayward sons will eventually return home, just as migratory birds always come home to roost. Yet... Fewer and fewer have returned. Fear has gripped the island, and strange rumors began to take hold. Rumor has it, a vast silhouette overshadows 
across the shore. Some also say a resentful soul lies beneath the waves, luring voyagers to their doom. While many claim, even in a storm, the swallows will guide you in the right direction. <laughs> However, is this calamity rigged by disgraced deities? Or perhaps it all stems from greedy hearts? When the bell of absolution rings, virtue will be given new meaning on these icy plains. Perhaps it's to atone for the crimes of the past, or perhaps it's to be exchanged for the promised freedom. But when you hold the key of judgment, the facade of the true shackles shall be lifted. <laughs> A fool who thinks he holds the torch. If you can really see through that illusory flame, you'd realize you're nothing but a deceived moth. Creating a perpetual motion machine is like being trapped in a never-ending dream. Reality grows from these sketches, expanding through years of fruitless effort. Yet this illusion is ceaselessly reflected in silent thoughts. It should have died in flames with the last generation. Mr. Lorenz, based on our preliminary investigations, the suspect may be a student of yours. Yet the embers rekindled in the next generation. This is the law of nature. If you really wish to rise above this law, you must dive deeper and deeper. Don the robes of lies, singing the song of shepherds. When the dream shatters in a trap, or fail when the run, doomed to be exiled and buried over and over again. Will redemption come?
Long, long ago, when demons and gods walked amongst humanity, two sisters lived a life of creating fragrances. All that you desire shall be granted if you bring me a fragrance that relieves one's sorrow. Finally, the younger sister completed the god's request. beyond the constraints of life and death. This is an endless game of chance. Greed has tainted the sanctity of faith. Pawn your lips and tongue, never to speak of the past. Pledge your beating heart. Break free from the Reaper's hold. Surrender your soul. Submit to eternal desire. Hmm. In this never-ending revelry, you must wager your immortality. Last night, I dreamt of returning to that place once again. Trapped in a trance, the scent of the soil and leaves, and the chimes of midnight were beckoning me. No matter how many times you found salvation within your own creation, you could not escape the nightmares of your memories. Stop it! End all this now! <laughs> ah... I remember now. It's all coming back to me. When the nightingale sings, the mansion gates will open for me under the starry sky. Tonight, the truth will be revealed. the truth about what happened to Anna, I disguised myself as a maid at the school. After the incident, someone was still the center of attention. Someone was still beloved. Someone seemed to be hiding something. And the odd thing, someone was trying to look for answers in those ancient legends. The truth may not be what it seems. Everyone is under suspicion. Things were not as simple as I imagined.
And snap a shot, place the shot to bottom. I'm approaching the result. Let the puzzles be solved by joining up the dots. I tell that dreams could have been freely talked. I live without a shadow.
young, young bamboo, bamboo shoots could brave, brave the bitter cold, cold of winter, winter graceful and serene in, in the face of adversity. Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. What? Was I the one who brought this misfortune? Chi. Chi. <gasps> no, I mustn't hide. For the Xiao family, for vindication, and for her safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship. A life of uncertainty and diligence. <gasps> My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinching and steadfast in the face of adversity. Strange joy to yugga through the void. Father of the million favorite ones. Stalker among the stars. Through the sacrifice of you all. Mm. The truth shall now be revealed. <laughs> Now this is the key shot.
from the pompous sham of this show. You can now listen to the Whisperer in Darkness among the stars. OK， 我再溜了，啊，你得溜起来啊，咱机子不够的。我真的再溜了，再溜了。哎，不是，你这就倒了，我没要好呢呀。我真的在溜拉。四月三十至五月三日，三六全球总决赛，溜的不行。With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics, surrender restraints, relinquish thyself. Like the eagle, plummeting straight down. Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship. We indulge. The truth is an endless sea of darkness, and humanity resides on an island known as ignorance. 
If I knew of the madness waiting beyond the door, I would have never gone on a voyage into the unknown. I heard the scene was as tragic as The ancient texts point to the city of stars, Providence. And the shepherd I have yet to meet is long gone. That night, I had a dream. A new opportunity broke the deadlock. They heard my calls. The organization behind Halsey. I know now that they are not mad. They are searching. Finding and calling to him. From then on, this recurring dream grew clearer every night. They truly understand my existence, and I yearn to be with them. Returning at last. Under the endless darkness, the mountaintop ritual is our final call. That was the beginning, and the end of everything. I have thought about what, what I might encounter here, here. But, but everything I've encountered, encountered so far has still exceeded my expectations. The girl mentioned in here, Emma Woods. Sichuan opera artists hold many secret techniques. Performers transform themselves in the legends of old. I heard a new face changer is performing in the Lion Pagoda. Wait! Not everything is as it seems. To truly understand the meaning of a play, you must perform it. Join me and let us solve this mystery of the opera stage. Who? When? Where? What and why? 
Nothing escapes the eyes of a reporter. A tragic haven occurred in the mine, burying the miners deep within. The incident has now claimed 13 deaths, with only one survivor. Hide here, and don't make a sound. Whenever in doubt. Curse child! Your family is All dead. because of fun. Whenever trouble strikes. <sighs> Face it, and it'll all be over. That is what I've always believed. Place and it's finest In July they came And then in August For flowers they were named They stayed and dwelt in September Bathing in the sun, oh sway She let down her guard Grow, grow, lurking to Tura, feeding up Rosemary who couldn't let go of discards. Night at night stood aloof from the light, down and down fell into addictions and took to life. At its finest bellow stain Where passionate vines often chase the butterflies A place with fragrance since bellow stain And now to dust the flower has returned On the island. Let's go and see. The arrival of the first letter was the prelude to a change in tone. An accentuated sign of fate's shifting course appeared on the night the second letter arrived. Those fragile wings flew in with the dying light, who forgot one simple truth. The purer the light, the deeper its shadow.
What is the blessing you received? An extraordinary physique? mind if all misfortune comes from blessings oh my sisters in anguish I shall reverse the stars I shall turn back time with my blessing I will lead you on a path that defies destiny. No flowers last forever. I take pleasure in watching them wither. Calamus, turning hope to despair. Datura, severing love with grasping snare. Rosemary, indulging in past memories. Tuberose, falling off the edge of jeopardy. them are now withered, mm. and more gorgeous than ever. On that night, the blizzard laid waste to the plateau of Lang. She brought light before my corpse. She could have told me the bitter truth, so that I could escape the intolerable surge of emotions. She could have gouged out my eyes, so that I could not see the demons of hell in the skin of gods. Or his ugly face, that is so like my own. <laughs> but it matters not. For the secret is forever buried. After all, corpses do not speak. But the price of it all, her humanity fell into the bowels of the gods. Fret not, mother. The hunt of the gods ended on the night the blizzard laid waste to the plateau of Lang. <laughs> I received a revelation to judge without mercy.
that remains upon this throne is nothing more than a fragile, incompetent heart. After the embers fade and die out, our homeland, ripped asunder by the flames of war. At the height of my desperation, I finally saw the light of a star above. She was the one who brought the light of dawn back into my life. But when the sun sank below the horizon, I saw the flames of war burning without end. Flesh torn and blood spilled before me. The illusion of my utopia had lost the favor of the sun. Do you wish to escape, my dear king? In this everlasting Colosseum, you will forever be my gladiator. Stay a while. I have an interesting tale for you. Sergi, once the backbone of this circus, he brought numerous joy and laughter on stage. But he was a slave to the bottle off stage. His mistress began to fall for a more considerate man. And after a heated argument, she sought refuge in that man's tent. Sergi couldn't stand for this. He destroyed that man's wretched face with acid and ruined his life forever. The truth was finally spilled in a fit of drunkenness. In turn, on that drunken night, Sergi also lost his face. I don't like this face. Oh, it sickens me. But this face has become a new symbol, belonging to Sergi and to me. The islanders often say the wayward sons will eventually return home, just as migratory birds always come home to roost. Yet, fewer and fewer have returned. Fear has gripped the island, and strange rumors began to take hold. Rumor has it, a vast silhouette 
darkness overshadows the shore. Some also say a resentful soul lies beneath the waves, luring voyagers to their doom. While many claim, even in a storm, the swallows will guide you in the right direction. <laughs> However, is this calamity rigged by disgraced deities? Or perhaps it all stems from greedy hearts. When the bell of absolution rings, virtue will be given new meaning on these icy plains. Perhaps it's to atone for the crimes of the past. Or perhaps it's to be exchanged for the promised freedom. But when you hold the key of judgment, the facade of the true shackles shall be lifted. <laughs> A fool. Who thinks he holds the torch? If you can really see through that illusory flame, you'd realize you're nothing but a deceived moth. Creating a perpetual motion machine is like being trapped in a never-ending dream. Reality grows from these sketches, expanding through years of fruitless effort. Yet this illusion is ceaselessly reflected in silent thoughts. It should have died in flames with the last generation. Mr. Marines, based on our preliminary investigations, the suspect may be a student of yours. Yet the embers rekindled in the next generation. This is the law of nature. If you really wish to rise above this law, you must dive deeper and deeper. Don the robes of lies, singing the song of shepherds. When the dream shatters in a trap, or fail when on the run, doomed to be exiled and buried over and over again. Will redemption come?
Long, long ago, when demons and gods walked amongst humanity, two sisters lived a life of creating fragrances. All that you desire shall be granted if you bring me a fragrance that relieves one's sorrow. Finally, the younger sister completed the god's request. <laughs> A beautiful dress woven from painful memories is the perfect attire. Rise beyond the constraints of life and death. This is an endless game of chance. Greed has tainted the sanctity of fate. Pawn your lips and tongue, never to speak of the past. Pledge your beating heart. Break free from the Reaper's hold. Surrender your soul. Submit to eternal desire. Hmm. In this never-ending revelry, you must wager your immortality. Last night, I dreamt of returning to that place once again. Trapped in a trance, the scent of the soil and leaves, and the chimes of midnight were beckoning me. No matter how many times you found salvation within your own creation, you could not escape the nightmares of your memories. Stop it! End all this now! <laughs> ah... I remember now. It's all coming back to me. When the nightingale sings, the mansion gates will open for me under the starry sky. Tonight, the truth will be revealed. the truth about what happened to Anna, I disguised myself as a maid at the school. After the incident, someone was still the center of attention. Someone was still beloved. Someone seemed to be hiding something. And the odd thing, someone was trying to look for answers in those ancient legends. The truth may not be what it seems. Everyone is under suspicion. Things were not as simple as I imagined.
Young, Young bamboo, bamboo shoots, shoots could brave, could brave the bitter cold of winter, winter graceful, graceful and serene in, in the face of adversity. Father, you taught us that the Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. What? This misfortune? Chi. Chi. <gasps> no, I mustn't hide. For the Xiao family, for vindication, and for her safe return. I knew this was a life of hardship, a life of uncertainty and diligence. <gasps> My only option is to press onward and tread the unknown. The Xiao family must act like bamboo in the winter. Unflinching and steadfast in the face of adversity. Strange joy to yugga through the void. Father of the million favorite ones. Stalker among the stars. Through the sacrifice of you all. Hmm. The truth shall now be revealed. <laughs> Now this is the key shot.
detached from the pompous sham of this show. You can now listen to the Whisperer in Darkness among the stars. OK， 我再溜了。啊，你得溜起来啊，咱机子不够的。我真的再溜了，再溜了。哎，不是，你这就倒了？我没压好呢呀。哎，嘿嘿，我真的再溜了。四月三十至五月三日 ，C O 六全球总决赛，六的不行。With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Return to basics, surrender restraints, relinquish thyself. Like the eagle, plummeting straight down. Lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink. We worship. We indulge. The truth is an endless sea of darkness, and humanity resides on an island known as ignorance. 
If I knew of the madness waiting beyond the door, I would have never gone on a voyage into the unknown. I heard the scenes as tragic as The ancient texts point to the city of stars, Providence. And the shepherd I have yet to meet is long gone. That night, I had a dream. Opportunity broke the deadlock. They heard my calls. The organization behind Halsey. I know now that they are not mad. They are searching, pathfinding, and calling to him. From then on, this recurring dream grew clearer every night. They truly understand my existence. And I yearn to be with them. Returning at last. Under the endless darkness, the mountaintop ritual is our final call. That was the beginning, and the end of everything. I have thought about what, what I might encounter here, here. But, but everything I've encountered, encountered so far has still exceeded my expectations. The girl mentioned in here, Emma Woods. Sichuan opera artists hold many secret techniques. Performers transform themselves in the legends of old. I heard a new face changer is performing in the Lion Pagoda. Wait! Not everything is as it seems. To truly understand the meaning of a play, you must perform it. Join me and let us solve this mystery of the opera stage. Who? When? Where? What and why? 
Nothing escapes the eyes of a reporter. A tragic haven occurred in the mine, burying the miners deep within. The incident has now claimed 13 deaths, with only one survivor. Hide here, and don't make a sound. Whenever in doubt. <gasps> Curse, child! Your family is All dead. because of her. Whenever trouble strikes. <sighs> Face it, and it'll all be over. That is what I've always believed. Place at its finest In July they came And met in August For flowers they were named They stayed and dwelt in September Bathing in the sun, oh sway She let down her guard Grow, grow, lurking to Tura, feeding up Rosemary who couldn't let go of discards. Night at night stood aloof from the light, down and down fell into addictions and took to life. At its finest bellow stain Where passionate vines often chase the butterflies A place with fragrance since bellow stain And now to dust the flower has returned Let's go and see. The arrival of the first letter was the prelude to a change in tone. An accentuated sign of fate's shifting course appeared on the night the second letter arrived. Those fragile wings flew in with the dying light. Who forgot one simple truth. The purer the light, the deeper its shadow.
blessing you received. An extraordinary physique.
登山，三米零五块，十分钟打完。
Please don't forget to check out the Identity 5 producer's presentation. Identity 5 social media platforms will have more information about this content.
知れない。
格五周年年度发布会，让我们掌声有请第五人格制作人潘思来先生。呃，大家好，呃，我是第五人格制作人，啊、呃，欢迎大家今天能来，呃，很高兴呢，今年终于能够跟大家在第五人格周年盛典上再次相见了。那今年也是第五人格的第五周年，啊、呃，我想对于项目组和各位玩家来说，呃，都是非常值得纪念的日子。那从一八年公测到现在，啊、呃，第五人格拥有了还算可观的玩家人群吧，嗯、呃，也多谢你们一路的陪伴。嗯，正如我之前在项目组寄语里面视有啊、呃、视频里面有说，我其实希望第五人格能够快一点长大，但是呢，又不希望它长大到完全改变。那抱着这样复杂的心态。我更希望第五人格能够稳健又踏实地进入未来第二个五年。啊，当然这离不开各位玩家的支持和理解，所以再次感谢你们一路以来的体谅和陪伴。呃，接下来就为大家带来的是二零二三年的年度开发计划，希望大家能喜欢。嗯，首先呢，呃，下半年会有一些新的角色会进入庄园。呃，首先是新的求生者啊，这是一位拉拉队员，嗯、呃，叫做莉莉巴利尔。呃，天真热情的少女为什么能够成为庄园的访客呢？嗯、呃，属于拉拉队员的故事即将展开了。第二位是全新的监管者啊、呃，他是一位。呃，他是一位歌剧演员，呃，名字叫桑格利亚，也是一位全新的双形态监管者。那作为一个全新的双形态追击流的监管者，呃，我也非常期待他在庄园里面的表现。呃，再多一位好了。呃，第三位也是全新的求生者，啊、呃，这是一位飞行家，呃，他叫查尔斯·霍尔特。那在他的背后又隐藏了什么样的秘密呢？所以以上是呃，以以上是部分即将在下半年内上线的全新角色。呃，更多的角色详情的话，请等待后续社媒平台上面的爆料。然后在今年的暑期下旬，呃，我们也会带来全新的娱乐玩法——捉迷藏。呃，参与的玩家呢，将分为两个阵营，在庄园里面展开较量。然后部分求生者可以变身为庄园里边的一些物品，啊、呃，进行躲藏。然后监管者需要在限定的时间内找出所有的求生者。呃，正式的玩法和局内的表现呢，会在后续的社媒平台里面陆续曝光，大家可以保持关注。五年光阴啊、呃，探求真相，打破迷局。欧利蒂斯庄园也迎来了新的访客，第五人格也步入了全新的 2.0 版本。2023年，我们也将开启新的品牌合作维度，去探寻更多合作升级的可能。让我们先看一段品牌概念的 PV。寻觅之夜。
中的发条，荡起通往未来的涟漪新的故事即将开启。呃，那正如大家在 PV 里面所见呢，第五人格即将携手中国航天，呃，太空创想，开启新的联动。呃，在联动期间，游戏里边将会在国服上线幸运儿的两航天服联动时装，呃，以及也有航天相关的游戏活动。呃，到时候参与完成游戏内的联动活动以后，就可以免费获得本次幸运儿的航天服联动时装了。呃，希望能够通过这一次跟中国航天的联动，能够让大家更加了解中国航天的事业发展，普及航天的知识，传播航天的文化。那么，另外我们也始终希望能够向社会上去传递正能量，呃，也非常愿意承担这份呃社会责任。呃，所以2023年我们会致力于视障儿童相关的公益项目，啊、呃。去帮助更多的示弱和失障的儿童，啊，同时我们也将在游戏里面上线视觉辅助模式，为红、蓝、绿色盲或色弱的玩家分别提供一套视觉强化方案，呃，其中会包含色彩表现的提升，呃，和特效范围的强化两个部分，呃，到时候可以在设置界面预览效果，并一键应用到游戏中。呃，这个模式会预计在今年年底的时候上线。呃，接下来是大家比较期待的部分。嗯、呃，首先让我们看一段 PV。呃，我们之前在二二年四周年庆的前瞻直播中，曾经有提到过啊，我们会跟新枪弹辩驳 V 三，呃，进行联动啊。现在终于可以跟大家同步最新的进度了。那第五人格确认跟新枪弹辩驳 V 三进行联动，呃，在联动上期期上线期间呢，呃，曾经联动过的第一弹和第二弹也会返场上线。呃，同样的联动详情也持呃持续关注，呃第五人格社媒平台啊、呃，未来可以有更多详细的信息。呃，除此之外呢，我们跟连天光司联动的第三弹也会在六月二十一号上线。呃，第三弹联动角色包含勘探员、调香师。还有雕刻家，呃，第一弹和第二弹的联动内容也会在上线的时候进行返场。呃，最后呢，在德罗斯小姐到访庄园之后，不知道各位是否已经随着德罗斯小姐的探寻了解到庄园更多的秘密？在暗暗流涌动之下呢，更多的真相即将揭晓。
呃，全新的主线版本《寄于镜下》啊、呃，也在紧张的筹备当中了。大家可以在下篇里面了解、体验更多庄院里面的故事。那新主线角色也会在下篇里面跟大家见面。随着主线剧情的更新呢，庄院里边也将迎来一个全新的战斗地图——呃，克雷伯格赛马场。啊、呃，我们先来看一段赛马场的氛围视频。呃，看完视频加上这个赛马场的名字啊，大家或许能够从中猜到一些新地图跟主线的关系啊、呃。究竟在克雷伯格赛马场里边会发生什么样的故事呢？又跟哪些角色息息相关啊、呃？敬请期待《寄于镜》的下篇。呃，以上就是今年发布会爆料的内容了。那一路以来，很感激认识了非常多的新朋友。而老朋友们又陪伴我们多了一年，啊、嗯，所以再次感谢各位玩家们的支持。欧丽丝丽丝庄园的大门永远为各位侦探打开。最后祝参与参呃参参加 C O A 六的总决赛的战队能够取得满意的成绩，谢谢。嗯。感谢潘斯莱先生，我们现场的玩家真的非常的热情，而且今年五周年的年度发布会真的同样是惊喜满满，相信大家已经开始从现在开始期待我们庄园内的新变化了。那今年呢是第五人格的五周年，庄园里前段时间也收到了非常多来自全国各地玩家寄往欧丽蒂斯庄园的信件，感谢大家对第五人格的支持和喜爱，我们也是从这些寄出的信件当中，今天呢会抽取到幸运的福利大奖，分别是五十五位六。四八零回升，五十五位商城限售西式时装任选和五十五位周边礼包。那么我们话不多说，开始今天的抽奖环节吧。嗯，那我们开始抽取今天的第一轮福利，让我们的大屏幕滚动起来吧。停，停，好的，恭喜我们今天。第一批幸运的中奖观众，希望大家都能够欧气满满。那我们来看一下今天的第二批幸运观众，我们大屏幕滚动起来。停。好的，恭喜我们今天的第二批幸运的锦鲤，没有中奖的小伙伴不要着急，因为今天我们还有最后一批的福利。来，我们的大屏幕滚动起来。停。再次恭喜以上的幸运儿，我们的工作人员将会在三十个工作日内通过投递的信件联系。感谢李姐。那除了刚才的抽奖，我听到我们现场有很多的粉丝已经按捺不住自己激动的心情了，因为刚才他们真的非常热情。所以今天潘子来先生来到我们深圳的呼唤六的舞台上，好久没见了，好像也给我们准备了非常多的福利哦。呃，是的，呃，今年是好不容易，时隔两年。跟大家再次线下能够遇到啊，所以也为现场的观众们带来了五十五个六四八零的回声，然后五十五个商城商城限售的西式时装，还有一百个周边礼包。大家的欢呼声在哪里？我们今天一共有两百多个幸运的粉丝和玩家，将会在今天抽中我们的大礼包。那我们接下来话不多说，我们第一批。现场玩家的幸运抽奖开始，屏幕滚动起来。停。停。恭喜我们第一批幸运的获奖观众，那来我们的第二轮抽奖，大屏幕滚动起来吧。停。好的，恭喜我们的第二批幸运的中奖观众，接下来我们要抽一百个周边礼包，哎。家人们，我们的欧洲人还不快点互相传递一下欧气？最后一轮要来喽！我们三二一大屏幕滚动起来。停。好的，恭喜以上全部的获奖现场的观众朋友们，让我们恭喜他们！以上获奖的观众呢，可以前往我们的外场兑换区提供游戏账号等信息进行奖励登记。再次感谢潘斯莱先生。谢谢，请潘斯莱先生一步台下稍事休息
接下来，二零二三第五人格诗人的呼唤六全球总决赛终于迎来了最终的巅峰之战。进入决赛的两支战队历时三个月，历经全球六大赛区的较量，一路披荆斩棘，砥砺前行。谁能够全力以赴，不留遗憾；谁能捧起奖杯，加冕为王，让我们拭目以待。二千二十三年，大哥进入了 Gold Six World Cup 决赛，名次决赛。誰が登録を持ち上げるか、最後まで見届けましょう。The World Finals of the I don't know the five Gold Six have finally reached the ultimate climax。接下来，就让把掌声送给即将打响最后一战的两支战队，掌声欢迎他们。又一次站在这里，两年前的声音似乎还在耳边回荡。为了回到这个舞台，我们付出了很多，改变了很多，想在这里再赢一次。又回到这里，我第一次奉听长辈的地方。抓住一切机会，在这个舞台上再次奉陪。飞轮还得骗，但是这个墙容易撞墙，三档斩过去了，就被扣上了。没有过去，那直接打起身呀！这样不会三个能不能骗到？还有。最后一站，开始吧。迎来高潮，荣耀等待加冕，胜利的烟火将会为最后的冠军燃起，让我们欢迎他们登上舞台。さあ、選手の皆さんに登場してもらいましょう。Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our 2023 Gold Best Six Two finalists.
幸运的呼唤六全球总决赛终极之战正式开始。二千二十三年大合金格格子杯シックスワールド決勝トーナメント決勝戦開始いたします。The ultimate battle of the 2023 Argentina Five Gold Medal Six World Finals has begun. Let's go! 我们成都基金就像我们的礼物一样，求胜者一只，监管者一只，组合起来才能变成一双拖鞋。可是我们有东西啊。嗯，为了庆祝即将到来的冠军，我专门新写了一篇小作文。五月四日，老板为庆祝我们夺得冠军，带着我们成都基金一行人来到西溪湿地游玩。这边四面环树，绿意盎然，阳光明媚，秋风送爽，旁边还有好多溪水。让我不由自主的想，不要念你小作文了，这么尬，跟谁学的？哼，想对都选说，咱俩比一比，谁杀的人更多？哦，那我就跟你比，谁用死徒杀的求生者最多。我想对独舞的一花说，希望你们不要那骂人家，因为马哥是真的瞎。我希望你们可以跟他堂堂正正的对抗。有本事你们就搬我的帽钱家，如果你们不搬，那我拿到绝杀你们为止。想对比一张说，我们都是同一届青训出来的，那我比比谁是最强青年吧。五、六、六。我只知道今晚过后又有一个战队要赶人。算了，你们还是无功而返吧。嗯，又一次站上总决赛的舞台，这一次比前两次更加有信心，我觉得我们会赢。走都走到这了。那就坚持到最后一步。我们有百分百的信心拿下这次冠军。周旋，以前都是我们在挑战你，现在该你来挑战我们的百分百胜平率了。<笑>一路走来都非常不容易，我觉得大家都非常渴望这个冠军。为团队，为自己，为粉丝，就为所支持我们的各位。Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has finally arrived. We are going to crown the Call of the Abyss Six champion, Parch Spice and Nello Mello, at your service for this grand Woo! occasion. Nell, I'm feeling some goosebumps. How are you feeling on your side of the world? I'm feeling goosebumps as well. What a journey until this very day, the grand finals, and very well deserving as well.、Mm -hmm. GG versus Doe. I would, I couldn't think of a better lineup for this grand finals. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing really great. And how about you today, Posh? I heard、yeah. that it's your special day. <laughs> Thank you for the greetings, you guys. I can't, I can't think of a better way to spend my birthday, right? And I think it's also LPZ's birthday, so happy birthday to him, Taurus babies. Let's go. And I mean, I, I can't think of a better way to spend it than crowning the new Call of the Abyss Six champion and spending with each and every one of you guys in chat. So big shoutouts to every one of you. I know the wait was a little long, but we're finally here. Nell said, "You know, at GG on one side, we got Dowu on the other side. Will it be the two-time champs or the first time ever Dowu champ? It's、uh, it's it's gonna be a toss-up here, Nell. Exactly. It's really really exciting. But you know what else is exciting?、Mm -hmm. Us singing you a song. So Eli and Chocho, <laughs> are you ready? Are you serious? Are you ready? Yo. Let's go. One,、Yo. two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. you. Oh, this is very Happy birthday to you. 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 Happy bir
Beautiful Yo. voices. Thank you. God, Fifth harmony, was... bro. Fifth harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you, yeah. Chocho, Eli, there at the back watching, and I appreciate it. We still got to play some checkers afterwards and maybe a bit of For other sure. games. Sure. But wow, <laughs> I've never had someone sing happy birthday to me in the grand stage of Call of the Abyss. So thank you guys for that. Thank you, chat. Also, I see them spreading some love. Nell, also, thank you. Canyoneer, dude. The Canyoneer. Oh, That's my God. Thank it's you. Fine. Thank you, man. No problem. I'll follow, follow at Spicy Potter on social media and at Nell Mamello. I'm going to post about it later on, but couldn't spend okay, think of a better bro. way to spend it. Uh, exactly. I don't know if I don't know if my birthday buff prediction is gonna happen because we were talking about this matchup, right? Yeah. You're you're leaning kind of towards GG. I'm kind of leaning towards Do Wu. You wanna mm -hmm. you wanna discuss here? Yeah. I mean, GG. They've proven themselves time and time that they're um, really deserving to be this uh, on this spot, right? To mm -hmm. reclaim the glory and honor again. Um, and but you know what? Do's on the stage now. Uh, on in front of the screen. Why don't we go through Do Wu first? Yeah, Do Wu here. The reason I'm thinking about this is because, the, yes, Dong Xuan is like the one, the franchise player, but the way that they were able to, to dismantle Super Rich yesterday just shows that their survivor team is very ready. Yi Hua mm. said, like, you know, okay, you can ban my Explorer, but I still got other characters to bring out. So we'll talk about more of that in a bit, but how about your thoughts on GG? GG, I feel like GG is super consistent. Uh, it can, you, you can tell as well, like, look at the survivor's win rate. It's really, really high as well. Um, I feel like we are probably going to witness again a battle of the survivor, but since it is Dou that they're going to face, I mean, oh my god, we're going to see a lot, a lot of intense matchups and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and unexpected results because it is the Mr. President that <laughs> a Slipper Gang has to face up against too. The king, the King Dong Xuan. Yeah, that's that's something that's interesting, right? And uh, they even said it, like, let's try to have a Disciple Mirror match. That's going to be very interesting to see. But we are going to see the survivors of Do Wu take the stage. And look at that, the coach trying to raise up Nan's hand over there. Mm -hmm. I would have to admit this, like the survivors, right, aren't really shined in the, the spotlight more often. But Xiaoma, we, we talked about it. Xiaomo was able to get how many three to ties up against Wolf survivors, arguably the best survivor team out there. So exactly. going up against those Do survivors, I, I feel like I might have to side with you a little bit here now that mm -hmm. GG might have the advantage, but we're just gonna have to see because I don't know, Dou might surprise us. Yeah, but at the same time, Dou has been surprising us with the the constant, uh, the constant survivor escapes. And yesterday, 10 to 0 in game number one. Mm -hmm. So that's really, really amazing as well. So honestly, I, I, I would sing praises about GG. I placed my apples for them. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I feel like um, Dou is going to give the fight of their life. They're looking strong. I would say both teams are at 100% and just ready to go for it. Yeah, and we're going to start things off with Yi Hua. Uh, player highlight here. He did get MVP in the previous match. He's mained like the, I would say the, um, the, the rescuers, but I mean, bring out the Explorer also is very interesting. If we see Arms Factory, that has been kind of the trend as of late, but let's talk about ZYJ now, no? Yeah, I mean, ZYJ is also a very dependable character to have around. Uh, mm -hmm. We constantly see him making plays with the Prospector, um, not to mention the Patient. The, and both characters are actually really good in their own ways. I keep singing praises about Prospector, um, be, just being all-rounded, mm -hmm. like being able to kite, being able to decode, being able to harass OB. Uh, you know what? And ZYJ has been doing it amazingly as well. So. Uh, let's hope we will be able to see some Norton gameplays here uh, from ZYJ. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. enjoy it while it lasts, right? Because we exactly, were talking about exactly. how this is probably going to change in the new patch update. Also, shout outs to Chocho, by the way, for the translations. We'll talk about the Ooh. announcement of Silers in just a bit. But we're going to move on over to Silver Chi. Silver Chi also. Silver I don't remember G. Mm -hmm. Silver Chi, mm -hmm. yeah. As an antiquarian priestess, Acrobat, he also got highlighted with his amazing stuns. And just everything you want in a well-rounded team. And now we're going to... I would say um, round it out with the second gentle giant here in Nan. Yeah, I mean Nan. Uh, I, I I would say that his plays are always very impactful as well. Like when he plays the female dancer, the music boxes are always always uh, annoying to the hunter that's pursuing mm -hmm. the team. That's yes. why most of the time his his dancer is always going to get banned. But he does have a psychologist to rely on as well. And as we all know, um, the meta nowadays. Uh, at a new meta, the meta of body blocking, especially when you're not going up against Bon Bon. Body mm -hmm. blocking is such a thing right now. You don't even have to body block at the end game. You can mm -hmm. even start blocking as early as, you yeah. know, 
five ciphers remaining. You can you can do that. <laughs> exactly. I, I did see some body blocking happening with the mascots here of Do and <laughs> <laughs> GG. And look at that, the panda's chasing oh my Do, God. run away, the bonbons are after you. Speaking of bonbon, Shaoma has a bonbon. He's a wax artist as well. He's got a lot. I mean, he, it was his wax artist for him to get that uh, 4K right yesterday. Exactly. So we, we were watching him. I'm, I'm excited to see how he kind of is going to shake off uh, his performance with FPXQ because it wasn't the same Shaoma experience that we're kind of known for. It really can't, it ended up in round number four. So mm -hmm. we're ultimately... Yeah, flush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. We can definitely uh, uh, expect to see uh, a great performance by Shoma as well. Um, but however, I, I just have to point out though, there's, there's a little bit of difference for both these teams coming into the Grand Finals. For example, GG versus Sing FPXDQ, right? They mm -hmm. went through the whole five games, yes, but most of the games it's like, um, Shoma was constantly getting like 1k, 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 2k's, and uh, a lot of 1Ks, and it was only until Best of 5 that he caught the survivors off guard in Chinatown with a wax artist 4K. Whereas Dong Xuan, he's been really, really consistent. Like, you almost never see him lose. Yeah, yeah. Draw, draws the worst you ever caught him in. You almost never see him uh, get a, see a team get a 4 escape from him. And that's exactly what happened most of the time. Um, so I, I just have to say, it's going to be a really tough matchup for GG. Um... Yeah, I, I I just feel like it's gonna be like a facing a, an iron wall. Mm -hmm. in oh. the form of Dong <laughs> He is the he is the standard to which hunters really measure themselves with. I mean, he is. I would say he's the gold standard of uh, the best hunters out there. And can I just say, like with this GG, the slippers they even got the slides going on. And even during Yo. the interview portion, they were like, yeah, they're gonna we're gonna give them a fight with their with their slippers, the slipper gang or the. The ones with the slides. So I'm excited to see how that is going to play out, uh, Nell. And like you said, it could be the that could be how this match is going to play out, right? How they're going to mm -hmm. face off against the iron wall of Dong Shun. Yeah, I mean, I mean honestly, right? I I still think that if if they are able to get to face Dong Shun mm -hmm. uh, on his Dream Witch. It's it's gonna be like there's gonna be a little bit of opening because he I, I don't know man he popularized the six nine uh, insolence detention blink right. dream witch mm -hmm. so I feel like in a lot of cases it's very aggressive but a lot of the times when survivors have flywheel and not usually patroller will help a lot in in restricting the players movements but now with this a blink as we all know a lot of players can dodge the bling, dodge the mm -hmm. bling. And what happens after that? They can extend the kite. So yeah, they have to, he has to be really careful. Um, if he decides to bring Dream Witch a sick, the insolence, detention, mm -hmm. bling. Yeah, and we talked about it earlier, right? It's so risky just to do that, right? Because you're relying on leeching at the start and having an yeah. early, a great early game. But that's just the confidence he brings to the table. So we'll park that conversation for now because we're going to head in towards the picks and bans with Shama on the hunter side, not wasting any time, banning out the antiquarian to start things out. So let's see how Dowu responds. Are they going to go with more mobility characters? Seems like no, they're going to... Mm. Yeah, they want to take more decoding, I would say, in the form of mechanic. And that's the thing as well. I mean, because if Shoma brings out the Bonbon, that might be a problem. Um, they might be cypher rushing Posh as well. So, uh, yeah, though is doing a really, really good preparation against um, against the Xiaomax pick. So Xiaomax going to continue banning all the harassers, Antiquarian, um, Prospector. So he really doesn't like these kind of uh, annoyances. Oh my God. And the Explorer mm. ban as well. So Wow. Okay. So Yihua kind of predicting the future. They're not going, <laughs> like they're banning out the Explorer, but this kind of opens up for them to go with a more mobility-like character. I know Prospector Antiquarian's not there. They have no stunner potentially. So they could opt for a better kiter. Um, yeah, they are tanking up with it, having Mechanic on the team really. It, it actually promotes you like, aiming for that tie. But now, uh, final seconds, and they're going to go Whoa. with a Weeping Clown for round number one now. Yeah, I love this. Like, Weeping Clown, um, very good. I mean, very underused, honestly. But when, when the survivors have no means to stop the Weeping Clown, right? Uh, often we see Weeping Clown players 
use it to extend the kite. Like that's a skill to to activate where it, it sort of like gives you a jump start at mm -hmm. any point to to dodge. So you can call it a mini flywheel, but of right. course it doesn't dodge the attack uh, if, if the hunter manages to hit through it. So uh, that's something that you we can take note of. And especially in Lakeside Village, gaining the distance might be a really, really good thing for Dou, especially when they're trying to use it to kite mm -hmm. or to save their teammates. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So let's see if this one's gonna pay off because, uh, yeah, I I I, I see the the start of them being um yeah the mercenary mechanic just to add a little more uh pressure onto Shaoma to like just go for whatever target. Uh, I do have to say though, yeah, having the weeping clown here is that X factor, um, because it can provide a little bit of that support. But decoding, yeah, it's gonna help out with that mechanic. So Shaoma. Not sure if we're going to have that Disciple Mirror match at the start. He also has his fair share of uh, meta mm. hunters with his Wax Artist. He can bring that out here. He also can bring out the Bon Bon, but in a big map like this, I don't think he wants to because this is actually for Dong Xuan to bring out the his Dream Witch. So mm. let's see. Yeah, I mean, probably not Disciple. Disciple is very straightforward, right? You you go, you chase, you camp, uh, you stun, you go down. But you see, like Shelma, he's going to decide to go with the Soul Weaver. So I really love this. So. The explorer ban makes sense because he wants to he wants to maintain visibility and it's really hard to chase against an invisible character like mm -hmm. explorer right it's really hard to spot uh so the antiquarian prospector bands play a very important role here and no mm -hmm. one can stop shelma when he's on the soul weaver here except maybe for the weeping clown but then again he's no forward uh, he can do a short-term stun right a short-term u-turn yeah. so that's mm -hmm. the one thing going on for uh shelma right here mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm actually a little concerned because right, we've seen Soul Weaver. We've seen so effective Soul Weavers, but not in this map. I mean, I think the most we've seen is a tie mostly. Shaoma, I mean, not doubting his skill and all, but this is round number one. This is to set the pace of the match. And I'm getting nervous like heck. I think I'm, I've been stuttering a lot. So I apologize now if my, my connection's a bit. Uh, I'm still a bit jolted about the, the happy birthday thing. So I hope I'm all good now, chat. So, yep, it seems like we're all going to see a round one Soul Weaver. Very interesting picks. I want to see how they're going to spawn. And I want to see also like the, the Persona build. It seems like we're going to go with that fancy L. I mean, obviously, Mel, I want to get your thoughts, but mechanic first chase, right? Exactly. I, I feel like he's definitely going to try and push it for mechanic. Because usually you will see Hunter uh, choosing to spawn uh, at the, the middle boat, which is mm -hmm. next to the Weeping Clown. But because Weeping Clown has a rocket, uh, available right off the start mm -hmm. um if if he decides to chase nance is gonna pop one rocket and he'll be long gone he can even rocket all the way to shore so there's a cypher there uh or even the broken toilet where he can decode as well so i mm -hmm. feel like he'll probably try he, he can he can try and waste uh make ihua waste a pad like we've seen before uh in in this big map or he can just mm -hmm. go straight for the mechanic those are two options he can go for Okay, we see on the Persona builds, we have Trump card, Detention, one Flywheel only, and we have three, uh, two, oh, sorry, one Tide Turner as well, and we got mm. two Broken Windows just for the transition. So hopefully this will help out the Mechanic and Psychologist. Well, you know what, the support may be needed by Weeping Clown. We're just gonna have to see how this one's gonna shake out. But folks, once again, make some noise on the chat. We have a big match ahead of us. Nello Mel and Posh Spice on the mic for game number one, first half. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Xiao Ma on GG. The Slipper Gang Hunter <laughs> try, trying to chase his first survivor with a slipper in the hand. Uh, in this case, uh, mm. it will be the Soul Weaver making the first chase. And as you can see, he's making a beeline straight for the mechanic. Mechanic hasn't dropped the bot yet, so he's probably thinking of using it to body block. I'm not really sure if that's wow. the intention. Yeah, because the bot's still there. That's super risky, right? If, if he's gonna have to, he's gonna time that well. And now just riding the webs here, just for him to close the distance with ZYJ. Silver She is actually here. So is Silver She gonna try and go for a body block? She is the psychologist. So he's gonna oh. farm a hit off the mechanic. And like you said, mechanic spot is still not available. Yeah, that's. Did he? He didn't put down the bot at all, right? Okay, oh, so I show. Think he did. Yeah. He, he did? He... I, oh. I, he used the bot already. So we're just gonna have to see once he's down. But I saw him like click the bot. So oh, okay, okay. I, I guess he's just that dying really away from fast. the bot. And yeah, oh, there we go. Oh yeah, nice. he dropped down the bot. So that's oh, cool. oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I must have I must have missed that. But yeah, wouldn't make sense to run away from the big boat, right? Because big boat is such a good kiting area. So yep, the bot has been left on the big boat. So pretty fast first chase, but one minute twenty seconds into the game, 
two and a half ciphers kite, all trying to spin wow. at the same mm -hmm. time towards the psychologist, but missing there. Pretty fast down, I would have to yeah. say, Posh. Yeah, I mean, they have to recuperate here. They have to buy a little more time. So this is the, the beauty of how big the map is and how they're going to try and use the camping ability of this spider. But Yihua is already here to aim for that rescue. Going to get a regular hit. And now this mechanic hiding out in the open. Last effort is going to be Pop probably positioning himself. Yeah, I think they just want to just make the mechanic spend more time on the chair just to pop a cypher. So this plays for though getting a strong tie here Ooh, Whoa. oh my god okay he's not gonna hit here he's just one spit away from full presence mm -hmm. so he's gonna try and do a double uh double spit mm -hmm. if he needs to when he's camping so that's really important two ciphers have been done 60 percent on the third cipher the bot's probably doing it at the same time but oh my Ooh, god. cocoon oh but he ate, oh unable to get it at the right time he was able to cocoon so that's actually a um yeah, one rocket gone. Psychologist is healing up the mercenary for the rescue. And like you said, we still have the double web shot for him to be able to use since he's not yet at full presence. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just waiting. That was really smart because Weeping Clown can use the rocket to bomb uh, people Whoa. away. But no, oh my god. My goodness, another. He has another a spit ready. Oh my god, ZYJ, this is his last chance to survive. Oh, it misses, but he has to blink. We use the blink though. He's not going to use it just yet. I think he's going to force attack recovery. Mercenary is the one that uh, forced uh, the hit there. So now we have a mechanic that's out and about. A Cypher is about to pop. So two Cyphers remaining now. ZYJ needs to make this kite happen. Mercenary is victim oh to a God. web shot here. Oh my god, and Yihua's gonna drop really, really soon. He won't be able to body block, and that's why you can see uh, the Weeping Cloud oh. coming in for the support. But Cypher's not enough, Paul. Shelma has to make this work. ZYG mm -hmm. kiting for his like he's just hiding behind Xiaoma trying to do the spit shot, but no, it's not gonna happen. He's gonna decide to chair Masonry, so it's an opening for Do Wu. Yeah, this is the, uh, they're doubling down on over support, right? They need to buy enough time. ZYJ not gonna be on the rocket chair. It's gonna be the mercenary. And it seems like ciphers are okay. The mechanics bot is still doing some work here. We're still at 99%. There's a lot of energy on that bot. And the last one is about to be primed as well. So two cipher primes here now. Yeah, I think he's just, he cannot afford to use Blink here. I think he, he needs to try and get the mechanic down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then probably use a, a teleport to catch up with one survivor, hoping to get a tie. But Dou is looking really, really strong here at this point. You can see that ZYJ is not making the chase easy at all for Soul Weaver. Soul Weaver is super fast, but the threats are very limited now. Only at 56. He's not going to be able to spin it through. Oh my god, and this is... It's, it's like he's trying to force Xiaoma to do a blink here, but the Cypher yeah. has been primed. Oh my goodness, Xiaoma put in a tough spot here. ZYJ is actually controlling the pace of this match. He's just waiting for him to at least force blink, right? 99%, yeah. we see like the survivors already at the uh, the front of the exit gate. If he uses blink now, he won't have time to teleport and he can't just get 1k. So that's what he yeah. wants. He's trying to slowly build up the thread, the thread yeah. but it's, I mean, this is just making the, just prolonging oh. nice dodge on ZYJ's side. My God, but they have to decide now though. They have to decide whether, what is that next action here? Should they pop? Should they wait? Because the longer you wait, the more webs is going to happen. And this is exactly what's going to happen. Like, he's just going to keep trying to shoot you with the spin. But now Shelma has enough webs to catch up to the mechanic if he wants to. My goodness, the third web is going to spin it. ZYJ. Oh my god! ZYJ buying so much time. The gate now is at 27%, 30%. ZYJ is still making the kite. My goodness, Shelma, he needs to make this down right now. He cannot afford to waste any more time. Now put him in the cocoon. He doesn't have enough for a cocoon. And now three survivors are almost out the gate. My goodness, Bosh. This is looking like a dream. Man, escape for Dou, and they'll gladly take it right there. What a strong start for Do Wu. Amazing performance. The X Factor of the Clown really paid off and a beautiful end game there. ZYJ really had that shack on lockdown. An amazing performance by the survivor side of this, uh, of Do Wu. And I would have to say, um, yeah, I think Xiaoma uh, compared to yesterday, I think in round number one, Still kind of just going for that 1k so again a beautiful performance by those survivors so Nell uh, talk to me tell me your thoughts on that match especially towards the end there
uh, Soul Weaver is afraid of Cypher Rushes too. So mm -hmm. what happened there was the bot was utilized beautifully to prime the Cypher. So you can see that the kite happening, the decoding was happening while the kite was going on. And that again places emphasis on how much the trust was between Mechanic and the teammate who came to body block. Mm -hmm. Weeping Clown, uh, this time we did not see the traveling uh, going on uh, mm -hmm. with the rocket, but it was used two times to try and uh, disrupt uh, the Soul Weaver. First time didn't work because he was Cocoon, the mechanic was Cocoon, but the second time worked like a charm. Bought so much time, Sh Xiaoma has to chair the mercenary and bought even more time uh, for the mechanic to prime the cipher and my goodness, mm -hmm. it was just too late. ZYJ's late game kite also extended until the gate was open. So after cipher pop, he still managed to kite yeah. under more. Yeah, mm. talking about that ZYJ kite, it felt like a, a checkers game that lasted more than 10 minutes, man. It was just like constant back and forth. So it was just like a, at a stalemate. And like you said, someone, they needed to, one person needed to overextend. Once the web shot happened, they decided to pop the cypher. We're going to use the borrowed time to transition away. And still ZYJ was having such a great job uh, just camping that pallet out. So, I mean, ZYJ had an amazing uh, kite there. They really played to the mechanics, strengths which is just decode, let's not um, let's not push for anything more. And hey, Nell, like they wanted to go for that tie, and apparently the tie, they shot more than just the tie. They went for a three-person escape, considering mm -hmm. that if you choose that mechanic, you really just aim for that tie. So I would say exactly. this is the best start for Do Wu. And now they go to their point hunter in uh, Dong Xuan. So GG kind of put in a really tough spot here. Exactly, really tough spot because this is um, Do's map selection. So they obviously know what they want to do here. Um, they force uh, Shelma out of the bonbon bon decision here mm -hmm. uh, because of the mechanic being loose. So he he went for the Soul Weaver. It didn't work out as he expected, but it was still a 1K. At least it wasn't a four-man escape. Right. So right now, if GG survivors are able to at least get a, tree, uh, a draw, uh, idealistically a draw uh, would be achievable or mm -hmm. a three-man escape and above, that would put them in a very good position a draw would even put them in a very good position, 3-1 as well. Because mm. this is, again, those map selection. Next game, right. GG will be able to go to their maps and that's where they'll start raking the points. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Dong Xuan probably realizes this. He needs to get more than that. He needs to get 2k at least. You know, just foil their, their plans to get a 3-man escape, uh, their plans to get a draw in round 1, and just get that round 1 win straight away. Yeah, I think he understands the what the task is at hand, and you see the king treatment, Mr. President Dong Xuan here. Let's go. Uh, yeah, he, the 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 house that Do Wu has, it was built under the foundation of Dong Xuan, guys. When you ask for the best hunter, a lot of people fear the name DX, meaning Dong Xuan. So yeah. GG survivors know that this is he is the gold standard when it comes to hunting. But you have to admit, these guys are Call Four champions. They've been in the mix for a while, and we're gonna introduce introduce them here with PPZ. Three letters, PPZ, you, it means stunning. It means antiquarian, it means forward, it means a lot of clutch plays that happen during their Wolves game. And I'm just excited to see what he has in store for Dong Xuan. Yeah, three, three letter name is all you have to remember here. PPZ, especially <laughs> when he stuns you. Yeah, exactly. he's, just, he's just amazing with the antiquarian as well. And he got um, a lot of times he, he kind of liased with 18 to mm -hmm. make that OB happen. So oh. that was really, really amazing uh, stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. But next up, we sh cannot forget Ku Chao as well. Um, when left alone, you, you might think like, yo, he's, he's, he's the commander, he moves the chest around. But he can go for the kite as well. He's done it before, he got MVP because of it. And he does have the dancer. His go-to is the dancer, he used to be a coordinator um, picker as well. But now, uh, leaves it to Pipi Xia most of the time. So he's moving on more towards the kiting slash supporter role. Yeah, and like you mentioned, you know what? If you say PPZ, it's synonymous also to 18 over here. The thief, yes. Your eyes do not deceive you, chat. He does use thief. We've talked about mm. how crazy thief is and how strong with the silence and the stuns. And 18's a big fan of that. He also used the patient. He also used the acrobat. Uh, they they're very big on coordinator and thief. So I wonder how that's gonna play into the fact into uh, in this matchup, especially if they have if they have something prepared for Dong Xuan because I mean Dong Xuan is fearless. He's just so good at uh, sniping out anyone that thinks that they're gonna blink and flywheels. So he's gonna have to they're gonna have to one up him in that aspect. 
Yeah, you have to remember, 18 was one of those person who used Thief and got the three flashlight lights against these BQ in Red Church, uh, allowing the four escapes. So that's a really important thing to remember. But next up, PP Shia, the man, the myth, the hunter main who transitioned to survivor main. He's also played a very staple role. Not only does he play the psychologist, but he also plays an amazing seer. His record breaking was three owls in <laughs> one match. And he also plays the priestess when it comes to a big map and when Eli's being put in the jail, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, PP Xia, man. Like you said, the man, the myth, the legend, the man that has turned down the hunting to be with his fellow survivors uh, mm -hmm. is, is PP Xia. So he's hopefully he'll give a hard time to Dong Xuan, but this is the man himself, the big boss, Mr. President himself. Pay your respects, chat, to Dong Xuan, one of the best hunters, if not the best hunters in the world. You see his disciple, you see his geisha, and uh, Dong Xuan said, are we going to disciple mirror match in this best of five? That might be the case, but in Lakeside Village now, there's a lot of options for Dong Xuan to choose. Exactly. And if you remember, during the interview, he said one thing. He said, well, seems like Lucino was a good choice to play that time. <laughs> Crazy, right? He brought yeah. up Evil Reptilian out. Exactly, and that's the thing about him. He plays not only with his skills, not only with his uh, clear head, he plays with his feelings as well. So he's, he's <laughs> hunter Oh my there god, Lukino, the master jump. I mean, I hate lizards, but boy oh boy. You, you notice when he played Lukino, he didn't really go for the leap that, uh, smash combo. He just went leap. Normal hit, leap, yeah. normal hit. He was using the, the fast drop hits so he was, much. He was. Actually, now that you bring that up, there, I don't think there was any lethal crash that did land. It was more of That's just it. him using it as a, mo a, a, like a mobility hit. thing. He was using yeah. it like a geisha. He was like, all right, I'm going to use these leaps just to dash in front of you, bait out uh, a reaction. And he got, yeah, he got GR Survivor sweating at that point. It was like a three person, two person down. AK had to go down and fall down in the uh, in the basement. So, yeah, this is the man that can bring out a, a evil reptilian if he needs to. So yeah. that's something you have to take note of, folks, and how um, GG needs to play this picks and bands very well. Yeah, I mean... My goodness, the sleeper gang, you have to put your slippers away. Mr. President's coming to visit the house. Uh, he's not gonna <laughs> he's not gonna take your <laughs> he's not gonna have it with your slippers mm -hmm. and all. Yeah, be respectful when you're in front of Dong Xuan because that's who they're gonna face right here, right off the bat. And honestly, I, I would say GG should aim for mm -hmm. three man escape here. Realistically, they would probably land in around 2k, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. two escape, three escape. But with Dong Shen, anything can happen. And boy, oh boy, I feel like if Gigi's able to pull off this, we'll be able to see how round two uh, and onwards uh, progress. Yes. And well, before we head to the picks and bands, just to double down on that, uh, th those known to be good as rounds progress. So if they need to get a victory or at least tie things up, they need it now because as rounds progress, their survivors and hunters arguably get stronger. But you know what? GG exactly. was able to win in the best of four up against Wolves. So now banning out the Seer, we got the Priestess ban as well as Psychologist. Seems like he might be going for a single hit Hunter, maybe Dream Witch, maybe uh, Geisha. But now they they, they already solidified, uh, solidified the Acrobat, Antiquarian, and the Mercenary here now. Even if he wants to go for a Dream Witch here, it will work as well. He's already banned out the Psychologist. He's banned out the Barmaid as well. GG allowed. Dong Shen to ban out these two supporter healers. Honestly, mm. I feel like if they had a mercenary, things would be different, but it's okay. GG's gonna lean towards um, an embalmer. So I feel like the game plan here is they're gonna they're gonna play logically. Mm -hmm. They wanna get a draw in uh, those map pick and move on to round two. It's fine if uh, Dou gets a round one win. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not a 3k or right. a 4k they, they can live with it they can live with it that makes sense just mm. the the lesser as we were talking while we we're playing checkers just the exchange right all right this is your map pick we'll pay the debt of two survivors as we when we get to round number two then you'll face us in our home turf and that embalmer pick does seem to say that however uh yeah you have that acrobat you also have the antiquarian which plays so well against uh a, a dream witch so let's see Again, this is Dong Xuan, the mastermind. He could just switch things up. He could pick Evil Reptilian if he wanted to. Who knows? We don't know what's percolating in the mind of Dong Xuan. But yeah, I like your train of thought, Nell. I think GG is just kind of resided to go on the defense for now. 
Mm, I mean, he can totally play Dream Witch here if he wants to, but he can also lean back, you know, go with a Bloody Queen, he can go with a Nayad, he can go with a Geisha. Anything's possible, and that's scary when you think about Dong Xuan's um, deep choice, deep pool of choice. He, he can do anything he wants. Um, but honestly, I feel like a Dream Witch here could be good. Yeah, oh, true. Nice. And, and Nell's he's gonna... on the board for it's yeah, right. the predictions. See your Nell here on the Dream Witch. Let's go. But then again, if, if you guys have followed Dong Xuan, you know how terrifying he is on this Dream Witch. Yes, there were some survivors to make him sweat with this Dream Witch, but this you have to understand, Nell, this is playoffs Dong Xuan. This is grand finals Dong Xuan. Yeah, Dogo final has boss, <laughs> yeah final boss form you know you hear the you hear the orchestral strums of a dark uh, of, a, of a boss like music coming out when you're facing mm -hmm. up against dong shuen and he though has not won a koa yet so they i feel like they might be a little hungrier coming into this one exactly this is this is so close like this is this is uh, one of those moments where they are so close to victory they can almost taste it mm -hmm. and you know what they, they they've they've calmed down. They've relaxed with the bottle service in their in their limousine. <laughs> uh, they're they're ready to come in. And you saw the manager as well giving him a massage. The coach giving him a massage. Don't Shen, He he just needs to relax and remember, mm -hmm. this is uh, his game to take. As long as he plays consistently, he'll be able to get a two K at the very least, mm -hmm. and wait for the survivors to make mistakes. But one thing GG has going on is, at least Dreamwish doesn't have trump card mm, ah, so yeah so he cannot change it into a bling late game or change it into a teleport late game or change it into an abnormal late game he only has bling and that's the only uh thing that gg has to worry about so that's the saving yeah. risk i feel yeah and th that's what dong Shuan has been using as of late right he, he'd yeah. go for insolence instead of trump card uh mm -hmm. let's hope he doesn't switch things up on gg's behalf because gg really needs that i would say slight opening for them to be able to make the first early seconds a tough chase just so he'll feel the effects and you called oh. it nell insolence detention blink that's all they have to worry about so mac pressure really needs to be focused and isolated while mm -hmm. they have not brought flywheel nil it's all borrow uh, it's all broken windows Borrowed yeah windows. sorry uh, <laughs> uh, i think that's good because they already i mean if we can tell they can definitely tell dong Xuan is stuck on detention insolence bling mm -hmm. like we already called it and they definitely know that's why uh flywheel might not help them gain the distance that they need to get away from influence but you know what going into the game now second half of round one it is me nello Mello, and posh price bringing the commentary of do Wu versus gg so we're gonna actually move the main body here at the small boat and pp shah is gonna take this first kite pp shah is, is would gladly take this first kite nice jump to the wall here just for him to switch back his main body to kind of make a sandwich situation come out um again he can't afford too long of a chase on pp shah's side we're still waiting on the well the the trait cooldown of dong Shuen. A little repositioning here of the followers and pp shah using a flame bomb to silence out one of the followers so, okay, Kite, so Ooh. far, as long as he's able to continue this pace, it should be good for GG. But wait, gives a hit, but at least it was the leech. Yeah, but that's here's where insolence is so useful. It doesn't matter because Dong right. Xuan doesn't want to have that problem. Like, oh, no leech. I only have one person chasing. The insolence helps so much. PP Xia, oh my oh. god, he should have leaped straight away. But no, mm -hmm. oh my god, the follower is going to follow in. But PP Xia is already buying so much time. One minute kiting, still going strong, still has another bomb. He's going to use that last bomb to gain some distance. But Bling is already up. Wow. <laughs> the Oh, Air shock through, and that was actually a tough. I mean, yeah, you knew he was gonna go in there, but the angle was just amazing. Like you said, Nell, ciphers have been moving along nicely, so it's kind of even here. They're about to finish their two ciphers. One is still at seventy percent, and the important thing here is that Dong Shuren's able to spot out this mercenary just to add more presence to the table. So two leeches on the table, no anti curses yet for the survivors. So Dong Shuen, I would say, has the slight advantage here, depending on how this uh, rescue is gonna play out. Yeah, exactly. And this is where insolence comes, comes so strong in early games. You can see Kuchuk already being leeched by right. This is not supposed that he wants to have as many leeches as possible in the game. The first elbow pad is going to be expanded. He probably needs another one. Or I think he should just wait. Oh my god. He he's, oh. If he gets caught here, he's going to be an early rescue. He has to actually, be Actually, really it's, it's way after half now. So this is actually, this attempt might have to be a full blood rescue. So they're buying some time here, but Kuchao has to decide and decide now. He's going to eat that hit. 
Uh, PP Xiao is on his, on his last chair. He's just going to get that last effort on in. So it seems like maybe the Antiquarian might come in for that support. Cyphers aren't yet pushing for the end game spot. And the Mercenary is injured. At least he picked up an Anti-Curse. But it seems like PP Xiao might be... Uh, what's that? On it? Yeah, he's on his last chair. Yeah, and you can see PPZ is not even going to come in for the support. You can see that GG is so determined to get a draw. Otherwise, right. you would normally see the rescue happen before half. That's number one. And number mm -hmm. two, PPZ would have already started rotating towards um, uh, before the rescue even happens. But because they want to rush the Cypher, you can see even though PPZ is going to be sent back to the manor now, three Cyphers are moving very healthily. They know Dongshan only has the blink. So mm -hmm. the thing, the idea is Ku Chao has to kite uh, this one, even if he has to expense his last elbow pad, yeah. while the rest of them have to finish that last cipher after they finish their cipher. Oh, going for the blink now, and the mercenary will be falling down. He still has one elbow pad for end game, right? One is still stalled at seventy percent. This cipher has not moved. Main body is gonna move on up here with eighteen in the mix, and it's yeah, it's looking like a solid tie. But we know Dong Shuan, he's he, he's a man that goes above and beyond what he wants. He wants yeah. to go for more than just the tie, while sure. GG is really playing for that tie factor. Yeah, but fortunately, uh, 18 has at least finished the cipher on the big boat. That's why Kuchao's comfortably uh, run up to that. But oh mm. my goodness, Dongshan knows exactly where all the ciphers are being done. PPZ gonna uh -oh. hit Dongshan left and right. The slipper slaps coming in left and right. <laughs> but how much can you dodge? 18 needs to make this work. Mercenary needs to keep. Yeah, they need to keep diverting the attention of mm -hmm. Dongshan here. Oh, Embalmer eating that hit. Mercenary is rescued. We're still at 80%. Embalmer is able to get an anti-curse. It seems like he's going to try to focus his attention down on this Embalmer since the Mercenary does take a while to actually go down. He's going to have to just chase him on foot. The Cypher is not moving just yet. Falls down to the shore area here. Embalmer still has a coffin to use. And now the disarm. So unable to pressure this uh, pressure down this Cypher now. Yeah, it's already 99%. Um, mercenary... Uh, wait... How, who's gonna go and rescue? Oh, he's just oh, gonna use the coffin yeah, straight away. Oh yeah. my god, he, he's forced to pop now. He's forced yeah. to pop now. Oh my god, the flip down onto the antiquarian, unable to use her stick to prolong the kite. We have a detention dream, which mercenary has a leech. Antiquarian is about to be chaired and also leeched out. So this is not over quite yet, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, Dongxuan, what a scary character. You need to remember, when someone's in the coffin or on the chair, Berserker can still take place. Right. And that's why you still saw the recovery was so fast. So, uh -oh. Fu Chao can't even open the gate. That's only 55%. Oh my god, GG's plan to get a draw might fall at this point, Posh. It could. Luckily, he didn't have Blink just yet. He's going to reposition this main body here to spot out Fu Chao. Mind you, Antiquarian, this is their first chair. So, Dongxuan has to, you know, watch two things at one. They're trying to split push this while 18 tries to close in for the rescue. Kuchao has an elbow pad to use. He might expend it. He's trying to play some mind games here in the pallet now. Holding on to that last elbow pad. He's going to use it right away to transition towards these palleted areas. And now Embalmer has... Yeah, he's trying to run. He's trying to run towards the dungeon now. You can see he's trying to buy time. They know they're not gonna try and make the impossible play of rescuing PPZ and going in for the rescue. Kuchao's just gonna safely take a hit here. And PPZ, oh my god, I don't think he's gonna he's not gonna expire in time. The host is actually pretty far, but no boss will be able to finish his three more seconds. Oh my god, the, the the timing is off, Kuchao. He's gonna fall in just a bit. He could just camp this one. Oh out. my the god! The is already open now. 3K imminent here. Kuchao, get up! Oh my god, the swing has to happen! Oh my god, a 3K by boss Dong Shen. Calculated, calculated, bro. Calculated. Mr. President getting the 3K. You ask him for a tie, he goes above and beyond that. And now it's a 6-2 to two lead for Do, uh, for Do Wu in round number one. He's got to feel happy about that performance, folks. Exactly. And this is the problem when you try... Yeah, like, you, you try to aim... You try to aim for a for for a 2k and you try to aim for a two escape and you get less than that honestly i feel like if gg went a little bit more aggressive there uh mercenary made that rescue before half ppcia might have even been able to kite more his, right. his red bomb's gonna regenerate pretty soon so he might have been able to kite more uh late game probably one person already lost they might have been able to secure the draw but because they were trying to sacrifice and go for the cypher rush uh don't should capitalize so well on that Mm -hmm. and ultimately a 3k oh my god beautiful performance like you said also it's it's more of just how how they kind of played more defensively because yeah pp did an amazing kite at the start and if exactly. they're able to save before half 
Uh, he could have extended a little more. He was also in a pretty strong area, but Dong Shuen, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like he knew that that's how it was going to play out, right? Bringing insolence, blink, and just relying on that for him to be able to um, get the three-man kill. And also just his positioning, right? It was just so exactly. beautifully done. Uh, and unfortunately for the Antiquarian, unable to get the endgame kite. And you think, right, uh, in paper, Antiquarian is supposed to be an amazing endgame kiter, but the blink once again, I mean, the aggression on Dong Shuen. Uh, GG was just a step behind in this matchup, leading to the 3-1 in favor of Do Wu. So Do Wu wins round number one of this BO5. Yeah, that was just an amazing, um, amazing awareness by Dong Shen. Do you realize that PP Xia, remember when he dodged it with the fight bomb, going towards the window and getting the terror shock? Mm -hmm. Dong Shen already knows that he's aiming for the window because his broken window is already off cooldown. Mm. So what he does is he positioned himself to bling, hit him mm -hmm. right at that moment when he when his broken window has been activated. You know, like, yo, uh, this is where you're supposed to be able to get more distance, but here's where I'm going to blink and, and hit you and terror shock you because I know exactly that's what you're going to do at that point of time. He negate that speed boost a uh, short window of time mm -hmm. not to mention uh the leech the leeches timing is so good mercenary and the acrobat had leeches nothing could have been done there the early pressure was just so great by dong shen yeah it's just the hunter instinct right for him to be able to make those split i mean he just realizes these things he sees the game in ones and zeros just like the matrix or something and he just uh, he executes accordingly and uh, rare slip-ups on their side, but we're going to see how round number two is going to happen, folks. We're going to take a short break, round two, and we come back. Hashtag Koa6 global support once again, ladies and gentlemen. Go GG, play all the strength and do not leave regrets. Your high horse proudly gallops with a gentle breeze of spring. That's an amazing haiku, no? Uh, haiku. <laughs> haiku, no? <laughs> haiku. The spring of 2023, GG will win the tournament again in Hangzhou. Yeah. These, they're so poetic, these, these fans. These fans give so much uh, inspiration to the players. Yeah, speaking of poetic, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> Oh. Sorry, I just had to do it. But thank you, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I yeah. was so taken aback that my yeah. Anyway, <laughs> go, okay. go for it. Here, here's another selfie by another fan saying, "Come on, though, you must be the champion for Pasha's birthday." <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my apples are in Do Wu, so if Do Wu gets the championship, I'll consider that their birthday gift for me. <laughs> but yeah, the fan signs going on. You see, that's how we can. This how we can see it. Look at situations as well. We mm -hmm. we, we 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 celebrate all the little things. We we enjoy mm -hmm. the little things. We celebrate the moments, and I'm just glad that you're here uh, mm -hmm. on your birthday uh, with us and the audience. I'm pretty sure they're all really grateful to have you here as well. 
I'm um, grateful to be here, Nell, and I'm I'm grateful to have you as my partner as we woo. watch history in the making, right? We're exactly. either going to see a two-time co champion or the first ever Dowu champion. So exactly. I, I can't think of a better way to spend this birthday, and I can't think of a better audience to have than each and every one of you guys. Woo. Do you want to give any, give any shout outs real quick, Nell? Uh, shout outs to Heiwu. Yo, Heiwu, a beautiful, uh, dedicated Wu Chang artist as well, and of mm -hmm. course, Big run, 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 Ruku, Chad likes pasta. Apollons, mm -hmm. if you're there, Princess Pasta, Chantel, if you're there as well, uh, mm -hmm. Hanako, He Penty, TH, Erica, Rini, if you're there as well, Nano. Hey, let's What's go. Up, guys? I have to give a shout out to Salty B, and uh, I'll, I'll post it later, but she made like a really cool fan art, and I have to do the Kermit voice. Hey there, Salty B. Thank you have so much for the greeting. <laughs> can I do that too? Let me, let me try and see if I can. Uh, happy, happy birthday, Poch. Oh my god, this is sounds like a British there. Kermit. It's there. <laughs> British <laughs> Kermit. <laughs> a British Kermit, yeah, that's true. You know, I was in Tea and Crumpets with, with British Kermit and Kermit the Frog. <laughs> yeah, I, but looking at the game now, right? Looks mm -hmm. like, okay, since GG huh. had map selection, mm -hmm. it looks like those, like, yo, let's have Big Boss. Uh, Mr. President come back in for the second time and um... oh yeah interesting yeah this is what's scary and I'm gonna throw this to you because I know you've also talked to teams right how is the mentality if you're it, 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 coming in again right if if the hunter is like has a good one and then the team has to face them again how do you the, the morale right has to be put into question here because the the pressure will be added on and we're still heading to Chinatown now yeah Chinatown I, I love this place. It's a beautiful map. Uh, and of course, I definitely love the corner um, fire there's exit mm -hmm. because that's the safest place I can ever be at <laughs> when I'm playing this map. And it's really a real, it's actually a really strong place as well. Elevation is the name of the game here. So mm -hmm. it kind of negates BQ in a way here, kind of negates Wax Artist in a way here. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, in a way, like at certain in a spot. Way, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, Breaking Wheel is, that, is also going to have a pretty hard time here, especially going mm -hmm. up the stairs. I mean, if you're if you miss one 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 turning, whoops, you're gonna get stuck in the wall, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, Bon Bon's gonna suffer here a bit as well because of the slow chase. Mm -hmm. uh, he usually uses the bomb to like cut the survivors off, so uh, that's one thing that can happen. But GG is already doing the respect ban. Yo, you know what? Insolence, Trump, uh, insolence, detention, bling. We thought we can handle it, but no, I don't think we can anymore. So let's just take it away. And yeah. yeah. This smart kind choice. of, I, I would say, a yeah, very smart choice. They don't want to go for that. But like we said before, you know what? Geisha can come in. Uh, one of those single hit hunters. He's also got, uh, he can go meta as well. He can go disciple. But in this map now, it's kind of big. So I'm not sure. Maybe he'll save it for round number three. So banning out the barmaid and the seer. So no healers at all. No support on that priestess. It allows him to pick up the patient to come on in here. So once again, GG put on a, a bit of a back foot here. And we've we've noticed in the previous days, Nell, that if, if a team would lose round number one, it's hard for them to come back. Like they can mostly just tie. And in, once we started this best of five, right? It's just been so tough for teams to kind of recover. At least though, it's not the biggest point difference. It's not like a 5-0. It's not a 5-0 indeed. They've already avoid, uh, they've already negated the fate <laughs> of GR yesterday. Um, getting a getting a 10 in the first game, so mm -hmm. I feel like that's already an upgrade. They're playing mm -hmm. really really safe. They're still, I would say, they're still testing the waters. Like, yo, um, let's see what's gonna happen in game one first. Um, uh, let's see how those gonna fare. And though actually managed to capitalize in game one, but like what you said, Posh, is mm -hmm. only three, still very salvageable. Mm -hmm. And here it is GG's game to play, supposedly. Right. Um, but I'm actually kind of, I, I, usually I would prefer, I would really love to have a toy merchant here. Or In this lineup, right? Yeah. All right. But it seems like mm -hmm. they're not going to go for it. Um, yeah, because this, again, yeah, patience really good. But yeah, with toy merchant and embalmer, you're really relying on how big this map is and how much uh, distance that the hunter has to travel just to down uh, your survivor. And yeah, the toy merchant as well usually goes um if the priestess gets banned you go for toy merchant so i'm surprised also dong Chuan gave it up to uh, for them to use and they didn't take it so i don't know uh, i think that he was kind of hoping that they go for toy merchant then he goes geisha that's just mm. my pick because usually he brings out geisha he brings out Anne, he brings out clerk since his I mean, dream which does get banned yeah i mean he can definitely bring out clark here if he wants to because mm -hmm. he's already taken out the two supports um, right and and the 
Oh, the Prospecta as well. So, mm. oh my God, and then and it's all. We're being treated to a disciple match this early. I thought it's round three disciples. So I think he's putting Shalma on notice that if you want that disciple mirror match, it's gonna have to come here and now. But now I have to ask you, it's Chinatown and it's disciple. How do you feel about those two uh, mixing in? Uh, disciple can close in the gap really, really fast. And honestly, he's not really afraid of elevations uh, because usually Geisha mains, they will bring 6-12 uh, or at least fast uh, pallet breaking. Mm -hmm. um, it, because what happens is when you when the cat latches on onto the survivor, when they put down the pallet, they can leap forward, stun the survivors, break the pallet and still have enough time to hit the survivors wow. before they recover True. from stun. That's what usually happens. That's the mm -hmm. most basic foundation of what an Ant can do here. But with Dong Xuan, <laughs> uses it to leap through corners. <laughs> yeah, his his leaps, folks, are very zigzaggy. It's just amazing exactly. how he has so much control yeah. of those leaps. And uh, we'll see if we're gonna get highlight moments of uh, of Dong Xuan's and the leap, or <laughs> will they be heart. able to dodge? <laughs> Leap into your hearts, guys. Yeah, Mr. Let's... President, li leaping to your hearts. Exactly, leaping into your hearts. You saw his uh, Korea Opa love sign <laughs> there. The hearts. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Dong X uh, giving us the XOXOs, uh, and definitely the XOXOs with the disciple pick. I definitely love uh, N here. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, he, he he's very comfortable. Even if he gets a draw here, I think the game plan is the same for mm -hmm. Do Wu now. Yo, okay, yeah. we're in your turf now. You choose this place. We're gonna try and go for a draw here uh, and get a three man escape or a three K, whichever right. option we can. Yeah. yeah. So we're about to see the persona builds, and I'm looking. I'm thinking back about the picks and bands, and if they could have, because yeah, you mentioned something really important. The toy merchant wasn't picked out, right? And anything oh. to kind of oh. establish. And now we see wow, one flywheel and two broken oh windows, God. but trump card and blink on the side of Dong Xuan. Now, what are your thoughts on this? He he definitely wants um, he definitely wants trump card to work in late game. So I mm -hmm. I like this. He's not he's not a six twelve hardcore teleport one one trade no no swap kind of mm. uh, and he's a 3612 36 mm. fast breaking pallet and which means he might be very susceptible to stuns his right. stun recovery might not be as fast as he would hope against antiquarian so hopefully that will not be the case we are going to head towards round number two second half fox spice and Nello Mello on the mic dong Xuan rotating towards the center of this map to find him possibly find his best possible target seems like it's going to be the antiquarian here Nell. so we're going to find and test and see the stun uh of this and but yeah being obstructed by the terrain here let's see if he can close the distance on the uh, ppz's antiquarian yeah, I mean, he, he he's at my safe spot here, which is the, <laughs> the corner, fire exit. And this is honestly the god palette. Once you remove it, um, basically you can't really kite back the same place again. And with Doshian, once the cat latches onto you, you look at the corner. Okay, he's gonna leave me. He's waiting for it, gets the leap, and also oh the my heat. God. PPZ was expecting the leap earlier on, but mm -hmm. Shen, a master of patience. And look, he's going up the staircase again, but this time there's no god pilot to help him. He's gonna get caught up once the blink's online, and it is online already, Podge. Oh, he's also got a cat he used just to get the, to close out the distance. That was an excellent scramble there on Dong Xuan's side. He's gonna be able to go for the leap, and also the oh, silence oh. blink to connect. My goodness, I love this. You, you know, you know the logic there. Usually. If uh, a player, a normal thinking, right? A normal thinking end would be like, yo, I got you on the cat already. It's fine. I'll just leap forward, stun you, hit you, save my bling. But here, he uses it to silence. When he puts down the pallet, he hits. Because he knows, you remember the incident mm -hmm. where the Antiquarian use it, uh, to, the PPZ use it to hit the end over. Exactly. Yeah, and it's then buying he, a little more time start, right, right here. Yeah. Dong Xuan, it's just the devils are in the details and Dong Xuan is just a master of, you know, just the little things. And now we see 18 is in the mix here. You have to be very careful. My goodness, he's trying to camp it out here, but now it's a two person rescue situation. Kuchao oh. eats the hit, but now able to get the slow oh, the, uh, onto Dong Xuan here to buy enough time for PPZ to move on to the hotel. Exactly. 18 has to be really careful though. Oh my god, 18 trying to body block here. PPC does not have the god palette to work with because yeah. he's used it so early on. So PPC, if he goes up, the cat's gonna oh. latch on! Oh my god! 
Yeah, and now he can actually go for just... Yeah, the elevations is just going to halt him out. And PPZ's rebound kite is going to get cut short. Mercenary is injured. Acrobat is still around this area. So we're going to see how they're going to try to rally back in this situation. But Dong Xuan so far playing really well here in Nell. Cypher progress isn't so impressive just yet. But we're going to see how they're going to make this rescues happen. Yeah, the graph here is definitely leaning towards a draw. Like, the fifth cipher hasn't been done. So, typically, what happens is PPZ probably gonna use his bamboo last minute. Oh, it's red bone! Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna get... just. You hear? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's gonna get the silence. He's waiting. He just eats the hit, and now silence is off cooldown. But the, uh, we do see that we they do have to wait for just a little bit. Last cipher is not primed just yet. Antiquarian has a little bit of a stick to use. Acrobat oh, gets no. down! It's fine because I, I think he has no choice but to do that. Because once the cat's up, you can't body block. You can't body block that cat. Oh my god, look at how accurate it is. He's gonna drop down here. Oh, and the leap going down the stairs! A leap. Double leap. Oh, he's silencing again, and he's able to get the hit. This oh is the last god. chair of the Antiquarian double down situation. Cyphers have halted Nell, and it seems like a solid tie is imminent for Dong Xuan. My goodness, that was such a beautiful play by Dong Xuan. His, his cats are not wasted at all, Posh. Yeah. He used it either to silence, gain distance. There was no wasted cat unleashed. Mm. And look, look at that. Oh, oh my god, god. just the way it's so god. accurate. It got to the mercenary. That's insane. He's He has a blink online too. He's going to silence the mercenary just so he doesn't have the elbow pad to use. He's going to try to close out this distance without even using that blink to down this mercenary. Goes through the oh corner. Kucha is going to fall down. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But he's going to... Oh, with the blink that he's safe, he's going to trump card and change it to teleport straight away. He wants to stop the last Cypher. Typically, he wants to wait until the survivor slip up of some kind. But Pipigia manages to escape the cat right there. But with the cross placement, he's going to make the second leap, closing the oh. distance. Oh, that was so gosh. close. Yeah, very. I mean, he had to use one hook just to be able to get out of that situation. But can we just admire Dong Xuan's cat placements and cross placements? Because they're so on point. He's just going to cat this patient. He's going to force him to hook. Oh unable to, though, gets the hit. And now everyone's injured. Exactly. Look at that short, that close turning, mm -hmm. uh, zigzag turn uh, of the leap. That was just amazing. The survivors couldn't have expected that, man. Even if they expect, they couldn't react to it because, because of the the accessibility to the the, the variety mm -hmm. of leaps that he has, they can never expect what he's gonna do. Is he gonna double back? Is he gonna go leap through from the side? Is he gonna is he gonna bait them through the the pallet? So many options, and he just. Oh. He just blew my mind with this cat. Yeah, and look at that. He's spotting out 18. Mercenary is being healed up. So now survivors are forced to go on the defense here. They need to uh, recuperate the resources and slow things down. Dong Shen knows that uh, this this few, couple few seconds is going to be very important because he has the lead here. But I mean, this, this meta is so survivor sided that it could change in just an instant. He's disrupting it. Patient at least was able to get healed up. But oh PP Sha gets God. latched on to. Oh, and he even misses the... Oh, wait! Dong Shen has forced PP Xia. This is the moment that we all know what's going on. Dong Shen is wasting all of yeah. the resources of the survivors. Mm -hmm. Everyone has nothing except the Acrobat. One ball left, one pad left. PP Xia has no hooks left. Exactly. They're going to need to open up some chests here just for them to have an endgame kite. And now able to get the leap. Kuchao gets hit once again. He still has his self heal, so that's totally fine. He's going to go for another teleport here and, and cut out 18 from pushing oh an objective. God. And that leap as well, oh. he utilized it so well. But my goodness, 18 utilizing the bombs really well, making it through. Avoiding a certain doom. If, if 18 goes down here, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard uh, to come back from this. He has to buy time at least until Ku Chao stands up. Oh, and now 18 falls down. Ku Chao's not up yet. Now they're trying to push for the last cypher, but yeah, they're just going to chair and force the mercenary to kind of self heal, but he takes such a long time. This is all uh, the first chair of uh, 18. So now um, they have to go. Uh, PP Xia actually has to get away from that cypher and try to heal up the mercenary. Yeah. I don't think he'll heal oh, up. No. Oh my god, if Kuchao doesn't stand up here. Oh, oh my god, oh. Oh, oh my no. god. He, if he only, If only he could stand up a second earlier, 
He would have thought he would be able to dodge it. But now, look, even if the rescue happens, Kuchel's gonna fall down again. No self-heal. And the Cypher, yes, 96%, but no one is able to prime it. Yeah, I mean, Patient is running left and right. Saving, priming, rescuing. Oh my god. Now. Uh oh, here we go. There's He got silenced, so that's good. He just needs to step onto this acrobat. Oh, he's gonna try to mind game. Oh, he's able to get it. And now 18 has fallen once again. Double down situation. PP Sha, the only healthy survivor out here. Yeah, he knows there's no more hope. And even 18's gonna expire uh, after this. No one's able to rescue anymore. My goodness, Osh, I think we're gonna witness a 3k uh, side Oh, they just go for the pop, yeah. They, they have to go for broke here and just try and um, focus their attention on the end game and not get the five person escape because oh. that was so deadly. But now it seems like, yeah, Dong Xuan still has teleport, so he's right in the middle. Lower left side sees that the mercenary is giving that tinnitus. He's gonna try to turn left and right. Now he's gonna find Ku Chao in the process. Yeah, he knows no one's here. So if he fails to catch Ku Chao midway, He's just gonna teleport straight to PP Shia. But it looks like Kucha's gonna <laughs> Kucha's gonna be caught up really, really soon here. Oh. There's no more elbow pads. Oh my god! Oh beautiful dodge! Oh he's teleported away. away! He knows that the mercenary is a tough chase and he's right next to the dungeon. He's gonna slam this pallet. Oh, this is a patient with no hooks left, and detention is still at above the 60% mark. Oh. And the window already broke there. So now he's gonna try to rely on the cats here. PP Shia out in the oh. open, gets stunned and downed now. Yeah, this is why Disciple is so deadly. It, it's supposed to be a Thai kind of hunter, but because it's in the hand of Dong Xuan, the beautiful dodges, like the, the early game was just amazing. He gained the, the presence so fast. And because of that, he was able to utilize the double leap so well. And you can see the psychology going on here. Right. Yeah, like, just, sorry, go. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. I was gonna say, yeah, just getting 1k, one man escape is actually the moral victory of oh GG. But Dong Xuan, Mr. President, the consistent 3k's, big smile on his face. I mean, the the third round, if they're able to continue this, we might not even see a fourth and fifth. This is just an incredible performance on, on Dong Xuan's side. And now we're gonna see the survivor side, but the survivors performed great up against Xiao Ma. So I have to say, like, a GG, um, they, they have to change and change up quick here because uh, Do, uh, Do Wu, I think they just want an early night here. Yeah, I mean, whoever, whoever's buying bottle service for Mr. President, please do so <laughs> again. He, whatever he's drinking, I want one of those too. <laughs> like, the, place, the birthday boy, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know what he drunk, <laughs> he had for his drink, but mm -hmm. well, he should keep drinking it. And obviously, even in the map that GG chose, Mm -hmm. He still got a 3k. This is just looking like um, Do Wu Tram all uh, running through all that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, right? And considering also, if we look at the picks and bans, right? I mean, they didn't have entomologists. They didn't have like much. Ca I mean, the antiquarian was there, but unfortunately, I mean, just that moment that you were able to capture, forcing the leap, and he knew, all right, you're going to leap. I'm going to put a cat on you, silence you so you won't be able to hit me, and then I'm going to hit you back. It's just. He's just so good at these finer details and the timing and rhythm he plays on is just on another level. So yeah, playoffs Dong Xuan, folks. It's, he's just another level of a beast. Definitely S tier performance. And you got to give it up to GG. They really tried their best all, all throughout, but uh, it just seemed like he knew what to do in, in exactly every moment. And you said it, Nell. All the cats, they counted. Like there was no exactly. wasted cat. Exactly. Not to mention, all oh, the composition of the survivors don't even counter and that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got rid of the Prospector. I feel that was a really big ban for him. Uh, otherwise, there would be a lot of uh, Magnet <laughs> propels. So uh, that's already a very good job for him. Mm. Yeah. Makes me think that they were thinking he was going to go Geisha with this lineup. And he decided to just go, all right, you're leaning, have, you're kind of leaning towards this. And it, it, like you said, it doesn't even counter Ann. Let me bring out Ann because, yeah, they don't have the bees. They don't have that much. They don't prospect there. They don't have anything to thwart him in in, in um, stunning the Ann outside of the cat jump. So uh, here's the match data, folks. An incredible performance by Dong Xuan, a three man kill. And now Gigi's uh, hunter here, Xiaoma, will have to deal with the wrath of the survivors as well. And you could just go, I mean, the survivors could just go for a tie and they, they win round number two. But they can't keep going on a tie anymore. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. this is their map choice. If they can't even, if they can't even get a win here, 
it's going to be even harder for the later rounds. I mean, I totally agree with you. If they can get a three-man escape here, yeah, uh, that would... Sorry, not three-man escape. Three it's kill. Shaoma. Shaoma needs, yeah. yeah, three kill. Yeah, if Shaoma can get a 3k here, at least he will neutralize it. But it doesn't make things... Uh, it will make things slightly better. But it's mm -hmm. still one round win for Dou and mm -hmm. a round, one round draw or lose for GG side. So that's yeah, very, yeah. very scary. But the one thing they absolutely cannot do yeah. is lose this round as well. Because yeah. That, yeah, otherwise the momentum's just gonna keep building up. This is not like basketball, like the momentum's keep going and then you get a timeout. Yo, let's <laughs> up, 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 we're gonna change the mood. No, it's gonna be really hard to turn back the mood, bro. Yo, speaking of basketball, uh, we th Eli thought the, <laughs> the new survivor is gonna be basketball. Shoutouts once again to Chocho for translating that. Yeah, we got some new survivors and new hunters as well coming out. Yeah, big shoutouts to Siler and a bunch of new skins as well. Um, yeah, so I, I, did any of the announcements or any of the designs catch you catch your attention? Uh, honestly, I'm I. I think the cheerleader looks pretty cute. Yeah, the she looks great. Yeah, Girl boss looks... cheerleader. cheerleader. Yeah. You were talking about it just now. Like, yo, what's the skill? Um, cheering for your teammates uh, and the forwards balls. Uh, replenish this. Replen like, Whoa, that would be crazy. Replenish. Yeah. Can you imagine that if skills, well, items replenish with the cheerleader? Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. According, uh, maybe the item needs to have a little bit of usage left. Yeah, Not instead like, of it being done, right? Yeah, yeah that makes yeah, sense. Like replenish to 99%, something like that. Um, or the cheerleadings, like, yo, I, I'm running side by side with you. I start cheering, and then all of a sudden you run 20% faster. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be funny. Like, yeah, exactly. Well, that's cool, because that, that's kind of like a play of the psychologist and patient, right? They they have right. that buff, like that, that lover's buff, right? But yeah. here it's like the um, cheerleader, like, yo, let's let me cheer you on so you can... or. She'll be beside you decoding and she cheer you on. Go, go, go. And then you decode like really oh. fast as well. And the longer you cheer, the faster you run. No, that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're doing a speed run. True. Oh, that's yeah. going to be crazy. I mean, the hunter looks really good too. The, uh, I mean, the hunters look really good too. So I can't wait to see. And I can't wait to see also like the, the changes that we're going to see. Um, because now, Usually after every koa, it's very survivor sided now. So we're gonna see how they're gonna change it up to be a little more hunter sided because uh, Dong Xuan, it seems like he's playing with his own meta. But the other hunt, other the other hunters in competitive, they they do be struggling now. Yeah, they do be struggling indeed. They definitely need something to put into the hunters arsenal, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly. Um, I'm just thinking, yo, that new hunter actually looks kind of like a Dracula vampire, right? So, imagine imagine a concept where the vampires, uh, well, you, you take a little bit of bite here, uh, and then um, you lose your item. You lose the item progress, like, you know, a, a skill, a skill where a hunter has, where he hits you once, he hits you twice, when you go down, your, your items re diminish, something like that. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen in the chat, uh, looks like we are going to be waiting for Mr. Posh, uh, you know, birthday boy so let us say happy birthday to him when he gets back okay so guys just want to give you a little shout out man Tor, Marlene, Jessica, Dieska, Eve, Venus Ambassador, Chi, hello Chi and Princess Pasta Blanche, Black Phoenix, all celebrity in the chat, shout outs to you as well, glad mm -hmm. you did. Uh, yeah, I was just saying Black Phoenix was in the chat again uh, today for the finals. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again for the greeting, Nell. And thank you again for, yeah, just talking about the, the amazing um, new characters. Um, yeah. the, the, the vampire. I thought you said, <laughs> like, if, if, if the, yeah, if there would be a vampire that gets a hit and then the items, I thought, like, they'll use the items on each other or something. Like, he'll be, oh. he'll be under control. Ooh, under Ooh, his control. Charm. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I start biting you. Mm -hmm. I, I take a bite on you. And then all of a sudden, you rescue fifty-one percent. <laughs> <laughs> or you expend the elbow pad. You use the football just to run away. You use the flare gun on your whatever. So could be very interesting. I mean, uh, sky's the limit with identity five. So exactly. Uh, exactly. I'm excited to see how that's gonna play out. But I'm also excited to see this match. So they ban out the breaking wheel here now. Yeah, I mean, breaking wheel is the kind of hunter that can make that comeback, that four K comeback. So they want Shelma on the safe tie hunter 
Mm-hmm. Okay, they want to force him on safe tie hunter like Bon Bon. Yo, you, what, can you play? You have no choice. You have to play Bloody Queen. You have to play a uh, Bon Bon. Uh, but of course, there's always a possibility of him playing a Soul Weaver again. Mm-hmm. He has to end the Prospector. Uh, oh, wait. oh, no bound on the Prospector here. So oh. that allows them to pick it up, but I don't know if they will. I know Silver Chi hasn't brought out a pros. Oh, it's actually ZYJ that has a prospector. Mm-hmm. But seems like they want to just go on uh, first officer here. I don't know. They, they have a priestess involved. They have mm-hmm. uh, also an antiquarian. So I think they're okay on stunners. But having a prospector would have really, I mean, really made the the like the harassment real. But having a first officer, at least they have they kind of have a well-rounded lineup that they have at least one rescuer or a dedicated yeah. rescuer. Exactly. But banning the Gravekeeper now, usually we'll ban the Gravekeeper if it's um if it's Wax Artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, sorry, not Wax Artist. Usually you're afraid of the Gravekeeper if you're um like the breaking wheel, number one, like you dodge it. What else are you afraid of? You're afraid of mm-hmm. what what is that hunter? You're afraid Dream Witch? He could, mm. uh, he's not really known for the dream. Yeah, sure. I know, right? I think mm. I guess he has no choice. He, you know uh, what? Yeah. He could go with disciple too if he wants to. Oh, the disciple, the the cats doesn't, they don't lash onto the gravekeeper when he's under. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so yeah, wax artist. Happened. Yeah, mm. that's true. This was the wax artist that negated the second half of round number five yesterday. So. Him bringing it out now, I think this is his, yeah, do or die hunter now. This is this is him making a stand. It's like, all right, we can't give away too many rounds anymore. This is where it ends here with this wax artist. So let's see. Um, I'm a little concerned though, because they have the, the priestess there. Yeah, priestess can be very annoying. Even though you say, yo, uh, wax artist is not afraid of the priestess that you go through the portals. Uh, your, your, when you get stunned, the wax is gonna splash over the survivors, but it's still a very amazing tool, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, against uh, Hunter, when you want to build mobility, especially when you're on elevations, it helps as well. It buys time. Um, but yeah, we, we'll just have to see how Shama does this. He's done it before in Chinatown mm-hmm. with his West artist. He got a 4K against FPXZQ. But then again, this is Do and not FPXZQ. So mm-hmm. I wonder how the results gonna uh, differ Right. But this is definitely his only uh, bet for a 4K, for a, for an aggressive play in this Yeah, uh, I think he had no other play here. He, he's kind of forced to go Wax Artist again. It's actually a good call, I would have to say, going with the metas here. Um, and he can't. He has to shoot past the tie, or at least a three-man escape, right? A three-man kill. He wants to go for the five-point game, and he can do that here. But um, with the spawn point... It seems like Psychologist is actually the closest one. Yihua right in the middle, just to kind of deter him. And Silver Chi, like, completely across, just so he can give those support portals just in case. But um, depends if they were prepared for this. Let's We have to wait and see how the Persona build is going to be uh, drawn out because uh, you definitely want some flywheels here. Or maybe you can even go Broken Windows if you don't want to stick around the kiting areas because of all the wax. Exactly. Uh, with Flying Wheel, is still good. But the thing is... You usually try to flywheel off the ninety, the hundred percent wax, but mm-hmm. it's almost always very hard. Which is why you can see no one has flywheel. Uh, very smart choice having the broken window. They just want to make distance to cut corners to mm-hmm. break the line of sight of Xiaoma. But Xiaoma has a six, three, wait, three huh. nine, excitement. So excitement. Wow. Mm-hmm. So he's he's sticking with. Oh, he has Trump. Okay, interesting. He has no. He's not oh, accounting for the end game. So yeah. I guess he wants to go through the portals without getting stunned, but again, folks, this is Xiaoma's last stand. Fox Bison, Nello Mello, your commentators for the second half of round number two here. And Xiaoma already uh, looking around, building up that wax. Once he finds a ZYJ, which is possibly one of the best targets for you to farm off of, he's going to stick to it. Yeah, ZYJ has the window to work on, though. He comes in close, ZYJ is going to go through. Uh, if he doesn't, he's just going to keep negating and wait until the, the wax is over. Shama has to be really careful not to let the wax go down. Okay, yeah. so we got a little bit on again, 3%. But look at how well Chinatown is. Like, look, just trying to break line of sight. So that's really very good here. 
Yeah, there's too many corners here. Now they're going to play the pallet mind game. ZYJ can't be out here in the open because the 100% wax is imminent. He's already used the broken oh. windows, but now still uh, forced to break down this pallet. And this allows psychologists to move on away. And oh, oh wow, no. the portal support. My God, but it's still, oh my goodness. He, he can make it through before I silence that. Oh, oh he's just going to go back. He's gonna go for it again, and now Silver Chi has to oh be careful. My God. Silver Chi falls. My goodness, the support happening, but changing targets and downing Silver Chi almost instantly, and now he's gonna camp this cipher, which he was doing. Uh -huh. so, oh my God. So I mean, that was like a blessing in disguise if you think about it, right? Because he was <laughs> having a tough time on the psychologist. Luckily for them, Psychologist still has her stress just so he can actually give First Officer a second chance to rescue. And Psychologist has wanted order, so she cannot go for this rescue. Yihua, the one with the Soul Tide Turner, will have to come in. And we've seen how uh, Wax Artist is so good at just stuffing the rescues here. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay, he got it. But now, nice. Wax? He, oh, he's not gonna wax. He's not gonna risk losing Silver T, especially after he handed himself on the Silver Platter with the support. But now Silver T, one more hit! Oh. It's gonna be full presence. So. Yeah, full presence, wax artist. Cypher is not looking too healthy here on uh, those side. And we're gonna see oh. a corner spawn of the ho hotel. You're unable to get to the complete corner here. So the struggle free is not gonna happen. But Nan, he's already here in the mix. Let's see if he's gonna bait it out. Trying to go for the stick, oh. able to get it. And now continuing on to the disarm here. I don't think Silver T should run away from this place. He should keep going. Uh, yeah, here, he should, right? yeah, he should. Yeah, he could stay here, but my God, the, the tanking of Nan made it possible to rotate away. <gasps> Able oh. to go through the portal here, and now it seems like Nan has uh, Shaoma's attention. Targeted. Silver She, yeah, changing targets. He has the hot wax. He's gonna down the antiquarian. Oh my goodness! I, I'm not sure if I agree with changing targets so much because Same. you know Dobu, yeah, they can just heal up each other. Like now, ZYG can easily go for a, a, a whistle heal, mm -hmm. and Yihua, yeah, wanted order, but it's not like you can do anything much, right? And, um, even if you see that, and that's the thing. Yeah. Because he has no detention for late game too. Yeah, this is going to be a little tough. ZYJ already making his uh, approach towards the rocket chair. Mind you, the Antiquarian still has some stick to work with. And he's going to go for the immediate rescue here. Psychologist. Uh-oh, Hot Wax has been changed already. They cannot afford to fall down here. They got to move a little more and rebound a little more just for Cyphers to be primed. Goes for the swing. The Psychologist still has no... Oh, oh God. Some stress just to keep her alive. Exactly, but now he has to block that cipher, right? But look, oh, oh. portal. Oh wow, yeah, this is gonna it's, be tough. It's really tough. It's not gonna. It's gonna be super tough, honestly. Mm -hmm. And now even if he goes there, oh wait, the teleport straight away. He's not finding anyone. No one's here. Silver Chi actually already made distance. He knew that they were gonna change things up. The heal is about to happen. Silver Chi already sat on the rocket chair once. Antiquarian is healed up and Psychologist will be healed up as well to possibly whistle the first officer. And Silver Chi doing an amazing job continuing this kite now. Yeah, I mean, just an amazing uh, display by the old, just just taking the damages taking the line of sight off of their teammates the the heat of the fire away and even though silver g is on the second chair it's totally fine because like yeah. look two survivors are healed to full i feel like both supports are going to come in antiquarian has a healthy supply of bamboos left definitely right. will be able to ob yeah he can and first officer unfortunately does have that wanted order so he's gonna have to be forced to make this last uh, rescue attempt happen let's see if shama is gonna be able to see and snipe him out it seems like the after image is proven to be uh, oh. troublesome oh. gets the rescue off silver chi tries to oh swing the first officer beautiful body block as well oh. Mm, oh. continues oh. on getting the first <laughs> officer here and now they're gonna play musical chairs here nell last cypher is at above the 60 percent mark i mean this is so hard everyone when the cypher pops everyone is at full health yeah look zyj he, he will gladly take uh yeah. the heal because cypher is gonna be he's already on the at the gate i'm pretty sure he's at the gate ready yeah. for the uh going towards the gate ready to to run towards the gate when cypher pops and silver G has full health to rescue right and, and there's no detention now, my goodness. You have to go for the hot wax trick to get it. Silver Chi making his approach happen already. He knows that uh, they have insolence as well as uh, Trump card. And now Silver Chi is going to play the hot wax trick. 
Boom. Moving away. They know, and they just oh. go for the pop. Silver Chi, can he make it to some terrain to go for a holy key? My goodness. Teleport's up, actually, but he's not going to get any hit here. Even if he gets one hit here, he, he needs two hits. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, he jumps. Yeah. He jumps through, but that's fine. Priestess now can collect some distance. And you saw he looked at the exit gate. He's just going to make a, a, a cut corners here to try and go for the exit. And he's going to make one oh. more rotation around while this exit gate does open up. Nell, it seems like this might be a four-man escape. Oh my goodness, can it be? He's running towards the dungeon. My oh god! Frederick's Oh Four my god! Four-man escape, Nell. Those survivors want that championship up against Xiaoma. And you gotta admit, they faced some adversity in this match, but they were able to rebound and rally back. Oh my goodness, the taste of victory is so close for Dohu right here. Look at them. They're celebrating in the calm. They know they are so close, just one round away from grabbing the championship. Posh, who would have thought 2 old so far in both maps? You know what I think, Mel? I think the bottle service really paid off. I think they also took a sip of what Dong Xuan was uh, drinking there. Imagine that. The survivors of the strongest hunter team was able to four-man escape Shaoma of GG. Exactly. Him on a wax artist. And it kind of begs the question also with the builds he brought. He did bring excitement at the start. It did. He was able to down the priestess at the start. But you really felt the struggle of him not having detention at the late game. Exactly. And whoever believed in Dou right now, you guys have to be rejoicing because mm -hmm. Dong Xuan and and the, the entire survivor team, both factions are doing amazingly well. And I have to say, they might be tasting their first ever yeah. uh, victory as the Koa champions here. It's sweet, so close. Sweet yeah. nectar of the gods could be in the <laughs> midst of Dou and I mean, you got to feel for GG though. Like they tried their best. This is their map selection and they were unable to get the victory on both Hunter Faction and Survivor Faction. So this can be very disheartening, but hey, this is what championship uh, championship grid is made of. Uh, let's see how GG is going to try and bounce back for round number three. But looking at the match data here, folks, Oh man, I, I can't help but feel for how uh, Shaoma is. This was a rough go. And those survivors were just so good, so crafty too, with how well they were able to, um, yeah, just know where to be at certain positions. And they all had time to kite against this wax artist. Yeah, not to mention, this is one of, one of the staple hunters of Shaoma. So it's definitely going to be really, really disheartening for him. It's like, what else can I do? What else can I play to overcome the survivors of Dou And honestly, since yesterday, Dou Wu, uh, after the match uh, against GR, right? Yeah. After G their match against GR, it seems like they they they're possessed or something with Red Bull. I don't know if they drank Red Bull. <laughs> it it's, the like they're... it's the bottle exactly, service. It's the bottle Exactly, exactly. And they've been you... playing so good until today. Can I say this? Remember you mentioned vampires? Vampires. Imagine. Yeah. They beat GR the three-time champ, and okay. I think they got the energy of that, and now they're going to be able to bring it home here and beat another Koa champion. They just need Wolves, and they'll be able to beat all the Koa champions, right? But oh my Wolves God. isn't in the equation, right? So it seems like they're leveling up the power. They're absorbing the power of the teams they've beaten. Oh, yes. I can see that now. Absorbing the essence of the champions one after the other. It's like, you know, the power-up. Every time they absorb a champion, they power up, and now... With the final boss, GG is the only one standing in their way uh, towards mm -hmm. grabbing the championship. Yeah. And I, I have to say, it's they're they're on fire. They they're are. on fire today. Dare I say they're playing a perfect game here? No, this exactly. is I might have jinxed it. I don't know if I, that is, but like they're just doing so I well. Don't, I don't yeah. think you can say anything to jinx them so far. <laughs> they're, they're just they're 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 just very op at this moment mm -hmm. um but honestly i feel okay let's let's uh, take a little a step back and think mm -hmm. um what can gg do in the next game because it's gonna be mm -hmm. those map yeah Let, if, if we consider that after this break uh we'll just see you guys in round number three and we'll talk more about it
Hashtag Koa6 Global Support. Come on, Dowu. Hope you can win once again if you guys want your voice to be heard. And also add in the hashtag XOXO. I think it's powering up Dowu. They are going to get it. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of Dowu fan chants. I hope we're able to see the next one for GG now because they need it now more than ever. I think I think she looks very familiar. But oh, this is also another guy who looks very familiar. GG will be the champion. Win the Koa 6. Leave no regrets. And Posh, I, I have to say he looks very familiar because I think he's the one who sung uh, the song Happy Birthday no. <laughs> to you. keep getting me with there. I was like, Happy really? Birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to Posh Spice. Oh my god, I sound so bad. I know. But... No, I, I, I appreciate it. No, it's really sweet. Thank you again, <laughs> chat. And thank you again also Eli and Veron uh, sorry, Veronica also did give me and Chocho. Uh, thank you for singing. I mean, you got Eli to sing. That's just the one of the best birthday gifts you could get. I know he sings. Yeah. Off. I mean, he did play guitar actually. He's was actually he? really good. He... Yeah. Was he singing or was he rapping though? Happy uh, birthday. That's Chocho rapping. Oh, 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 Chocho was rapping. Chocho oh, raps, God. guys. She's a rap oh. god. Mm -hmm. Rap god, and she doesn't even know Eminem. But okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Posh. What are we expecting next? Are we in? Are we... Hello? Oh, oh, oh my god! I thought I was frozen! But no! Posh, where are you? Oh, come back, Posh! You still have to cast with me! <laughs> but honestly, guys, this has been such a fun koa because of you guys. Uh, Posh closing his eyes. He's hibernating for a moment. He's, he's, he's brought into a trance of birthday... Uh, celebration so let's just give him his time moment for a while but guys thank you so much for being here welcome back from the trance bro. that was yeah i got trans dude that was i feel like a, a jigglypuff thing that was just like oh nell's singing that's so odd so i, I have no idea what happened there my bad my bad folks that was my bad <laughs> crystal say happy birthday to posh mm -hmm. happy birthday Hello, Ooh. my goodness. I I was I was moving. You're moving, but I was I was not moving in the screen. So I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not <laughs> sure what came over my connection, but that was all me. I'll take that. That's my bad. So no, okay. as I, I it ha happened, we were talking about. Hey, what happens if we both freeze? <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. We both got hit by the wax. Exactly. Wax artist took us mm -hmm. by surprise. Like Shomas, what wax was just so good that it it hit us <laughs> on screen so uh, i don't know me. it hit me it you're you're fine i believe well yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> fine yeah. Yeah, i was like no oh, am i am i okay bro mm -hmm. am i okay but honestly mm -hmm. glad to have you back we were talking about you on you were on oh, trend I, no, what's weird was i was actually listening to everything you were saying like i feel like i was kind of left in limbo where i could hear like help i'm frozen but yeah i don't think you could hear me but uh can you hear me now though i'm, I'm okay, okay now yeah, okay thank god thank god i thought i was yeah, yeah. i was banished into the yeah. what's that the shadow realm there yeah. yeah you were you were watching frozen yeah mm -hmm. so i'm frozen <laughs> like elsa but the oh love god. the love hey. got me going let's go let's go and speaking of which the fans as well look at them cheering on and i think we should be cheering on as well gg's definitely not out of this yet Dou does have an advantage of 2-0 mm -hmm. i think for those who we should keep supporting both teams um please do spam more pandas because they 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 need the hugs of the pandas to power up yeah, yeah. they need it now more than ever folks this uh this is a tough call no this is not uh good for gg and uh just the way that Dou has been performing it's like what can you do they seem like a juggernaut of a team right now yeah i mean juggernaut Slipper gang, whatever. Uh, anti, anti slipper gang, whatever. Anti slipper, slipper gang. They got exactly. the, they got the boots. They got what's, yeah. what's what's the opposite of a slipper? Opposite of a slipper is chicken feet. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Bare feet. Bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. My singing wasn't that good. Uh, and yeah, I, I see you guys in the chat as well. Yep, mm -hmm. everyone. Wishing you happy birthday as Thank well. Thank you guys. And I apologize. I was frozen. They were like, oh my god, Poch, where are you? I was banned to the Shadow Realm, guys. My bad. I think I think Dong Shuan was like, no, ban out the Survivor Poch. So let's not, <laughs> let's not keep him in this intro. But I want to give shout outs to each and every one of you. I see Erica. I see Drew. I see Chantel. I see Jochi Mochi. I see Ali. I see Chad Likes Pasta, Mani, Salty Bee, Princess Pasta, Chopstick, Bubble Milk. 
uh, Blanche, just everyone. Big shout outs. It's moving by so fast. So I hope I don't freeze anymore. Yeah, you definitely won't freeze. And Javi, Crystal for Cola 7 commentator. Uh, I'll, I'll have to teach her English. <laughs> uh, yeah, she'll, she'll probably, uh, yeah, she'll probably learn very fast after getting more treats. But yeah, um, just back to the game itself. Again, pandas for GG. They need the hugs. I mean, come on, Do already has the bottle service powering them up. Uh, GG definitely needs the panda to squeeze them to you know, to power up as well. And mm -hmm. they need more than ever, guys. Yeah, they do. So can we get some panda emojis in the chat? And what's, what's, we have to also say, cause there are a lot of Dou supporters. Uh, what's, what's the, what's the emoji for Dou? Whoa, is it lightning? Oh, what's the, what's the TV thing that they have? Uh, I think it's TikTok, but. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but what's the, what's the TikTok emoji though? Oh, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why, that's why it's Dou, eh? Dou wing. Mm -hmm. Doing? Yeah. Doing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in English, it's TikTok, and in Chinese, yeah. it's Douyin. Douyin. Do yeah. Do you do TikToks? Do you do TikToks? I try, but I don't post them. I try to learn uh, the dances. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do, I'll do a TikTok for you later. Oh yeah. Later? Yeah. Oh god. I'm gonna freeze. Yeah. I think. I don't know. <laughs> I might oh my god. In mid TikTok. What TikTok are we doing later? Uh, we we can do the flower TikTok. Oh yeah, you, you can do that with you actually could you know the the flower TikTok with your pet like you oh, really? uh, yeah you do oh. the hand motion but then it's like on top of Crystal's head so it's like oh cute. yeah yeah that's right that's right unfortunately I never do uh, any dances that's mm -hmm. kind of sad because you know not yet offline yeah, let's, this, do yeah, some, offline. let's do some some yeah. TikTok trends and dances exactly. but for yeah. all of you guys though but for mm -hmm. all of you guys uh who are unaware tonight we are gonna be celebrating posh birthday <laughs> with an among us games of course Ooh. you're welcome more than welcome to come and join or if you just want to come and hang out and watch the game totally fine but please don't tell mm. <laughs> anyone who's the imposter help me out um, help me out <laughs> <laughs> but what you can also do is direct your eyes to the screen we got zt on screen ladies and gentlemen mx chanting yeah. with the fan the fan lights but if you do want to join us there again go to the nello mellow discord yeah. Oh, yeah. Kira's there. One of the best IDB cosplayers of Southeast Asia. Shout out to Kira. That's exactly. in Japan now. Ooh. But yeah, follow the Nello Mello Discord if you want to check out the... the well, our casters will be there too. And we'll kind of talk about uh, the games and whatnot and kind of decompress because <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of days, right? With the group stage <laughs> and now playoffs. Oh my god, the production has actually I know, been shot I know. your frozen I, face. And I think like, everyone has. Uh, oh no. I, I'm, I'm glad I was in the The birthday song. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm just glad that we. I, I, I know a lot of people, some of you guys, right? Uh, just a little bit of, you know, a mini TED talk. Like mm -hmm. a lot of, some people are saying, yo, um, you gotta be professional on. Uh, a screen or why are they being so goofy cringe but honestly <laughs> we're just here to have fun like, i i yes. mean um we're here to have fun we're here to entertain mm -hmm. uh some of you guys might prefer uh, uh analytical uh commentary um some of you prefer lighthearted that's why we have the variety of casters right yes to cater yes. for everyone variety of casting in and also we just want to Make it as entertaining as possible. And also, you know, we have time for like on social media to kind of dissect things, right? But in the midst of this, the tense situations, we can't help but also just, you know, kind of lighten the mood, especially for the survivors. Since we're heading to Leo's memory now, it seems like Do Wu wants to end things here and now. On a map, I would say that Dong Shuan has performed admirably in. And mm. starting with the bands of the forward, the prospector and the seer, uh, this is going to be a tough one to recover from for GG. So let's see what they have in store for Dou. I mean, Dou's, this is Dou's map, right? Mm -hmm. It is really, really brave. I, I guess I wouldn't say it's brave. I guess there's no choice but to let the survivors come out first. Mm -hmm. uh, to face uh, the hunter of Dou. Because Shama, obviously, I feel after the four escape last game, it mm -hmm. might be a little hard. Uh, he probably needs a little bit more time to strategize and recover. Mm -hmm. um, but GG survivors are going to place themselves in the line of fire of Mr. President. And uh -oh. I mean, I don't know, man. I think you shouldn't be bringing slippers anymore. You, you got to start bringing your hangers, <laughs> your, your boots. And, you know, you, you'd be like, I'll send you to Jesus. <laughs> I give yeah, you well, 
it, it seems like though, yeah, slippers have no effect on them. Yeah. And they need something a little more with heavy duty, like this bamboo flute. Exactly. So let's see if uh, Antiquarian uh, is going to help in the mix here. Batting out the Dream Witch, batting out the the Ann again. These are the 3k hunters that Dongchun has. But mind you, he still has the evil Reptilian. He still has the, the, the Geisha. So this is still um up in the air and he's also already banning out the entomologist so that can open up the geisha pick so let's see how gg is going to respond accordingly here yeah i mean i'm just gonna share the discord links for, for it. To watch uh the the among us stream for birthday tonight <laughs> so yeah again Where it's is... also like a caster hangout thing and also if you guys have like questions for eli and yeah you know just so sure. we can get to know the audience better so please do check out that link we are going to talk about this dancer now to be picked by 18. Yeah, dancer, antiquarian, those are very, uh, survivors that can definitely give headaches to the hunter. I mean, Doshin, uh, in Leo's memory, right? He still has Lucino. He still has Lucino here, Posh. Okay, uh, so obviously Posh has been brought to the Shadow Realm again. Uh, my singing obviously threw him off into a sleeping trance. So let's wait for him a little bit. So I'll entertain you guys for now. Looks like the the harass squad is back in. Antiquarian plus coordinator combo. This is what we're talking about. The securing the uh, almost perfect guaranteed rescue. I, I like this composition. I like this composition going in uh, against whatever Dongshin might bring. Might be a Nayad might be a bloody queen might be a geisha uh all this is kind of uh it kind of covers all bases so i really like this and let's see what Dongshan will be bringing to the table uh mm -hmm. because whatever he wants um it's gonna be hard like bloody queen at least he negates the female dancers boxes right yeah uh, but against the gun probably not <laughs> <laughs> that's true am i back am i back from the shadow realm Keep uh, you are, you are. You're, okay, you're, thank you're, God. Uh, uh, it's okay. That's so we. I have no idea what's going on. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Again, <laughs> let's just get through this because this is the finals. We got to give it justice. And as Nell was saying, it's it's still up in the air. It's just it's it's so crazy how Dongchuan has so much to offer when it comes to hunter variety, and it's really up to him because he's kind of he's done in the work already to be able to uh choose which how he's going to dictate this dance and it seems like we're going with his patented geisha here this is a hunter he's definitely put on the map and he has gotten 4k in this map with the geisha before oh my god the massage going on it's over guys it's over it's over he massaged him okay all right massage it's over gear four <laughs> gear five that's that's it that's it uh, i <laughs> Doomsday device activated. It's done. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, jokes aside, though, mm -hmm. uh, I, I really love the relationship they have. Like, usually people get together just to win competitions. They don't They don't necessarily need to have strong bonds, right? Uh, they probably get together just to practice and whatnot. But here we can see even the manager has a, a working, not only a working relationship, but a caring as well towards mm -hmm. his players. And we love to see that. That, that helps in your moral uh, moral boost. It helps in your uh, esteem boost as well. It helps in being more comfortable. And I feel like having those kind of supports are really important as well, indirectly contributing to the amazing gameplay of Mr. President right here. Mm -hmm. So Mr. President gonna be spawning right outside uh, the shack area, right in the uh, uh, between shack and the the factory area. Kuchao gonna set up some boxes out there. PPZ gonna possibly get some support from uh, give some support to 18 here while PPZ all the way out in the open. I'm, I'm I wonder now what Dongshuan will be bringing to the table because Dongshuan was the one that kind of popularized the very aggressive uh, uh, abnormal geisha. So in this map. I don't know. He could definitely bring out excitement. He could bring out other traits too. So we're just going to wait and see. Yeah, we're just going to wait and see. Meanwhile, I just would like to extend a welcome. Welcome to the Nello Mello server. Haiku, Kilari. Um, let's go. Let's go in the NERP. And then B86, and then Mugen, and then Hifu, Mifan07. Uh, Shouts to you guys. Amanon, Sherry. CL Phantom Hive, Wind Up, DRG, Bun Bun, Rila Ken, Off the Mind's Eye, Silver Kami, a Chinese name, Woman IVR, Oof, it's Magne, 
Black Phoenix. Black <sighs> Phoenix in the server. And also we got Excitement Geisha. You also got me, Potch Spice, and Nello Mello <laughs> for this match. We're gonna get more shout outs later, but it seems like he's gonna go straight for 18. Early find here, Nell, in the first 10 seconds, but this is 18 who is on that psychologist. So gonna take a couple of uh, hits to downer. Exactly. And he doesn't mind taking one hit. Uh, he still has two hits to run on. Um, well, 18's not on his usual thief, uh, harassing yeah. character. So, but she's an amazing kaita nonetheless. PPZ, oh! Wait. <laughs> that was a jump scare that Dongshan did not want to take. He's going to be able to throw the butterfly to close out this distance. Is the Antiquarian going to come oh, in with the support? Able to get it. Excitement's ready, though. Oh my god, he he's just waiting. If PPT goes for the goes for the window after stunning, he's gonna activate the excitement. Terror shock for sure. But look at the discipline of GG PPZ, uh the survivor. He's just okay. Oh in the wow. butterfly dash. Look at that, just setting up a butterfly dash, breaking the pallet here. He's already able to get a little bit of presence here and not revealing yet his excitement, Ooh. but now able to get a pallet stun here. 18 going so to long. the next pallet. Yeah, it was so yeah. long. You got to feel for Geisha pallet stuns. Exactly, exactly. Geisha, oh my god, please stop giving the mukbang to Geisha. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Dong X is doing pretty good so far. Uh, mm -hmm. One pallet does not break a man. Oh, missing it here. But the butterfly, he's gonna skill check. Is he gonna skill check here? Yeah. Ooh, okay, so this is a great start for GG. Oh, skill checking him. Goes for the long range hit, able to get it on the psychologist. And now two ciphers have already popped. Kuchao in the mix here. His signature coordinator will be coming in, but the excitement is going to be here. Oh no, the dancer actually. So dancer dropping oh. the music boxes, buying so much time for the survivors now. Exactly. We saw how long the music box took. Oh my God, the beautiful wow. magic hitbox. Magical hitbox indeed. Dong Shuen able to get the hit onto the psychologist here without wasting any more time. He can work on just getting a solid tie here. Three ciphers still remain and two are about to be popped. My goodness, indeed. This is why I'm so afraid of Geisha's magical hitbox. Like, yo, it's supposed the, the dancer was supposed to be able to body block, but because of that one hit, they're gonna go down fairly faster than expected. But very respectable cypher progress first person down three cyphers have been done but mm -hmm. honestly psychologist was able to take three hits and he antiquarian was. hang one hit for him so okay here yeah. we go he's gonna go for oh, the excitement fuck. look at that not wasting any time unable to get the butterfly he has another one though 18 is gonna hide behind this pedal able to what? get it now are you serious i i I'm not serious, but Dongshan seems very serious in this hitbox. Oh, just no. unbelievable, and he's very serious about this balance stun oh to us, God. but Psychologist. I mean, that buys a little bit of time, but it doesn't change the fact that the Psychologist is going to sit on the rocket chair again. That was an unbelievable hit on the Psychologist. My goodness, this is called the the hitbox magnet. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but Kuchao, he's going to give the free hit. Forcing. <laughs> oh, it's not even prime just yet, so a little aggressive there. But able oh, to get yeah, yeah. 18 uh, out the rocket chair. But yeah, this might not prove to be uh, as good because everyone is kind of injured. 18's on his last uh, rocket chair. He's going to try to find a, a way for him to throw this butterfly without any skill oh. checks. Dong Shuen. Can he get one through? Gets one through the pallet. Does he know that 18's here though? Oh my goodness. And that wall dash beautifully done. And mind you, this wall dash can only be done because he's at full presence. So he's able to dash fast enough to avoid skill check canceling. So PP Shia, probably going to take that hit. Is he? Is he going to oh. take that hit? Oh, he's going to break the pallet. Yeah, and now the Cypher is uh, about to be primed. Like 18, 18 is actually going to be using his uh, his distance accordingly. And it seems like 18, can he tank the hit? Oh my goodness, he's sandwiched here. They're going to go for that pop. Oh, They're able to get it. Oh, and the beat up, the slipper hit, slipper smack, left, right, front. This is the Asian parent in advanced PPZ, the Asian guardian of anti Korean. My goodness, Dong Shen has excitement though, but is he gonna hit the tennis? Oh. oh my goodness, unable to get it. He's holding on to this excitement and he's not able to do it. It seems like a 1K would be the best for Dong Shen and the exit gates are opening left and right. He's gonna try and actually go a little more aggressive here now. Yeah, if he doesn't teleport here, it might be already too late, but Dong Shen, uh, I think he's done the best that he can here. Um, and honestly, yeah, getting a 1K is not too bad. At least it wasn't a four, four escape. That would have been devastating and pretty much unheard of. So 
Good job putting <laughs> getting 1k at least. Again, yeah. GG. Uh, getting the 1k is still pretty good. Uh, Nell, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a little responsible here, kind of jinxing them at this point, but... Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Blame the, my connection, my bad. So, but GG, able to provide this three-man escape could be the start of a turning of the tides, if you would, because this allows Shauma to just get a tie and they immediately win the third round. So it's still not over yet for GG. They are fighting back here and fighting back with an amazing fashion. Yeah, I mean, that was just amazing what happened just now. Um, honestly, the the butterfly, the beautiful the beautiful butterfly dashes was just on point. The wall dashes was just on point. It's just very unfortunate that Geisha is still a single hit hunter. Mm -hmm. so, uh, when he does not have excitement, that's when the harassing by PPZ happened. And obviously, he was more than happy to take the fall as long as the three teammates are able to run away. And realistically, from round one until round three, I wouldn't blame you when you said you jinxed it. Oh, we jinxed yeah, right. it. I because, jinxed it. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time they got a three-man escape. So, pretty good start for GG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and up against Dongshuan's Geisha, right? This is his go-to. This is his one to really test things out. It makes me question, though, like, with, they really played to their strengths there. The coordinator was there. They really forced him to bring that excitement, which kind of uh, helped them kite it out and really play to the butterflies. So yeah, it's a three to one in favor of GG, and this could be the start of something for GG, something great. Shauma just needs to be able to, you know what? He's been given a layup. He just needs to be able to set the goals uh, or set a tie standard for them to be able to push for that round number four win and that ultimately a round number five win. So it's far from over, folks. Exactly. If this is the comeback that we are looking for, GG definitely is looking the part now they're definitely gearing up towards the comeback and it started with the three-man escape by gg survivors against dong mm -hmm. so honestly this is the best possible situation they have created for shelma in this second half no right. doubt no doubt this is the map that uh Do Wu chose mm -hmm. and honestly I, I would say shelma has a really big chance to get a draw here he has the oh gonna let's just look at the yeah <laughs> that's so, your yeah. yeah, before we get into the detail here again, the only way Dou's going to win here and just cut off round three and four, the championship rounds, if they get a four-man escape. But if they do a three-person escape, two-person escape, one-person escape, or is below four-person escape, we are going to see a round number four. So like you said, you know, Shalma has an easy layup here. You want to break down how he's supposed to get this now? Um, well, honestly, he just needs to get a four. Uh, if they can get a four-man escape, they win. So here, Shama has so many characters he can do to avoid that, to prevent that. He can go for BQ. He can go for, uh, he can go for Geisha. Uh, wait a minute, scrap Geisha, <laughs> scrap Geisha. <laughs> B BQ Geisha wax leg side. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. BQ wax artist uh, Soul Weaver if he wants to. Uh, he can go for, uh, yeah, the disciple as well. He can go for X Boy. There's just so many things Dou has to ban. But I feel like, um, I think they might not ban x-boy mm -hmm. because x-boy is not sort of like a tie hunter it's more like a like a really scary uh, go big or go home kind of hunter yeah. a potential 4k so maybe they want to ban the um wait they want to ban yeah they probably want to ban the 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 safe hunters and force him to play high risk because we've seen um we've seen x-boy plays as well mm -hmm. uh fail it's not a yes. guaranteed win right uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Superish is already the best, best example of that. So yeah. here, Shoma, he can play all of these characters. But honestly, I feel like he shouldn't go greedy. Even a Disciple would probably be able to seal the deal with a 2k here, going into the next half. Yeah, I agree, because uh, comparing the Axe Boy of Superish, I think it was more of he put ACT in a tough spot. Mm. Though still holding the cards here. They can play exactly. passively and just go for the tie and just negate any point differential. They can give this round, that's fine. Uh, I think, yeah, Shaoma just needs to be a, have a balance of being aggressive at the same time just securing that tied game because uh, the, the way that um, GG was able to kind of uh, put the fear of God into uh, Dong Shuen was force excitement out of him. So Shaoma works best when she's playing very aggressive. So I think they need to find a... Well, Shaoma needs to find a way to bring that aggression out and bring it out here and now because, Nell, it's super mm -hmm. important for that to happen because... This mm -hmm. technically is the last stand. If if the same performance in round number two happens now, 
Dou are, are your champions, so he needs to exactly. stop that, prevent that from happening at this point in time. Technically, technically, right? If we think about it logically, it's mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to get a four man escape in a lot of the situations. Right. But because GG has done it, <laughs> this it's is so true. scary for Shelma. Honestly, yeah. he, he's already got the he's already mm -hmm. experienced uh, the shock of getting four K in the previous game uh, on his wax artist. So in Leo's memory. I'm not sure if he really wants to go for Wax Artist again. And honestly, aiming for 1k is a really, really low target that yeah. he should get. Mm. I, that's the thing, right? He's going to set a low target and he's not unable to get it. I feel like he should try to aim for more. And mm -hmm. you'd think that the Wax Artist was going to do that, but he brought out uh, Excitement, uh, Trump Card, and Insolence. Was it Insolence? Yeah, he didn't have Detention, right? Yeah, so no it tension. was, yeah, he really put, gambled all on aggressive start, didn't quite pan out. Uh, and and that's the thing. It's like he, once he has that aggressive start, it's supposed to be a good uh, a good uh, game for him. But mm -hmm. though being kind of uh, yeah a step ahead, I just think that um, he still needs to be on that same path and find that same confidence. The thing is, how is his mental capacity coming into it though? Yeah, I mean, I think at this moment he needs a shock. He needs a shock therapy. <laughs> and you know what comes to mind? Courtesy of chopsticks in the mm -hmm. chat. Coach, mm -hmm. please give Shelma a massage too. That's a therapy mm -hmm. going on. Or mm -hmm. slap him with a slipper. <laughs> wake up, bro. <laughs> you know, you know, like slapping yourself to, yeah. to hype wake, yourself up. Wake up, wake up. Yeah, wait, wake yeah, up, wake just... up. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him with a, 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 a slipper on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. Exactly. Because, I mean, whatever whatever gets you the victory, right? That's something that uh, you can do. And he yeah. needs to do whatever he can. I, I wouldn't even blame him while he's taking this long because it's a super important pick. But exactly. we're going to head towards the stage here just to look at some of the audience members here, Nil. So, mm -hmm. again, a lot is riding on this next game for GG fans out there. And Do Wu want to have an emphatic victory here and put their names on the on the pedestal there with the rest of the legendary teams that claim yeah. Koa glory. Yeah, just look just look at just look at Do and look at the flag bearers. They're just waiting, right? They're just waiting to run with the flags, you know, and like just celebrate. Uh each side is just waiting to celebrate on behalf of their favorite teams. Um you can also see fans saying, yo, come back, Shelma. And that's definitely what he he needs. Guys, besides the massage, besides the slippers. Let's let's throw in panda emojis to support him as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he really needs it. <laughs> Definitely needs the panda emojis. Maybe even a slipper emoji just to wake him up. Slipper like you emoji, said, the yeah. shock therapy. Actually, you know what? I thought you were leading up to a hermit because shock therapy with oh. I was like, oh, hermit. But I was about to say he needs a birthday song. <laughs> You catch me off guard with this. If you say that, I'm gonna start freezing again. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, oh, my no, connection, okay, I'm okay. still okay. I'm still okay, right? Like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. let's keep here. Yeah, you're okay. still here. All right. <laughs> Apologies again, folks. I don't know. There's something in the air tonight that just gets me all nervous. That gets my circuits fried and also my, my connection, I guess. But yeah, apologies again. I'm here till the end. If I'm not, I'm with you in spirit. No. If, if I do wow. end up kind of banished again to the shadow realm, but sounds like um, the old father, bro. <laughs> oh, we gotta follow the all fathers. If we, the, um, you one piece of advice, father. folks: listen to the ancestors. Listen to the all fathers. <laughs> yeah, the voice echoing. Mm -hmm. KFC is better. KFC is better than Phoenix. Chicken better than Phoenix. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, man. Guys, sorry, we're being so silly here, but mm -hmm. again, it's a, it's a, it's an annual event. We're here to celebrate our differences. We're here to enjoy the moments, celebrate the glorious moments. We want to share our moments here with everyone and celebrate with the players that are so far away with us, but so near with us here online. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I look at the slipper the gang. Slipper, the slipper gang, guys. Look at that. The slides. They need to wake up and wake up here and now. So, folks, do give the panda emojis or the slipper emojis. Yeah. yeah they need, they need yeah. That's what it means. Oh my goodness, I did not know that. I I, I don't know too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but honestly, yeah, Shama, take take all the time you need, man. Mm -hmm. Take all the time you need. And GG, it's a very important match. Again, it might seem like the easiest criteria ever. Get a two K, win mm -hmm. this round, build it up from here. But a fork, a fork yes. escape. So yeah. it happened once. It might happen again. That's the mentality, mm -hmm. psychologically, psychological pressure that Shelma's facing now. Yeah, it is. 
K is asking questions. How many Koas have Dowu participated in? Uh, I believe the formation of Dowu happened during IVL. So if that's correct, it's Koa 4 onwards. And oh. Koa 4, that's when Dong Xuan's name was there. Um, and that's when Koa 4 was after when IVL was birthed after Koa 3. So that's when they really, Dong Xuan was starting to get on the map and other teams as well. So again, mm. we're celebrating. It is, no, this is a has very historic moment, right? Because one team could either be a double Koa champion or the other could be the new Koa champion. So regardless, uh, it, it doesn't discredit how amazing they've performed and how much hard work they've put on the table here. So uh, getting hit by the, the drums here and yeah. also the, the fan signs. You know what? I'd be surprised if they screen cap one of us. I don't know if my sleepy face is going to end up in like... <laughs> the... <laughs> be like, hey, remember this? One of the really cast of the fell asleep on a game while watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, in that case, uh, in Core 7, you can expect the name Sleepy Spice. <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy Spice. I don't know if that's <laughs> harsh. I'll be, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be like Chocho. If ever people see Chocho offline, they give her apples because she doesn't have any more apples anymore. <laughs> so they're going to give me a pillow or something because I'm sleeping? Oh, no. Yeah, oh my God. I would appreciate a really good pillow, too, uh, honestly. Um, and what's your favorite brand? Like, I like Muji a lot. Uji uh, pillows are dope. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, yeah. It's kind of expensive though, but it, it's pretty comfortable. And, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, hey, we went to that Muji store, man. We were like, remember that yeah. pillow that we got during oh, the IBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a That's very really comfortable cool. pillow. It is, it is. It was one million baht though. And was it one million baht? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, I don't know. It, yeah, but you were able to get did, did you get like two or like one? You just got. I remember. I just got one. I, just got one. I remember yeah. you bought it and then we were going to meet up again and you're still holding on to the pillow. Yeah, it was just so comfortable. Oh, look at that. Meow Pai, we got Ooh. cheering again. Why is he covering his face? <laughs> Ooh, covering MX's face. Yeah, he's like, yo, you can't see me. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Uh, oh, guys, if you can follow Zero Two on socials, I'm pretty sure exactly. they'd appreciate that. It's on IG, it's, I think Zero Two IDV. Exactly. So you see all of their uh, escapades in Japan. And also follow Kira as well, one of the best cosplayers of IDV out there. Yeah, Kira hailing from Singapore. Uh, very, very, very dedicated cosplayer she did she did our iva cosplayer yes uh, cover. gardener mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gardener also a psych psychologist uh yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm trying to recall again what other cause she's done a lot of cosplays mm -hmm. but well we are going to the big band picks now uh we put that aside first uh it seems like do has the final hurdle uh, against xiao ma the slipper boss um which is yeah, obviously he just needs a 2k uh, mm -hmm. in order to win this round and move on to game four. But anything, anything more, actually not more. If 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 no gets a four man escape, I feel like they are so ambitious. They might even try it this game. They could. They they can afford that because the the point differential is a lot in round one and two. So mm -hmm. if they have if they seize the opportunity now, why not? Right? Instead of kind of playing towards just a, a passive tie. Uh, but Shaoma banning out the patient, dancer, mechanic. I mean, I, I feel like he, he's really gearing towards at least negating any type potential and hoping that Dou would kind of overextend and make a couple of errors here and there for him to capitalize and hopefully um, come back from the five point differential. I'm, I'm really surprised Dou banned Geisha. I mean, you saw. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Okay, okay. Apart from his personal geisha experience, mm -hmm. uh, which didn't end very well uh, the last time he used it, mm -hmm. you saw Dong Shen struggled with it a little as well, and his dashes were really good. Yeah, he struggled with it uh, with with a geisha. He only got a one k mm -hmm. here, and considering it's Xiaoma using it as well, it's kind of it's kind of sus that they banned geisha instead of like maybe something more uh, something scarier like yeah. a, a, a bon bon. Or... Yeah, Bon Bon could be there. His Anne as well. Uh, but yeah, that makes sense because um, Geishas have not been admirable as of late. So for them to be banning them out, and after we've done the homework of uh, seeing the lakeside uh, Geisha of Shaoma, uh, it was actually a little tough for um, Shaoma to actually recuperate from that. So interesting that the Geisha was actually um, banned. I guess it's more of just the respect. And it seems like Dou kind of playing towards safely for the tie. And we have a picture of Dong Xuan crying, getting his first IVL championship. 
I don't know, guys. Do you have any predictions if he's going to cry on stage if he wins this? This is going to be, I'm pretty sure, a heartfelt moment. I'm For any of the teams to raise the Koa trophy, it's going to be a huge accomplishment, right? So, it seems like those survivors are content with this, albeit uh, sort of passive lineup. They only have one stunner, but, you know, Embalmer in a big map like this can prove to be a little tough to deal with. Uh, and ZYJ being one of the best kiters here on this embalmer is actually really good. Uh, just so that he will be taking that first chase and it would be a little tough for him to recover from. But you still have the psychologist just to give the rebound rescue for the mercenary. And of course, Silver to you with the antiquarian. So it seems like Shaoma mm. has his hands full here. Baleki called out. No, he has a bonbon. He has his and to use. He could bring out wax art i mean not really wax artist but he just has a lot of choices here and he only has one harasser to worry about which is the antiquarian yeah i mean here it's very it's it's a very good choice to have embalmer because if he goes for disciple mm -hmm. yeah it, I, I think that's the only choice he has he's not gonna go for wax artist again mm -hmm. um after what happened last round um the thing is there's an embalmer here and what happens is what is shama gonna bring is he gonna go with the exact same build as uh, Doshan, 3, mm -hmm. 6, 12. 3, 6, fast break, pallet breaking with right. bling. Because if he does that, he might be able to catch up, yes. But with the embalmer in play, it's going to be so much harder because the coffin. The coffin's always going to be a pivotal moment. They're going right. to position ZYJ right in front of... Um, They're going to position either ZYJ or Psychologist to bait Shama to chase first. And that's going to be very time consuming already. Right. If, yeah. If he changes target, it's gonna waste even more time. So I feel like it's uh, mm -hmm. might not be as easy uh, to get a draw uh, by picking N in this game. Yeah, and, and considering how the last round went, right? Do Wu has, I don't know, they were able to make Shaoma twitch targets constantly, right? Just when we thought it was actually good, a little over support, it didn't work out in the end. So he has to focus on just uh, one, even though it's gonna be a little time consuming, like the bare minimum is just to get a 1K. And, and that's just the bare minimum. Like you want to shoot for more than that because you have to get more points in the future in round number four and five in the championship round. So we're going to see the spawn locations here again. No questions asked here with ZYJ spawn. They're going to give him that factory. They're going to give Nan, the psychologist, the shack area, Silver Chi in the middle just to provide that support at the middle area. Uh, Shaoma is definitely going to make a beeline towards that embalmer. But like you said, no, could be a little tough if he's able to create so much distance away from him in the coffin. Yeah. But the saving grace for Shama is at least there's not a lot of um, harassers here. There's yeah, only Antiquarian. Right. And you've seen how well people play against uh, Antiquarian when they're on Disciple. Mm -hmm. They they stun first, they silence, or they hit. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Antiquarian, like very good Antiquarians, they, they usually hit and then walk into the stun themselves. But mm -hmm. here, uh, Antiquarian can, can go back and forth so I guess it's pretty good. He can still deal with the Antiquarian if he wants to. And bring Insolence will help him get the cross, the cross, um, the first presence, the cross unlock earlier. So they can mm -hmm. position himself to either uh, let the cat lash on on survivors mm -hmm. or leap to catch up. Yeah, and that's super important. And what's super important is announcing that this is number three, second Ooh. half here. We have uh, Poch Spice and Nello Mello on the mic, and you see that Embalmer already making his way towards the two-storied area. Let's see if Anne's going to commit. It doesn't seem like he's going to try and chase out this Embalmer, or at least baiting him out uh, to go down, and he'll chase him once he land or once he's outside in the open. But it seems like he's already at the shack area, and he's going to try to latch on to Anne. Oh, sorry, yeah. to Nan. Yeah, and and then going hand in hand. <laughs> oh, but look it, at you, accidental bars. Okay. Yeah, she she has um, broken windows, so it's gonna buy a, a little bit of time. But that's the thing. He he goes for the psychologist as expected. One of the two targets that's pretty good to chase uh, in this area as well. But she does have three hits. That's the thing. Right. And uh, I'm I I have the stun onto you. It's fine. But I'm gonna be able to rotate into the factory. And that's where Anne might not have such a good time. But since Shama has a blink ready right about now, he'll be able to catch up pretty fast. All right, goes for the blink. Second hit is able to connect. And Psychologist now uh, has to use that speed boost just to move on away. And it actually chases out ZYJ from the factory, which he was definitely working on something here. He's going to have to be forced to break down the pallet again fast. Uh, the, the pallet breaking speed is definitely on, ZY, on Anne's oh, side. Oh, beautiful. And now Nan. 
Uh-oh, able to get a jump too, so now Nan has to be very careful here. Yeah, I mean, it's totally fine because the stress has just expired, but CYJ is also in the in the vicinity. Yeah, he's he had to get that cat, but now he's he's hoping that Nan can make this kite happen. We're going to see just the pallet mind games, but look at that, a backdoor pallet slam now. Yeah, he didn't notice that ZYJ was there and that play could have definitely happened. Another leap is going to seal the deal here. Oh, he misses. Wow. Oh, he's going to put so much time for the Wu here. Creates a lot of separation, but Nan unable to move on to the best kiting spot. It's going to eat that hit. Buys enough time for three ciphers now. Yeah, I mean, Shelma is on is actually having a really good start here i mean three ciphers have been done um but it, it's gearing up towards a draw here if nothing goes wrong um he manages to tunnel into uh, into nan late game get a hit onto uh, antiquarian or um, um or mercenary he, he'll be able to draw this game for sure so right now he's already gotten two survivors down oh and the, that was so fast oh and the stun oh my god the double down is gonna happen Posh, oh my goodness, and that's exactly why you have to fear the camping of the cross. Nan, I mean, it's very obvious. You go with the cross, you, you stun both, you hit the, the, the mercenary, and a beautiful zigzag jump as well. My goodness. Wow. He's catching up to Nan right this instant, but the coffin's there, Posh. Oh, coffin is going to happen, and now this is where the rebirth cycle could actually play out. At least he's able to drag the psychologist closer to that coffin, so this is actually going to help out a bit. But like you said, Nell, a solid tie could be imminent here, and this is actually the start for Shaoma to get his confidence back in this matchup. We do see the psychologist is going to get that rebirth. We're going to see him try and uh, pressure down the cypher as Shaoma already rotates inside zyj is actually here to tank some hits is able to force attack recovery here so this is going to oh, be fine. big if you're able yeah. to go for uh oh blink is going to be ready Blink. oh gonna, oh yeah he, his cooldown wasn't enough uh but he's going to get nine really soon and the, the important thing is he he down the mercenary which was very important that he bought a lot of time but Silver, Silver it's gonna be he, oh man the disarm and he's trying to close oh, up this is oh my god he blocked out the gate this is buying so much time for the survivors now. He's buying. Oh my god. He, he body blocks and you are not even able to hit because of the disarm. And the healing is happening now, Park. Oh. And Bomber is healing. Psychologist. And Shelma has lost. Yeah, sight. Lost sight. Psychologist. Sorry, I was going to say psychologist. Up. Yeah, he's lost sight of the psychologist over at the second floor. He's trying to pressure down the cypher. Psychologist not yet healed up. So this is going to be huge if he's able to down the psychologist. But we're at 50% already done. They still have, um, well, the they still need to create that separation. ZYJ blocking it off. Nan has to be careful. He can't turn this corner. The blink oh, is going to oh, happen. Oh, Can he get through it and get the ballot boost? Not quite. So this is going to be the first down. Silver Chi, though, in the area. Force heal might happen. Oh, but there's a cat. I don't think it's possible. Oh, there's a hit. <laughs> My oh, goodness. What happened? Hit. Body block meta inbound, forcing him to go through. But the embalmer is here to try and body block. So, oh, oh, that falls down him. again. They're going to force heal it. Uh oh, here to. we go. Even if it's a shock, they have to force it. They have to force it. Oh, is he going to pick? Oh, 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 my goodness, oh, they're all running out. And now let's see if he's going to be able to get at least one. Psycholo oh, man, a psychologist is out. Antiquarian gets hit. No more stick to use. He's going to leave him down. Oh, my goodness. And he's going to catch up to ZYJ now. ZYJ has no coffin. And that's the thing as well. You save the psychologist, but the tension end is up. Two of them are down. He, they, though, who might have, bar have bar bargained for more than they can mm -hmm. chew. And this is looking like a draw at this point far yeah i mean you gotta admit they really tried their best like you said this is the time for them to actually try and go for more than a four uh more than just a tie overextended it's totally fine we're gonna see shauma actually uh bring the psychologist i uh, sorry this antiquarian closer definitely biting off more than basement. they can chew because oh the god, basement, basement is here oh my god that one play i mean they did nothing wrong they were trying to force it here but remember when you are close quarters with disciple the the cat can catch up to you so fast. Yihua. He can latch on to you. Yihua, yep. Oh my god. Yeah, Yihua is going to try and make this rescue happen. But y again, you don't want to attempt too... You don't want to extend too much. Luckily for them, the Embalmer and Antiquarian are on their first chairs. So now he's just... You know what? Split. They're trying to split push this rescue. One is going to try to go for the basement. The other one's going to try and go for this rescue inside the factory. We're going to see how that's going to play out, though. 
I don't think they should force this, honestly. I feel like they should be more comfortable taking the draw here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you're giving GG 1-1 one, one win. But don't forget, you have, you have two round wins. You, you and now the double rescue is going to happen. But Masamori is going to go down very, very soon. Oh, he's going to stop both of them! Oh, now Silver Chi unable to. Yeah, Silver Chi has no items. Mercenary has an elbow pad to try, possibly push for the exit gate. But yeah, it seems like they're still able to... Can they get a three-person escape here? I mean, there's a lot of distance that's going to be covered. Uh, Yihua is actually the furthest gone, and now he's going to try to cut off one of these survivors now. Yihua might probably go to the dungeon. Is the dungeon at the area? Oh, oh, oh the coffin. God. Yeah, the coffin. Mm, no, okay. Oh. Be beautiful okay. stuff he's being. Yeah, he's being rebirthed now. But everyone is injured. There's no more detention. It's still going to be scary because they're one hit away from falling down. They really want to force this one uh, rescue attempt from happening. Or at least a three-person escape. And Doe's really doing all that they can. He's going to get chased out here by the Ant. And now the Mercenary oh. unable to recover here. But at least the detention is over. If Mercenary can stand up, he still has an elbow pad to make it. Right. So he has to make it count. He has he's to make crawling, it. He's crawling though. Shama so doesn't know where he is. He doesn't, I believe. So now he's going to try to see if uh, anyone, if, if the cats are going to uh, snipe him out. But yeah, he's going to crawl as far as he can to get towards the exit gate and then elbow pad from there. So this isn't oh over my yet. God. I mean, this is going to be so close. Oh. He's getting further and further now. He's so far off, and now he's just gonna crawl, make a dash for it when he's comfortable with the distance. He's gonna go, my goodness! He's gonna be denied the draw, even the draw. Oh, this is gonna be huge. The mercenary is just crawling. Chat, this is the most intense crawl we have seen. Shaoma oh, thinks. Oh, he doesn't have self -heal. Sorry, he doesn't have self heal. Oh, crawl. he doesn't. Oh, oh my, my goodness, he has to crawl all the way. This is so intense, yeah. guys. And Shaoma's still looking. Exactly. Like, I don't know, man. Will he be able to crawl uh, in time? Because, oh my god, he was... He, he was... Oh my god, he's so close to the gate, actually. He is. He is. Can he make it, Shaoma? He's looking left and right. Can he find this, he saw, uh, this he mercenary? Saw, he, saw. he saw it at him. Oh, yeah. so oh close. My god. Oh, again, it's so far. Able to get the blink. And now the tie was not denied. Yeah, fortunately. Because at first, I thought he still had self heal, but then... You know, caught in the heat of action, uh, I finally realized he used up his self heal. If he still had self heal, that would have been a totally different story. But fortunately, Posh Shelma managing to get the draw, bringing GG a one round win. What a comeback! This right is the there. start. This is the start that GG needs. They want to be able to get, you know, just. I think they don't, they shouldn't look at the point difference. Just keep winning like this in each round. Get a three mm -hmm. to one, and then just tie it out. Just conservatively win until game number five and call themselves the champion. So, definitely far from over here, folks. And God, that crawl is just the most intense crawl we've seen. Like that was exactly that was exactly. pretty scary. Yeah, that was that that was a crawlathon. You know, <laughs> crawlathon. <laughs> <laughs> crawling in the dark mm -hmm. <laughs> oops quoting a song i believe Cho, Cho might not know as well but anyway <laughs> but, yeah but... again uh, i would have to say also apologies yeah we were so intense on the crawl that we didn't notice that uh, he did not have any more uh self-heal so that could have been a different story he still had an elbow pad to use and i mean yeah like he's called out now they really wanted to try to go to four man they got a little too aggressive but in the end they still got a tie so Okay. Yeah, I think that would have worked. Uh, but Xiaoma was really, really uh, level-headed there. Mm -hmm. He realizes, okay, fine, you got the hit here. Uh, you got the rescue here. Never mind. I already hit the mercenary anyway. Mercenary is gonna go down really, really fast. So the the cat is actually meant for the two survivors running out of basement. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. the best thing. So he can he covered all positions very, very well. Mm -hmm. And finally, oh my God, he got that clash uh, win, and I believe that's the most pivotal moment he got a draw he got around one win and like what you said earlier on build it consistently you don't have to get overwhelming points as long as you get that win every single game you're gonna make those sweat mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> sweat yeah exactly i i think that's what they need to do coming into this next game just um intimidate them with just consistent wins again we're not looking for the four man uh, escapes we're not looking for the four k's just get consistent threes and draws, threes and draws, and you're able to call yourself the two-time call, call of the Abyss champion. So I'm guessing Dou needs to reorder some bottle service here, Nell, because uh, the victory isn't so close uh, to them as we thought.
Yeah, exactly. And double dose, please. <laughs> While they're at that, <laughs> they definitely need more uh, shots with their mm -hmm. with their bottle services. Mm -hmm. But honestly, just look at how well. Um, honest, I would say Do. Mm -hmm. Their kite was amazing. Their support yeah. was amazing, all the way up until the very end. Cipher pop. That was imminent. And because three survivors were running around like, uh, you know, like, you know, like when the mice, when the cat's chasing them, like scattering all around, it was so easy for Anne to just knock down anyone with the with the cat, to kid catch up, knock down anyone of the cat, and guys, let's let's take a screenshot with Tosh here, okay? I'll, I'll I'll just freeze too, and you guys take a picture and then put some doodles on him, birthday boy, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, there we have it. Posh, I got you on still. <laughs> but we're going to go into a short break. So don't worry, Posh and I will come back. I'll bring him back. See you guys. Right, no one will keep winning in the Koa, but only Dong X is someone to rely on. Come on, Dowu, march ahead. My birthday wish for is for Posh <laughs> to wish that Dong who wins. Come on, Dong X. I wish my connection stabilizes because I got sent to the Shadow Realm again. I apologize, folks. Uh, thank you, Nell, for covering there. I don't know why. I mean, I just feel like I, I, I'm freezing a lot. I feel like that that birthday song also just makes me just freeze in joy. We also have another one here. Come on, GG, win again so that everyone can remember your names. We already remember their names. We know the name GG, Koa 4 champions, but will we know them as Koa 6 champions? That's going to be Exactly, good. yeah. And you know what the question is? What? Oh, no, what is it? Wait, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> the question is, will the Wu be able to come back uh, and solidify their win with a, with a third round win or will GG be able to come back from there on because that was the starting point mm -hmm. and honestly with supports rampaging in I feel like GG's actually starting to power up little mm -hmm. by little by little here into the later rounds and mm -hmm. I feel like it can still be anyone's game here even yeah. though though has already gotten two round wins mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that could be the case, and this this is I mean this is the glimpse that GG is able to get. And we actually, if we look at how they performed in IBL, they also are a slow starter in BO5. That's how they're able to win against Wolves. Mm -hmm. So this could be them powering up again. This is the championship rounds already. We're gonna see round number four more bands on the hunter side and the survivor side. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's still anyone's game here and mm -hmm. i think it'll be i would say a little more tilting on dou's side if they're not able to get the victory here and now 
Yeah. Because they've solidified such an amazing uh, first two round wins and right. with spectacular fashion as well. So, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. I talk about the momentum just going on and on and on. But it seems like GG caught them. They stopped. They halted the momentum and brought it back in their own way. And not to mention, this is GG's round pick as well. So, they're going to ever sleeping town here, uh, Posh. And honestly, it's pretty. it's a pretty neutral ground Ground. yeah i'm just i'm just nervous that the tram's gonna hit me and i'm gonna be standstill again so apologies nelly you might have to (laughs) okay okay if if a tram hits anyone at all i'm gonna start seeing happy birthday (laughs) it's the tram's birthday yeah yeah Yeah. imagine if tongshen's the one getting hit oh no (laughs) (laughs) that's the birthday tram Uh, birthday tram in the mix that's gonna yeah. be a good one. Yeah. yeah, I would say yeah, neutral grounds except for the tram that can be. Uh, they, again, they don't pick any sides here. So, actually, is that I see Kazuneko with the bunny ears. I also see some of the hosts in Ooh. the Japan. Uh, it's at the Japan studio as well. So big shout outs to everyone in the Japan studio and everyone also in the stadium here in in Guangzhou, I think, or this is in yeah, it's definitely in China. Guangzhou. Hangzhou. 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 There Hangzhou. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And big shout outs to everyone who has joined the Discord just to celebrate Posh yeah. birthday tonight. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's actually a lot of people. I don't think we'll be able to finish reading all of the, the well, new let's members. Go. Yeah. yeah, so tonight, yeah, we'll be with Eli, we'll be Chocho again. Uh, just just hanging out, you know, like consider it like an online after party of the celebration of Call of the Abyss. Tell us about your apples, tell us about your predictions and, and whatnot. And uh, Dong Xuan, look at that, that, that character card too. Exactly. That's one character card I would keep and never give away. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, true. Yeah, that's the kind of merch I really want. Oh. And look, the panda's like, yo, look, I'm coming for you. Dude, he, he, runs, for he, you. He, he runs like Bon Bon, man. Look how... We, this Dohu is able to kite so far. Come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. And Panda's like, yeah! Punty slap! And... Oh! <laughs> like, the coach is like, what's going on? I'm trying to... He's like, yeah, take that, take that. The belly shot, the belly mm-hmm. shot. And that's like, yeah, anti slap, slipper slap, every slap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. See, Dohu's retracting, man. He's the one that's uh, conceding in this, uh, mm-hmm. this battle here. Yeah. Gonna try to kite. Let's see if he gets the pallet slam. Oh, he's no. holding the head now. No, How are we like, commentating no. the fights of the mascot? This is crazy. I, I, I don't know. He's doing the he's doing the down forward hit. No, no, no. The no, look forward. at you. That's plus on block. That's plus on. So he's uh, fine. He's able to block it. He's safe. He's so. safe for sure. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're definitely still high spirit. That after almost eight hours of stream, mm-hmm. and we're we're just really glad that you guys are still here. So remember to drink your drinks. You know, uh, remember to rehydrate because it's always easy to forget to drink when you're so excited. Like yeah, us. Let me drink exactly. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Nell. I, I mean, the breathtaking action. We need to stay hydrated exactly. and also keep our voices in check because we're just screaming left and right. Uh, also, you see the fans <laughs> here uh, just with their memes and whatnot and their fan chants and fan signs. And uh, we see a 487 headband, so that's actually also really good. And also some caster love being shown as well. So. Uh, again, you know what? These players have to take all the time in the world because they know what's at stake. Dong Xuan being the point hunter here, he's going to lead this dance because Gigi was uh, picked Ever Sleeping Town. So I think this is good. This will... Um, and okay, I'm trying to think about Dong Xuan's performance. If he has uh, a 1K, he usually bounce back like in a greater fashion. So yeah. let's see if Gigi is able to kind of change that trend of him uh, not being able to get... Uh, like a 4k after getting a 1k well it's all up to gg survivors now the slipper gangs have to unite more than ever <laughs> um seriously they have to unite more than ever they have to mm-hmm. get that tree escape that they did in round number three again so that shelma will have a better time to deal yeah. with uh the immense pressure because again ladies and gentlemen being number one and being number two is the difference is only one number but the significance is so so different it so, is it is it, it, it's it's huge right because it, it i mean um you know that that the, there's everyone remembers the the first place right but then again in this tournament again we're, we're witnessing the best of the best these are professional teams so calling yourself 
yes, part of the T uh, IVL lineup is great, but calling yourself the Call of the Abyss champion, there's no other higher honor uh, in in getting this grand championship. And that is what they're playing for, folks. So Dong Shuan batting out a lot of supporters, all two healers actually, and two support characters. So uh, this opens things up. It depends on how GG is going to choose to ban this. They could definitely ban out the, the Geisha, the the Ann, the Dream Witch as well. So yeah, kind of exactly. leaves uh, meta characters for Dong Shuan to use. <laughs> You you know, Respecting everything, oh, right? You everything. Hermit. Oh, oh god. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh there we go. Everything. <laughs> everything he used. Well, he still has the lizard man. Oh, in every sleeping town, dude. There's no roof. Well, there is actually. In the there is a little bit. Yeah, yeah, so you're fine. Right. Yeah, but it's fine. He can leap through the window. That's the thing True. about wizard. Uh, but again, I don't think he wants to risk it that mm -hmm. way because. I think they would. He would pretty much want a more stable character. A knight here would be actually pretty good. Wow. Uh, yeah, to right. get a draw, right? Yeah. So let's and, see if he's gonna gear up towards that knight because now I think GG needs for that SOS situation to happen. Yeah, uh, exactly. And speaking of not them commentating the mascots, low, uh, Noah Sun. <laughs> Believe me, Posh and I we commentated uh, Eli versus Chocho's. Scrabble match. Sorry, checkers match just now. We commentated it like a real pro. So there you have it. We commentate everything. That's part of who we are. We're having fun. We love it. And hopefully you guys are having fun too. And right now, speaking of having fun, look at the slipper gang. It, the thief is gonna make an appearance at Ever Sleeping Town. I love it. And that's because this place is actually pretty good for thief as well. Like uh, especially when you're kiting in the in the graveyard, right? You can put the flashlights there. It supports you. You don't have to be there to hold the flashlight onto the hunter. So that's actually a really good. Uh, this is actually a really good place for the thief. So Dongshan is probably pretty worried already. He's gotten rid of all the supports. He's gotten rid of um, all the healers. He's gotten rid of the the harassers, the prospector, the the antiquarian. But the mm -hmm. thief is gonna make such an impact. And now even the dancer's gonna be out loose in Ever Sleeping Town. Yeah, so having the thief here, especially on 18, right? We've seen such amazing plays uh, with him. The, the graveyard window area is going to be just blocked off and really impossible to kite. And the dancer as well, just providing the, the, the dancer boxes in the middle area. So Dongshuan has to be very careful. Yeah, he cannot. I don't think he, he's, he's going to want to bring out Clerk here since the thief does hard counter it. But. You know, he has Nyad, he also has the Wax Artist, oh. and Coordinator. You know, I just, I always I always say this, Martha, please stop dropping your gun, man. That's, that's so scary. Stop dropping your guns. You do not want to shoot me. And <laughs> honestly, it didn't work really well against Dong Shen last game because it he did. pretty much excitement the, the gun shot, mm -hmm. but they still got the three-man escape. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess forcing... Uh, for, forcing Dongshan to choose between uh, bling slash teleport versus seeing excitement is one thing that they want to put him. He doesn't yeah. want, they don't want him to have the best time. Like, yo, I'm just going to go for the standard six, uh, the insolence, detention, bling. Mm -hmm. make, it, uh, make it very comfortable for them. So I love um, this variety in GG. Mm. Mm, yeah, I think... This is with the the keys to success that did happen in the in the previous match, and they want to duplicate that. It just the thing is, will Dongshuan go for it? And and depending on the hunter, it, it can be proven to be very uh, uh, effective, or it can bite him in the in the back and just make him get this the one K. Which again, he's not really known for that, right? We've hold him to such a claim, and he's still able to live uh, with that standard that we hold him to get at least just a tie. So for Gigi to get the three man escape, that's definitely huge. Uh, Dong Shuan still has his fair share of uh, his picks here. Like you said, the Nyad can possibly come out. Mm -hmm. The Wax Artist as well. It seems like he's going to go with that Nyad now. Ooh, I love it. Um, Nyad is very versatile. And uh, not to mention, he doesn't mind taking, he doesn't mind taking the harassments uh, off, um, for example, the gunshots. Because the, the water damage that builds up is still going to be in effect. So he doesn't really mind. But the one thing that he really needs to watch out for is um, obviously, the thief, because mm. you know what happens? The absolute worst thing that can happen to a Nyad is when you are you can't retract your harpoon because you're being silenced <laughs> by the thief. Uh, That's true. Oh god, the silence of the thief has been always the bane of um, 
any hunter that goes up against 18. 18 is just a masterful thief uh, player and Dongshan has to be very careful. And note that this isn't a hunter he normally uses, right? And this is a, the one of the most pick hunters of Call of the Abyss. So he's gonna definitely find a way to try and counter this. And considering the lineups, right? You have two stunners, but will Dongshan play a little more aggressive and not bring excitement? Or we're just gonna have to wait and see. Probably a bling. But I expect a triple flywheel out of the survivors. I expect a triple flywheel because uh, it's just so strong not to take. Especially in this map, um, they probably they probably know that Dongshan is gonna gear up towards uh, a, a pick like Nyad. I mean, we've seen it. They they they've definitely seen it a mile away. So um, I would expect a double or triple flywheel, and that's gonna be really good in negating um, the the water damage by Nyad, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the thief. You saw that the thief didn't really have a good success earlier on right. because he didn't have flywheel. Right? He, he, mm -hmm. he was constantly getting the support he needed to get up and run. But because there's no flywheel, it's just so hard to to support. When mm -hmm. you, you try to harass, but without flywheel, you, you kind of being the burden in in, in, in turn. So, <laughs> so there we have triple yeah. flywheel. And look at this. Like you called out as well. Now blink insolence just to get the, the presence up. Uh, I did bring that detention for endgame, so this is going to be a interesting playstyle here. And Dongshuan has to be very careful from the stuns of the forward and the coordinator. But Triple Flywheel is definitely going to help them out. GG with this newfound confidence to go up against Dongshuan. Once again, Nello Melon Pod Spice, your commentators for this championship round number four, first half. Exactly. Do or die, Dongshuan on the Sea Queen. Gonna make the rotations. PP Shell is gonna be the first target again. And I love that he's the first target because he has a gun. And mm -hmm. he'll be the gauge whether Dongshuan has a blink or not. And PP Shell will probably. I feel like he can use his gun early. Mm -hmm. You know, just like bang. Okay. Um, uh, well, at least. It gets rid of the mind. You don't have to guess whether he has excitement or bling anymore, right? Yeah. So yeah, he can that's true. Do that. Yeah, practicing some patience here. So he's uh, got to be careful here, especially if he's out in the open. PP Shot can just go for that gunshot, and he has nowhere to hide from. Will he go for it here? It seems like he's going to hide behind this pallet and try to force it out. Oh, yeah. wow, just nice. once he turns the corner. And now this buys enough time for PP Shot to rotate. But all good. He could still use the harpoon just to catch up. Yeah, exactly. And you can see the uh the if like the, the music boxes have been set up to help him. PP just gonna be surrounded though. Has to be really careful. Uh he's gonna go back and head for the music box low again. Mm -hmm. Uh let's see if he's gonna burst PP oh. here. He's oh gonna God, has to be really careful. Yeah, he's gonna try to water it down, and now he does have Blink. He's gonna use Blink right away, and he's able oh! to bait out a flywheel too, unable oh. to get the hit now. Oh my god, because of the slow box that that altered Dongshen's attack, the attack reach, and now PP Shia is alive. He's gonna be alive as soon as Dongshen gets out of Harpoon. He's just gonna he's just gonna walk away. Yeah, he does have like 50%. You do have the swim onto him, but PP Shell off to a great start. And this is the most you can want from this Nyad match, right? The gun has already been expended. He's going to try to water it down, but the forward, oh my goodness, he was able to sidestep, but the forward keeps on going. Wow. Forward, but that was at what cost? Oh my God, that was a half football. What beautiful control by PPC. Uh, a U turning, a 300, sorry, a 540 degree turning. Yeah. My God. 540 spin, and now he's going to use the half football just to create that distance. And Dong Xuan still has no target onto a rocket oh chair God. here. It seems like he's lost to who he's going to chase first because the coordinator is out of here. While the forward, a fully he health forward, not much resources to work with, but he's still uh, very healthy. Yeah, uh, but look, 93% on the water, using up the last of the footballs to do. And now the thief is going to come. Oh my goodness. He, oh. Can, will he be able to get that hit though? Oh, the, the boost. What, what, I wonder if the knee is going to be enough. But now he's probably going to take a hit. It's fine because now the water level is rec receding. And Posh, Cypher progress is not the best. Right. But Ocean not being able to chair the first survivor is even, is like an, an even better thing. Yeah. 
it seems like PP Sha gonna be the next target here. So again, it's it's still a give and take here. Yes, they are over supporting, but at least Dong Xuan knows that they're still sticking sitting at two ciphers. They're gonna be working on their last cipher. He needs to down PP Sha here and now. Seems like he's gonna try and go for another water down here. And note that the dungeon is here, so uh, coordinator has to be very careful. The 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 water is building up, coordinator. Oh, Whoa, the flywheel! That's exactly what I'm talking about. The flywheel. You wanna drown him? No, Pipisha says no. You are not gonna be able to drown me. I live, and I'm gonna stay right at the side. But it doesn't matter. You got me. <laughs> All ciphers are done. I got sleeper gang making this work. Will they this are... be the comeback for GG, Posh? This could be it. I mean, this is Dong Shun we're talking about, and this is his Nyad. They were able to counter it at the early to mid game, but now Last Cypher is already here. He's stuck with this blink. It seems like he's going to try to water down this Cypher, allowing the coordinator to get rescued. So this is, uh, considering who's going to get rescued, that could be a wasted tide turner. It seems like 18 has to be very careful, oh. able to get the hit off the thief. Yeah, because he wasn't swimming after all. He, he already got the... He, he already retracted. Like, right, the harpoon. But now, this is the scary part. Like, 82%, he knows that the last cipher is at um, is at the thief cipher. So now they have no choice but to start a new cipher. But Dong Shen, honestly, he's doing a pretty good job um, trying to control ciphers. But, my God, I have to tell you, Posh, like, even the forward, right? Because he's right. free, he managed to look for the chest and got another half football. Oh my God. Wow, what are the chances, right? Actually, yeah, giving That's it weird. to the... Yeah, so the female dancer also has a football and forward has a football. So just more stunners on the team. PPZ is going to have to move on away from the Cypher, but it's all good. It's already primed. So this could actually be more than just a tie here. At least a three-man escape. But I'm sure GG wants to get the uh, the four-man escape. Going to get the pop, and now they go for the end game now. My goodness, GG playing this to perfection. They definitely are waking up now. I don't know if that was the sleepers doing the <laughs> job, but honestly, low three man running. This is a very high possibility of a three man escape, if not even a half. Oh, the sleepers! Oh, just activating that football now has the the pallet to worry about. This is not the exit gate they need, but you know that the tr uh, the exit uh, the the dungeon is here. PPZ might be the sacrificial lamb here. He falls down, but it's all good. Three survivors are gonna escape, and this is what they need to do: three man and then tie for them to be able to push for that round number five. This is what we're talking about since early game. Like the survivors taking down Dong Xuan bit by bit. Mr. President, be careful. The, the Slipper Gang is here to play. Look at them. Second time in a row. Three man escape. And now Shama's in a very favorable position again. Get the draw. Repeat yes. the formula. Right? Mm, exactly. If it ain't, if it's not broken, why fix it? If it's effective exactly. to get you the win, keep on doing that. And even though there's a lot of bands on the board, getting a tie is still pretty good. However, the survivors of Dowu, we've seen how aggressive they are. I feel like they've, they kind of know if they tie this one out, uh, it's, it's okay. Sorry, we're gonna have to see the, the, the score line and how, what's the win conditions. But yeah, they can opt to play a little more conservatively here. Cause if I, if I know if they tie this one out, they win, right? But if they get a three person escape, then it's gonna be GG for Dowu, they win, right? Exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the same condition over and over again. Three men escape here. And those survivors are faced with the same situation again. Four escape or uh, or a draw. It will bring the game to a draw. And What would happen if over. they get a three-person escape? Then the game, the game is pretty much uh, going to go to game five. Yeah, it's going to go to game five. It's going to go to game five. And then they have to win by points. Right. They have to win by points. Oh. GG has to win, and they have to win by a, a bigger point advantage. That's tough. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, oh my god. I would say, Shaoma, do or die tie for him. He needs to get a tie. You don't want to come in with a, a one, just a 1k. We're looking at the match data here, and very uncharacteristic of Dongshuan just to get a 1k. Uh, in this matchup, but they had him scouted out. PP Xiao having an amazing kite, and PPZ also potential MVP moment there. The 540 stun off to the the forward. That's just mad control, I would have to say. I mean, that was such a tiny spot to do the full one, uh, the full 360s, and he was able to do that. PPZ being the one to uh, get sacrificed there, but it's all good. Yeah, and there 
what there are our colleagues uh, we would love to see and say hi to you but uh <laughs> it's totally fine uh just reiterating what you were saying like look at the points differences because though had that one five zero right Mm-hmm. That one five zero, that one play itself, it gave them enormous. Um, mm-hmm. I won't say more. It gave them an advantage at that point. So right. here in game four, if GG wants to make the comeback, they need to go. win this round. Right. So here we have it, folks. Again, even a three man escape, we're still going to see that round number five. But like Nell said, since they did that, they had that five zero. Mm-hmm. The point differential is going to be a lot to deal with. So exactly. if Shaman exactly. needs to just get the two, again, three, two all the way, like three man escape, tie, three man escape, tie. I think that's the formula for them to be able to get the victory here. Hopefully Shaoma, like you said, woke up. Maybe they bought new slippers. Maybe it's a lot tougher now. And the slipper gang uh, wants to get at least a round two. Imagine that now. If they get the win here, they're all tied up in rounds. Exactly. Round wins at least. Yeah. Round wins. And at, at, in the last game, um, they wouldn't be out of hot water yet because mm-hmm. in the last game, though because of the because of the points advantage, they are more comfortable getting a draw. They are more yeah. comfortable to get a draw and then let the points settle it, the points difference settle it. Whereas GG, because of the minimal points difference, they need to constantly go mm-hmm. win a little round three, win a little round four, win mm-hmm. round five to get that win. Right. So it's all or nothing, I believe. They have to win this round. Uh, they really have to. Yeah. And, and that just adds a lot more pressure, significant pressure, right? But exactly. luckily for Xiaoma's, uh, Xiaoma, he has very reliable teammates. He just needs to get that tie. It's not an uh, unsalvageable situation. Like if, if he doesn't win this one and then round number five, it's going to be tough to just salvage that five point differential. So at least here, it's it's all good. He just needs to play for that tie. And the the bands, the picks and bands, yes, they're gonna be more, but it's still kind of gearing towards hunters since they're way more survivor bands. So we just have to see how um, this. I would say this chess match begins once uh, they start. And considering that Ever Sleeping Town was Gigi's pick, so they definitely have a bit of an advantage coming into this one. Exactly. And speaking of chess matches, we do commentate checkers matches as well. Yes, so. hire us. <laughs> <laughs> Iris. Yeah, to we have your local your local order. checkers match, guys. Don't worry, our our, our rate is free pizza. Just uh, free pizza. you can ask you can ask Cho Cho and Eli. They were very entertained with our checkers uh, exactly. commentary. Exactly. I the resign nom-noms. it. Actually, you know, I would say Cho Cho is like the best commentator for checkers. She got the nom noms going on. Yeah, the nom noms, but mind you, she's a little bit biased. <laughs> she, nah. she, <laughs> she teaches. She what teaches. She, she teaches, yeah, she was very biased with me, like, oh, and watch needs to do this. She was, the she was giving me hints. It's like yeah. I had an in-game tutorial while I was yeah. playing checkers with you. Yeah, and I was I was actually there as well. Hello, I'm still here. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but so, right yeah. now, yeah, mm-hmm. but right now it seems like Shelma, he has a very important mission to do, Posh. Yes, he does. He needs to get a tie game at mm-hmm. least. At least. I, I would like to say that I know he could go with the 3-1. We did see the score lines there, but that in his book, he should really just aim for that tie that just is. so he doesn't fall for that 3-1, uh, that one person kill. Um, like Nell said, it's so hard to come back in round number five with a big point differential hanging over your head and you all, you're down in rounds. That's, uh, that's going to be a little tough. So yeah. they need to win in rounds. Uh, exactly. They need to win this round here and now. Exactly, exactly. If Shama, I mean, there's another possibility as well. If Shama is able to, is able to get a three-man kill and above, mm-hmm. it's gonna or or a four K. That's gonna offset what Dou did in game num- round number two, and that would be, uh, then they they will be the ones comfortably going into round number five. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's true. One thing. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Easier said than done, right? Exactly. So, and I, I would have to say those survivors have been surprising us, and it's hard to get a read on them sometimes because they're so, they're they're really consistent also, and they're very risky too with their aggression and and whatnot. Again, like you pointed out in Leo's memory, they played it the early to mid game really well, and they still had the the guts, the audacity to try to push for more than just a tie, and they still ended up in a tie, which was all good. So mm. it's just if you're dealing with those type of survivors, it can force you to play a little meekish or a little fearful of what's to come and just let's just get like the safe 1k or the, the tie. But Shauma, his mentality is I need to get more. So mm. oh. yeah. she's saying hi there. The fans are saying hi with their fan signs as well. Mm. Means a uh, 4k. 
So if 四跑 means for escape. So 四杀 is for K. 四跑 is for escape. 四跑 yeah. 跑跑跑跑 is like escape. I still、yeah. remember MX screaming at the top of his lungs. That's how I know the name. The word. Oh, he he's like a he's like a Southeast Asia Rory, I would say. <laughs> you you realize Posh because Rory is like Super Saiyan, rawr, power up kind of thing, and MX is sort of like the Southeast Asia version of Super Saiyan as well. But you know what? We are gonna head into the band picks phase right here, ladies and gentlemen. This might be potentially the game that GG needs to come back in game number four. Whereas for Do Wu, if they get a four-man escape, they're gonna win the entire thing. So, ladies and gentlemen, please do、uh, give your supports in the chat. Pandas for GG, and of course for Do Wu. Well, you know what you have to do. Right. The crown. The crown for Dong. You should definitely see him in a crown.、Uh, exactly. <laughs> you should see him、uh, in the crown. Exactly. Hey, I bet Chocho <laughs> knows that song. Chocho, you know that song? <laughs> it's 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 a、uh, it's a、um, it's actually Billie... a song by Selena Gomez. Wow, I was gonna say Billie Eilish.、Mm -hmm. Eilish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's also Billie Eilish. Is I think I think. Do you? <laughs> Anyway, no for the silliness here. We're gonna see a bands. I mean, picks already picking up the prospector, like you said. No, this is definitely a survivor that's well rounded, and I would have to say, though picking this up, they didn't pick it up in the previous round, but this is actually really good that they're able to do it now. So this adds a bit of stress on Shalma's side since the prospector could just basically do it all. Yeah, they're probably covering the.、Uh, they're covering all bases. They're probably preparing for Shalma. In case he goes with disciple again, because、mm -hmm. he did get a he did get a disciple two k in last game, right?、Mm -hmm. So there. But honestly, I'm not really sure why they don't just ban his disciple. Maybe he's just really they're just really comfortable playing against his disciple in Ever Sleeping Town. Might be the case, but I don't think you should underestimate Shama、uh, if he decides to bring out disciple here because you don't have a blink.、Right. Uh, sorry, you, you, you prospector's gonna counter you.、Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, you can get countered, but if you get first chase, you have limited amounts of、uh, magnet, and there's no there's no one here to OB for you. Like Anticorn is banned, right? Anticorn is banned. There's no priestess support. Um, it's so risky letting Shama out with the disciple here. Yeah,、uh, I couldn't agree more with how、uh, Shama does、uh, perform with that. But it seems like we're gonna see a gardener coming to the mix. Everyone in the、uh, the, the the China audience is actually kind of is taken aback with this veteran pick of the gardener.、Ooh. So、uh, yeah, you can play towards the bubble. I mean, if if they really wanted to hard counter the disciple, right? They could go with professor. But it seems like they want to go with gardener here. Yeah. yeah. Probably a bloody queen or a bon bon. I no, sorry, not bon bon. It's been bad. Probably a bloody queen since there's gardener here, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. True.、Mm. True. Yeah. So, yeah, you can go for that.、Mm. Shama can also go BQ. Not Geisha.、Mm, no. <laughs> they still ban his Geisha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I like, Twice、right. in a row, bro. Twice in a row. <laughs> Why? They might know something. I don't know. Maybe they、um... they fear Dongshuan's Geisha so much that it's like, yo, this is actually a little.、Uh, let's let's not tempt fate no, here.、Fine. We know the potential of Geisha, so let's、mm. not、uh, let's let's not bring it out yet. Yeah, or maybe they're like, "Yo, Shama was actually acting with his 1K Geisha." Oh, they're not <laughs> they gonna fall for、that. it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they don't want that, bro. You can play Geisha. You swinging around like that—that's that's acting, bro. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. <laughs> yeah, but they're they just gonna decide not to risk it. But they do have to deal with a disciple now or the Bloody Queen, and both these hunters are actually very strong Thai hunters, right? Yeah. Oh, again. Very true.、Mm -hmm. The the crowd and、yeah. team. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. The Japan audience. Oh, oh, oh my God. Shama. Shama wants to win 4K.、Yeah. Oh my God. But that's the thing, Nell. I I I. If they didn't bring Flywheel, this would be so good for Shama. If they did, ooh, we know Breaking Wheel to be a 4K or no K hunter. But、exactly. this this just shows that he's gonna take this seriously. He's gonna gamble it all to the breaking wheel. And how poetic would it be that the breaking wheel is the one to take things all the way up until game number、uh, five? I mean, you see the breaking wheel of Nell, me, and Jojo. So let's see if this is gonna help him out. 
Yeah. Whether or not this is going to be a happy or sad breaking wheel, the Will Brothers, is going to be entirely up to Xiaoma. Uh, I just have to say though, it's just the the Magnus support is always going to be an, a factor as well. But fortunately, that's the only thing he has to deal with. Not to mention, if they have triple fly, fly wheels, mm -hmm. well, Chelma is going to have a pretty hard time too. But I don't know, man. I feel like they're probably gearing up towards. If they're gearing up towards a bloody queen, then they'll probably. It will make sense for them to have at least fly wheel. yeah. two fly wheels, right? right. So, um, well, two is better than four, at least for Chelma. <laughs> That's right. true, but I mean, it's rare to see breaking wheel to get ties, right? It's really just 4k or nothing or 3k's or nothing, so... Well, you better make it something, because he if it's to. nothing, well, no wins. If, if it's a four... If it's a three, three man... Uh, sorry, if it's a three man escape, it's gonna be uh, super hard for for GG now, Yeah. Right? Uh, however, I do have to note that this Ever Sleeping Town, it does, we've highlighted how uh, Breaking Wheel is a menace in this map, like just zipping in and out. I, I, spawning, actually, Breaking Wheel can spawn anywhere and he can just chase anyone once he goes exactly. into that wheel form. They just need Perfect. to be prepared, uh, which begs the question, I just want to see their personas because depending on how many flywheels we bring can add more to the difficulty of Shaoma. Exactly. Gardener is going to be the first target for sure, even before she gets up to the second floor. Uh, Shama's gonna catch up really, really soon. But fortunately, the Guardian bubble is gonna block one spike. Um, and let's see if Silver G is able to use that um, one instance block mm -hmm. to get up to the second floor or run all the way towards the graveyard. Because I think that's a more feasible option. We run to the graveyard with the window there. Shama's probably gonna have a hard time. And oh. Shama doesn't have 12 as well. He doesn't. Okay. So, so this if is they gonna decide be tough. to loop the graveyard, yeah, if they decide to loop the graveyard, oh my god, it's gonna be super hard. Yeah, <laughs> he does have insolence though, so he can get that, uh, the extended spikes, which will help out a lot. And the gardener does not have flywheel. He does have broken windows to transition towards the graveyard area, so hopefully that'll work out. But again, seems like a 50-50 matchup. Once again, Fox Spice and Nello Mello at your service in this second half of round number four. My god, so what's just gonna make it in time? Like, look, he's just gonna be in the graveyard again, and this is such a bad place to be at. So he's gonna go for Prospector instead. I love that. Oh, Prospector mm. revealing his location, and now, but this is also a very hard place to catch. But let's look at Super. Oh my god, ZYJ has to be close. Oh, unable to get it. Oh, this is where you feel the struggle of the breaking wheel, right? Oh. Look, no extended spike, able to get one though. So that's huge already. Shama's gonna exit the wheel form, but this is the prospector. Oh, he's able to get the trap now. My God, the three pointer hitting the blind three pointer. That's Kobe Bryant of IDV right there. Shama, exactly. all he needs is to do is get one more spike and bam, the snap's gonna mm. bring him down so fast. Yeah. Oh, wow, has it already? He's gonna get the hit and drops down the pallet. He does have a flywheel, but like you said, the snap is gonna be imminent here. Uh, he's gonna try to create enough distance. He's gonna throw another trap. ZYJ, he's gonna get, oh, wow, gets a stun while uh, transitioning to the second floor. Can he get the snap oh. right once he falls down? Oh. Early down on Chalma. Super fast down, but fortunately he was he was experienced enough to know that the elevation is gonna make a difference. But Iwa already in vicinity. I'm not sure with the early rescue. Early, very early rescue here, Nell. So now this provides enough time for three ciphers to kite. But yeah, extended spikes, double spikes as well. You're gonna see the flywheel being used here. Oh wow, oh. goes for the blink, and now ZYJ oh. last effort. He was waiting for the flywheel. He used it anyway, but got the hit. What? Oh my god, this, my goodness, yeah. this is so scary for yeah. Go right now. I mean, Do, uh, yeah, they're shaking in their boots. Shaoma is playing to win with this breaking wheel. Cyphers aren't even enough. He's going to try to pressure down more. And that was an early rescue. Mercenary's going to get spotted out already. If he's able to get a spike here, it'll be really tough uh, a rescue to make now. Yeah, he doesn't mind if Yuhua's at full health. He just wants to farm uh, the Prospector. Even if Yuhua saves here, it's fine. He doesn't have Tight Turner. Uh, sorry, yeah. he doesn't have Tight Turner anymore. He doesn't have Flywheel. He, he can just easily spike. He's yeah, at full. Boom. Oh, he Cancelled out a pad as well. Forced to come in. And now the Mercenary oh. gets trapped as well. Time's a ticking. Gets the rescue. Mercenary eats the hit though. 
Oh my goodness, if only he had one more spike, that would have wasted his time. He was trying to get the Terra Shock, I think. But now, my goodness, ZYJ has... Oh, he went down! Did he Did see him? Oh, I don't think he saw it. He's trying to look for him. ZYJ, though, he's climbing back up. Uh-oh. Now the extended spikes, he's able to get out the Prospector, unable to get the second spike on him. Nice elevation change, he can't snap him out, but the trap now! What is this two point, blind two point, blind three points going on? Four ciphers are about to be primed, but honestly, Posh, Shalma doesn't even need to get a 4k here. Even if he gets a 2k here, it's totally fine. He doesn't have any trump card. Oh, the tram. Yeah, the tram's not gonna work against me, <laughs> Shalma. Wheel. Exactly. So now he's going to go to the middle two story building here. Nan is gonna have to time this drop well. Oh, on... oh he got a spike onto the patient. That's a huge. Now we're going to see him transition towards his graveyard side, but he's not going to go fully commit to that. Yiwa and Silverchi are going to get caught out in the open here now. Oh my goodness, both of them are here. Last time first being done. Oh, and he got the two hit! My goodness! Oh, oh this oh is my big. god! Gardener has fallen down. We don't have even a bubble onto this Gardener. There's one Cypher remaining, but he could just uh, uh, chair and then pressure down the Cypher. This is the beauty of the Breaking Wheel. Exactly, mercenary is only just one snap away if he gets hit. Oh my goodness. Oh, he even placed it in advance. Oh, he was gonna get he was not gonna get hit. Wow. Is he gonna get hit? Oh, he, he misses. Okay, able to get the gardener though, and now gets the he can just snap him out. Yeah, that's exactly. true. And this forces another chair. Yihua has to stay here, and it's so scary because this mercenary is a chip damage away. We're gonna see the basement though now. Basement. Yeah, he, he doesn't want Yihua to keep coming in when he uh, transform into wheel form. He wants to deal it mano or mano. He wants to deal it with inhuman form. Mm -hmm. Because he knows one hit is going to down mercenary straight away. Oh, with the dash! Or, uh, yeah, goes for the dash right away. Oh. Gets the Gardener down. They're going to pop it. And now we see that he's going to have to be forced to, you know, exit this basement. And still no one's on that exit gate. He's going to try to go for another three-pointer here. Spots out Yihua. And it seems like he's going to focus onto the Mercenary here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. And now he can easily go for Silver too, Because this can be easily a 3K. It could be now. Silver too, he's out in the open here. He's trying to get a bubble oh. going. But no oh, gets the spike. One more. Oh, the bubble able to eat it. And now he goes for the blink, unable to get it. But the trap is going to cut him short. Gardener falls down. Two have been fallen down. And the patient is the only one up. Yeah, now he, he, he shouldn't go back for the mercenary. He should force he should force patient out. Oh, no, wait. Now he can go back for the mercenary. And Gardener's gone. Okay. My Holy God. smokes. Xiao Ma able to go above and beyond that tie, going for the three man kill. He's just waiting. Yeah, he's gonna go for it. He has not healed just yet. Oh, wow. Yihua trying to make a latch this effort, but it's gonna be tough because there's no elbow pad for him to use. He's gonna be kiting out in the open. Trap oh to slow him down, and Mercenary has fallen down, folks. GG. Winning round number four. It's insane. My god, Shelma GG! The panda rises again! Not the Phoenix, but the panda. The panda. Beautiful. This is this is not Panda anymore. This is Paul, the dragon warrior from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> that he's he's killing it, man. Someone fed Shelma something during intervals and he's cooking right now. <laughs> Can I just My say, God. this can come down, this could be one of the best Koas to make it. I mean, we had an amazing Koa 4, that's when GG won. It, it got till the best of four, I believe. It got all the way, but this one, what a historic comeback. Now we're all evened out in game number three. It's just a matter of who wins it. Yes, uh, we'll, we'll still look at the point differential, but at this point, if GG is onto this trajectory, the way they're able to come back from this is just... It just shows their mental fortitude to come back from adversity. That's a 3-1 with a breaking wheel. That's exactly. huge. Exactly. Okay, let's let's just calculate the points really, really quickly here. In round one, it's a uh, Dongxuan 3k. Mm -hmm. So that's 3-1. Shoma is um, 1k. So yes. that makes a point of... Three, six. six to three, six, uh, six to two, six to two, six to two, six to two, six to two. Okay, six mm -hmm. to two. And then in best of two Chinatown, disciple um, Dongshen got a two k, a draw, draw. and Shama Shama got a zero k. Yes, seven to two, seven, seven to two, right? seven two. Yes, seven two, seven two. Uh, oh no, they then still three two, then three two. They yeah, still three, have to win. Two. They still have to win round five. They cannot go for a draw. It's not enough. 
if, so if, if, he... if if a draw happens though we wins if a draw happens though we wins yeah oh, that's the, it's, it's not enough that's so impo- that's the five point game for you folks exactly. that is uh that's still a lot to come in with but hey no i mean look two they were able to come back two straight rounds in, exactly. in and also in this fashion that is big so in this round it's actually six two so it's still uh, a big i mean they were able to negate in round number one uh so if they're still able to continue on to this trajectory uh those who kind of put their apples on gg you guys are safe and sound but though it just i wonder if we were saying oh the bottle service this is going to be a quick night in the office for dong shuen gg man this is saying yeah. this isn't over just yet folks exactly mr president facing heavy gunfire under the sleeper gangs no gunfire <laughs> but sleeper slaps and honestly they I, what defines a champion the ability not just to dominate mm-hmm. uh, start good and run the race good you you got a, the ability to come back to stand mm-hmm. up take a beating get back up that's also a trait of a great champion as well and that's exactly what gg is doing proving that they were worthy core champions and they won to get a repeat core champion here yeah denying go from the first one i couldn't have said it better i'm excited to see this round number five and whoever's gonna win this i mean yeah you can say that the excellent comeback is gonna happen but you can also say same for dobu if they're able to come back from this after the adversity they face in three and four it's gonna be a big one so folks we're gonna take a short break round number five after this I'm so hungry. Mind on the bigger stage to prove yourself. Don't share, please put your mind at ease and play with your own style. Negate the slipper slap fighting, <laughs> Mr. President. Please negate the slipper slaps here. And you know, the COA 6 global support chant keeps on going. I think this is very apropos this this singing right now because Dong Shen really needs to set his mind at ease because he's only getting 1k for now. I would have to say though, GG is not out of the woods yet. They still need to win this round and they have to take things seriously. We're going to see another one here with oh, uh, an interesting, Elsa. like, I, I would say, yeah, Elsa, I was going to say. Uh, Elsa, yeah. GG, go, 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 PP Xia, go get FMVP. I mean, if you say Elsa, I might get frozen now, so please don't, because I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to freeze anymore. <laughs> while we yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what does FMVP go for? Uh, uh, favorite or forward MV- or PP Xia? Oh, uh, yeah. Favorite um, MVP? I'm, I'm not sure, but it was the title that uh, I believe 487 won last year in IBL. Oh. It was one AK one, so it's I think it's like the, fav- the first ultimate. MVP or like yeah, the oh. ultimate MVP for survivors. Yeah. And with his performance in the previous mm-hmm. games uh, alongside the Slipper Gang, that's definitely uh, something to look forward to. Like GG has been fighting really, really hard to come back, and at first, like what you said, we thought it's gonna be a 2-0. Uh, early mm. night in the office, though uh, victory, but 
GG, like being so dedicated, persistent, fighting back. Um, and it's two to two now. So guys, hang on, hang on, guys. It is gonna be decided in round number five between these two teams. Speaking of which, um, honestly, if GG gets a win, they're gonna win the whole thing. But that's a special circumstance. If it's a draw, if it's a draw, right? If it's a draw, Do Wu will be able to secure their spot and win the entire Koa tournament, being crowned the first ever. Do Wu's gonna win the first ever Koa championship. So that's one thing you guys have to watch out for. Ooh. Woo! The Elsa got me frozen a little bit there, Daniel. They're not gonna see that though. But no joke, bro. No yeah, joke. It's, 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 really we, we we ain't capping here. The, that frozen thing. Anyway, that's that's intense. I cannot wait to see this again. We're witnessing history. This is one of the great koas that we are. We saw an amazing one with Sun Sisters Wolves, and now we're seeing another one. A, an amazing comeback happen here, and we're get, we're playing the full five games. So we're just going to see what happens. And I just want to take this time also to thank each and every one of you for joining us. I want to give a special shout out to Yako Tsuki. Yako Tsuki. I hope I pronounced your name right. Just send me a DM. You guys are so sweet. They gave me a birthday board. So, oh my gosh. Aww. Thank you so much. Like with the birthday greeting. I appreciate each and every one of you. We'll see you guys later. Okay. Well, let's have like an after party thing going on in the Discord of Nello Mello. And hopefully I won't be frozen and there's not going to be more screen caps. I see you prod screen cap in my that's why i'm constantly smiling now because i don't know when i'm gonna freak yeah imagine if you close your eyes again and i'm kidding like i'm, I'm pretending to freeze now <laughs> don't don't know i know you're you're not you stop stop capping stop capping stop capping <laughs> okay, okay you got me uh, there i was like uh oh oh no i could but honestly though yeah uh I, there I was this I one you. time though when i was uh, hosting something i froze like this <laughs> i was like that Oh, don't do that, Nell. I know. I, I see you move, dude. <laughs> I can't, you're, I can't, you're really I can't. good. Yeah, I was so scared. I thought you actually did freeze. I was like, oh, okay, oh. for sure, for sure. Oh, but okay. but honestly, yeah. But honestly, oh, favorable, most valued player. So thank you, Luca, for uh, thank you, thank you yeah. so much. Exactly. Thank you so, so much uh, for I telling us. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. How many are we, are we in chat? We're at. What 13,000 strong. So big shout outs to each and every one of you. You're witnessing history here. Either those first championship or GG's second championship. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, they gotta take their time in this in, in this next picks and bands because a lot is riding on these next two games here. Mm -hmm. So it, it, GG has to win this. If they tie it out, it's gonna be uh Do Wu to take the victory. So again, both worthy championship teams, but we can only crown one. Exactly. Only one champion can be crowned. And of course, uh, both teams are very deserving to be in this spot, fighting for the coveted Koa champions. What? Um, like winning 1 million yuan is one thing, like mm -hmm. you know, being the champion, but the, the honor, the prestige of being known as the champions of Koa, I mean, there's no higher honor than all uh, dedicated, committed Identity 5 Pro mm -hmm. players. That's like the yeah. Mount Everest of yes. IDV. Yeah. And I would say it's more prestigious if you're the hunter that wins this because never in a time for Identity 5 has it been very survivor sided. So yeah. Dongshuan and Xiaoma, like for them to be able to make it all the way to Grand Finals was so good. Uh, Survivor is also, I think it just keeps on leveling up each and every year. So that's why you gotta, you know, give your praise and respect to all these people. And we're gonna go back into the Japan studios. What's going on? We're gonna see MX again. MX. I mean, the cameraman definitely has something for MX. I'm not really sure, boss. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the fan signs going wild among the crowds. Mm hmm. So it seems like we are gonna see Do Wu pick the Moonlit River Park here now. So Moonlit River Park is the one where we're settling things up, and Dong Xuan will be the first one to come out and hunt. So it seems like uh, this is a huge map. We're going to go through the entire competitive uh, maps here, the entire, the big maps. And Nell, it's it's, it's we're going to go uh, it's at Moonlit River Park here. So this is very uh, very telling with how they're going to go. Probably going to ban that Geisha of Dong Xuan. Yeah, I mean, uh, Geisha Moonlit River Park is the playground for Geisha, and right. not to mention. <laughs> Thinking about Do Wu banning Geisha for the third time mm -hmm. in a row, 
uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very strong map for Geisha. I can see why they're definitely going to respect Bandit at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, Dongshen, I'm not really sure what happened after the model service. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> the Dublin, you only get two, right? Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Two Dublins, two shots. That's all he had. That's all. Then you're cut mm-hmm. off for the night. I'm like, no, yeah, no, thanks. Exactly. Can't serve you anymore. It's, exactly. I need to replenish the bottle. So mm-hmm. that could be it. Um, that's 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 the, I would say it's it's hard to come back how GG did it but isn't it harder that you're able to get so like very successful matches at the start and you're unable to cross that finish line it's uh it, it's really tough and momentum I would have to say even though you know we're tied up in rounds definitely on GG's side so Dong Shuen has to be able to as the fan chan said there he's gonna get the massage the two-handed massage from the from his coach here Mm. It seems like he's, his smile is going to be put to, on pause for now. He's going to have mm-hmm. to go for the victory here. He's going to have to go for the kill here. Yeah. I mean, Dongshen, he... Usually in the later rounds, that's when he he, he will still continue to power up. Mm-hmm. So let's see if he's able to carry his team for the possible final. Actually, what am I talking about? This is definitely going to be uh, the final round. Because it's either a, a draw, like what you said, it's going to result in the win for Do. Mm-hmm. And only round wins can make it for GG. So, uh, yeah, if Dongshen is able to shut off um, GG survivors here with mm-hmm. a with a 4K, then I they're not gonna play the second half anymore. I feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it could end here and now, and that seems to be a little bit of the trajectory, right? I mean, with GG, they were able to shut down the the last. Xiaomo was able to shut down the last half of that round number five. And look at that. This is a different expression we're seeing on Dong Xuan, right? He's more reserved. He's more calm. He's more focused. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have to say, though, Cho Cho was kind of a language expert or a body language expert with... Uh, we, were t- we were looking at the expressions of, like, uh, the, the hunters, and she was saying, yo, D, D, Hunter D of FPXEQ seems a little more um, nervous here. So if, if Cho Cho is listening, I want, you to, I want to ask her, what, what what's the expression that you are uh, getting, your, the vibes that Dong Xuan is giving? Let us know, because that could heavily it, it's gonna heavily impact the match because he needs to be the one to set the pace for his team again going for the tie is the bare minimum he needs to do hello i'm cho cho i, I think <laughs> oh, mr Cho-Cho, president yes. yeah i think mr president is definitely gonna make it through uh she's he, he, he's, he's just for you now <laughs> thank you, you, sound like, you you sound like an animal crossing character <laughs> no that was cho cho that was the name oh, sorry yeah that's uh, sorry i didn't know that okay my yeah. bad thank you uh, <laughs> wait, wait, you do have a good Chocho uh, uh, really? impression. Yeah, you did it last night, remember? When we were like, oh, oh yeah. one for Mr. President. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we cannot ask Chocho for her opinion because the she apples. has all her apples on Dong. Do. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to say, Dong is ready to go, bro. <laughs> nah. well, wait, we were saying, wait, you said one for Mr. President. I mean, 1K? Or he's going to win this one? What does that mean? Let us know. I know. Let us know. N1. N1. Mm-hmm. And one more. And, and another one. And another one. Another yeah. one. Yeah, the kills coming in one after the other, taking things one at a time. I believe maybe that's what she's saying. Oh, she has spoken, Hodge. Trust. Trust. Trust in Mr. President. Trust in Dong Xuan. Trust mm. in his ability to 4K here. Or at least, you know what, carry the, the tie to push for the, the immediate win for Dou. So. Uh, we're going to head towards the picks and bands, folks. And I see a lot of emojis of crown. Oh. crown cr- okay, crown emojis for Dong Xuan and pandas. I want to see I want to see a flooding of panda emojis for GG here because it's it's anyone's game. They're tied right. up in rounds, but Do Wu has the advantage in points. Let's go. The crowns are coming in, flooding. Flood the gates of the kings. Mr. President making his way through. He's like, you know what? My armor's too thick for your slippers anyway. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's kind of... Dong Xuan, he's actually not banning the Antiquarian first. So mm. I, I think he's welcoming all that. Um, the priority is just to get the healing off, the mm. awesome support off, and right. the portal off. So I feel like that's uh, that's already a very good starting four bands. Mm-hmm. Which brings the question, GG. Mm. Uh, rapid Fire. Geisha, right. Geisha, no, Dream Rage, Dream Rage. Oh. Oh. Boom! There we go. Geisha was at the end, but it's still all good. Yeah, these have been the staple of Dong Xuan, right? To take it out. 
Uh, this does leave up the Ant to come out, but in a big map like this, it, well, it can work if he's working for that tie. So it still is okay, but the fact that he didn't ban out Antiquarian, that I think that might be an easy pickup for GG. I do have to... Um, uh, I remember Koa 4 now, and mm. GG faced up against... I forgot who the hunter was, but it was a gamekeeper. And it was mm. in this map. And they were able to sandwich the sir the, the, the one that was dead on chair at the middle of the, the slide. So I don't know. GG seems to love this uh this iconic map to make iconic plays in. So we're just gonna have to see Antiquarian Mercenary get picked up first. Uh Dong Xuan is choosing to ban more survivors here. It seems like it's the thief of prospector. <laughs> My god. Yeah, the Thief has created a lot of problems for him as well uh, in the Nyad match. Uh, it's really fair. It's a respect ban at this point. Uh, not to mention taking away the Prospector. That's um, It's already like cutting a lot off from GG. It's like already cutting like the left leg, the limbs off. Mm -hmm. um, but for GG, fortunately, again, they have a deep survivor pool. So having the Antiquarian and the Coordinator, again, you can see how much they value Coordinator, so guys. They do. Make fun of Coordinator, miss gunshots. Don't. Yeah, well, they, they make their shots count, right? They're, they, exactly. they're not throwing away their shot, as the Hamilton fans would once say. Um, and this also kind of makes Dong Shun think, should I bring excitement? And this makes him more, play more passively and allows the kite to last longer because uh, just the overwhelming support on Antiquarian and just this the longevity of that coordinator flare gun. So just banning out the Acrobat to round it out for, uh, yeah, because this is his playground. It seems like the Dancer is going to get picked up here. Again, it's kind of a big space, but at least the the, the palleted areas are going to be so hard to deal with. Yeah. Uh, especially like in third stop, if you're able yeah. to drop those uh, those da those Dancer boxes down, that's going to be yeah. uh, really Naya's tough. good here. Yeah, Naya's pretty good here, actually. Right? Mm. Like, if yeah, he wants yeah, to be yeah. more, you know. Um, I totally agree with you as well, like pertaining to um, the support coming in from the Fima Dancer and of course the buff going through the second floor, right? It right. gives him a, yeah, the vertical jump gives him buff, a speed buff as well. Um, but knowing the ocean, he probably would bring that as well. Uh, the Hunter actually has this trait as well, jumping mm -hmm. through, giving the speed boost when vaulting through the second floor. I mean, here's the th yeah, here's the thing ahead. though. I know you said Nyad, right? And it, with this lineup, it can work, but they seem so comfy with Nyad in Ever Sleeping Town. So yes, he can have that redemption too, but you're also giving the survivors like, oh, we know how to face your Nyad. Again, it's a bigger map. Um, mm. You're gonna have to play with a coaster too. Uh, but I mean, what else are you gonna pick if not Nyad, right? What well, wax Lucino. artist? Lucino. <laughs> Lucino. <laughs> Disciple. I mean, Disciple too. Can yeah. Work. yeah. I mean, it's a pretty big map, and they don't have Prospector. Uh, to choose from so maybe that would work could um, yeah. yeah i could i could see that happening yeah but honestly i don't think he's gonna bring excitement oh clark oh my oh. goodness the clerk on this map eli oh thank you so much for uh what's that the 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 information it was pp shah that used gamekeeper my bad it yeah. was the other yeah it was the survivors that faced i think the hunter of fpxq and they had that interesting uh lineup there that was in core four do check that out and that's when they won the championship, PP Shao with that gamekeeper. But Dong Xuan going with the clerk here, you know. How do you feel about that? Well, Clark is a very aggressive hunter going with the... He, he's definitely a, an aggressive hunter being able to get a 3k, 4k. But again, it begs the question, bring excitement or bring um, bling first? Mm -hmm. if, if I'm Mr. President right now, which I'm not, but if I'm him... <laughs> Uh, judging judging from what the Slipper Gang had done earlier on, remember, like, before the trade was even up, mm -hmm. he should give the gun first. Doesn't matter. It, it gives, it, it's like, take, in, take it off his mind. Like, you know what? I'm just going to shoot you. I'm not even going to care if you have excitement or bling. I'm just going to shoot you first and deal with whatever. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll deal with you. I'll assume you have bling. That's it. Yeah. Right? So, it's probably the game plan there. Mm -hmm. um, Dong Shen should pick up from that and bring bling. Uh, or yeah. aggressive. 6, 12, nah, he's not going to be able nah. to chase without Blink. Mm. I think Dongshan knows that he could just tie this one out too. I don't know if he's going to play as aggressive, but looking at the spawn points here, Ku Chao actually is going to be as uninterrupted as possible, spawning at first stop, while PPZ is going to be at fourth stop, and we're going to see a zigzag of 18 and PP Xia. So, Nell, what do you think is going to be the most optimal target here? Because uh, Antiquarian first chase, Coordinator first chase, Mercenary first chase is just a huge nightmare. 
Well, it really depends. If Pipicia decides, like in this location, right? If Pipicia decides to go to the second stop and and push the the traffic, because usually that's what they do, right? And then if, if he gets hit there, he rotates around the second floor, comes back out. The, the tram will probably be brought in um, by the dancer. Uh, he'll be able to transition to the third game. But because now here though, Doshin has excitement. Mm. Oh. So it's just the respect excitement, right? So you can you can call this aggressive just so he can down the coordinator right away. So I'm pretty sure he might go for the... Well, he has to wait for the cooldown, right? To start. But anyway, folks, it's going to be me, Nello, uh, me, Bosch Spice, and that is Nello Mello. We're going to be your casters for this championship round number five first half. It seems like he's making his way towards PP Xia here. Still 30 second cooldown on this... Uh, on this excitement so Nelda he has to play with this really well because he cannot afford to get hit by that coordinator gun without using excitement exactly and there's already a music box to support here oh and the bmc wow there's no one to deal with it he's like he's gonna assume he has blame that's it i'm not yeah. even gonna save the gun but look how oh, it's yeah. just so much yeah distance look pp's went all the way around here even though uh, Cypher Progress isn't moving as much, yes, he is you get eliminating some of the resources here. And now he's going to chase out Kuchel. Um, But wow, again, he has excitement and he just has to worry about a dancer that has no uh, stun ability. So that's going to be a little tough here. Yeah, I mean, the ch the first chase is going to be really hard. Kuchel already has already placed the music box down. Um, so honestly, oh, he's going to break. Oh, he's going to get stunned. Oh, no, Not quite. he's going to miss. Yeah, and now he's going to just pull it out. Excitement has been popped already because he knows that the coordinator is guns already shot. Kutel now uh, uh, just going for that uh, drop down hit. Thought it was going to be a free one. And now he's going to chase out in the open, dropping it here, spinning away, oh. just adding more distance now. That's why he didn't want to go to the second floor and jump off the window. He wanted PPZ to come for the support because he no longer has excitement. Very smart plan going on for GG here. Another thrust and another sweep. Oh my god, the sleeper gang. My mm -hmm. goodness, the Asian Garden PPZ. But he's gonna be the... Wow. <laughs> PPZ, unfortunately, unable to get that. But this is the constant changing of targets that you don't want to see, right? He was able to almost down the Dancer. Uh, he is constantly monitoring Cypher. So that's something that you want to see in a Clerk matchup, especially if you're Dong Shuen, right? He's going to get the jump going on uh, just from the fourth stop and continue on to chase PPZ. While all the Cyphers are being, most of the Cyphers are being touched now. None have been popped just yet, but one is well on its way. Exactly. Oh, and he's gonna miss! But the sweep is gonna miss! Oh, and he misses! He was supposed to be terror shock! What? Oh my god, it didn't register? The clerk's hitbox not registering well. He's gonna try to block it off, able to finally get the down onto the uh, the antiquarian here. So again, this is an excellent start. I would say it's a fair start for Dong Xuan. At least now he can camp out ciphers and prolong this game from uh, keep on going. And Eli did mention, it's like, this is gonna be a tough matchup. Uh, clerk on Moonlit River Park this is like playing Wax Artist and Arms Factory. So uh, let's see how Dong Xuan is gonna fare out here. Yeah, I mean, 18 is already in position trying to come and rescue, right? So basically, as long as he doesn't get doubled out, it's totally fine. But the one thing Dongshan is doing good now is at least he's watching the Cypher and, and recording them, slowing down the progress little by little. But 18, it seems like, is he going to try and body block? Uh-oh. Oh, going for the jump scare here. Nice. Hi hiding of the red light for him to get it. And it, yeah, it looked like he was trying to go for the body block. I don't know if it's going to be a little overextension here. Now, uh, it seems like Antiquarian actually got elbow pads. So oh. Mercenary has the, so he gave the elbow pads to use for endgame kite, but it seems like that endgame might be prolonged because two ciphers are still uh, moving on its way and one is far from being finished. But honestly though, like even if he gets a, yeah, I, I feel like the Clark is, uh, like it's, it's, it's just so anti ciphers at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But Gigi's doing a really good job pressuring at the same time. Oh, Kucha's gonna get recorded. Yeah, That's Mercenary's crazy. here. And also PP Xia is here. Uh, PP Xia does not have any items. No Tide Turner as well. So it seems like he's gonna oh. go for the hit onto the Mercenary to uh, drop him down. I think he's got some recordings here. He's gonna try to record PPZ blocking the window here, forcing him. Oh, the elbow pad! The flywheel as well. He's expending everything. PPZ oh my god, PPZ! Down. PPZ was, oh my god, that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. He, he missed the pad and he, he panicked flywheel. Yeah. So, oh my god, Dongshen is gonna get that. And mercenaries down also for the count. 
this is really looking so advantageous for Dong X. He is coming back and the teleport straight away. He's cypher controlling so well now. Whoa. He might even look like a 3k. Yeah, just oh, blocking down the yeah the pallet there, and now just ta ca uh, chasing Kuchao. Excellent trade swap already. He knows he can go aggressive here. We're gonna see the slide coming on in. Tries to go for the swing, but female dancer able to slide on down. So he has to not get too tunneled here. He needs to also focus on recording the ciphers as well as trying to down this uh, dancer because uh, not much resources are on the side of GG. He's gonna try and Ooh. go for another one, but look at this. The dancer doing an amazing kite with this uh, slide area yeah uh he's, he's gonna block oh he's gonna take all the recordings he need because he knows there's no oh, oh he's so oh. but he has a recording though oh he no he recorded doesn't. the pallet vault yeah, yeah. so yeah. no this is taking a while pp sha is gonna be here to try and provide that support blocking it off going for the straight up hit unable to get it again the mystery hurt box or mystery hitbox of clerk here and now is he gonna drop it down <laughs> able to get it as well Thank God, Slipper Gang! Long live the Slipper Gang! PP Shia's gonna take the tank now! Kuchao already done image and the flywheel push! Oh, um, this is such a pain. And now he's gonna try to record the Mercenary to stop objectives from moving. Still not out of the gate is GG. They're still providing that support, but Coordinator doesn't have any items to work with. And it seems like he's just gonna focus on... Oh, right on back to Kuchao here. Again, uh, just the constant changing of targets. He knows that the coordinator is going to try and take this uh, this coaster. So let's see if he's going to try to... Oh, no. Uh, it seems like he's going to try and fo force him out of this coaster area. Yeah. I mean, he's just... Oh, my God. But it's so hard because he no longer has bling, right? So he's... Uh, I mean, he doesn't have bling. He he changed into teleport. So he's basically just walking uh, right now. And look, is just going to keep continuing the same thing over and over again. Kucha exactly. has found... Oh my god, this is so hard. Yeah, he, he does have teleport though, so he's just waiting for the opportune time to go for it. At least he's able to chase him out here. But the dancer's box have been set up here at the bridge area. Pipisha has to be very careful now. He did end up in first off. I, I think they didn't press the, the button. And Kutao, he's actually going to be caught out here uh, in the god kiting area. So uh, that did buy him enough time. And now, Nell, that cypher is going to be primed. Exactly. They're just gonna leave it at 98. Oh, they know. Oh, he's this is gonna pop it. He yeah, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. My goodness, and the dungeon's actually in the middle. Will Kuchao be able to make it? Oh, the the, 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 tram, the, uh, the, yeah, the coaster. The coaster. He's gonna have to be forced to teleport. And this is the mercenary with actually one item. So PP actually don't no, PP Jia is gonna be here. So yeah. he's gonna he needs to go for this tie situation. Drop down. Uh, and he's gonna try and camp it out in this pallet. Let's see if uh, the mind games are gonna be played. No flywheel, so PP Jia is just gonna have to rely on going uh, in this area, downing him right here, and it seems like Dong Xuan is just gonna have to just go for the tie. Yeah, this is so bad Unless... as well. Unless... He can record? But the thing is, yeah, that's the thing. He, he knows that they're definitely on the other side of the gate. He can mm -hmm. just keep recording and de recording and recording. Someone... Someone needs to stay in the middle, honestly. Kuchao yeah. needs to keep the Nitas. They need to wait until Pipisha has expired or something and then uh, go with the dungeon escape. Uh, he Ooh. needs to keep the Nitas. Yeah, so that Dongshen won't go towards the mercenary. Ooh. I think that's, and that's what's right That's what's tough here because the coordinator can sit on the rocket chair for a while. But yeah, Dongshen is going to keep monitoring the cypher and this could be a tough exit gate open. He's, mo he's going in and out. He's kind of overextending here. So let's see. He actually, he, know he probably knows that no one has items. So Kuchao now, he's going to get spotted out. We're still frozen at 27%. And if he is able to down Kuchao here and now, it might be more than just a tie. Can Kuchao actually make it? Oh, he's going to go He can rescue. Here. He can rescue. Oh, oh wow. He's going to take the tram all the way to fourth stop. And now that opens up the exit gate. Oh, he's going to try no. to get a recording though. The tech recording. Mm -hmm. He's going to hit Kuchao. Oh, it misses just a little bit. But Posh. 17 seconds away and the tension's gonna be gone so yeah. Kuchao might have this chance to kite and get a draw for gg the gate's already open though posh yeah it is and now the dungeon's also here he's gonna have to try and uh see if if Kuchao, oh he's trying to get the, uh, the the perfume just to see if he can double back but he can't afford that also he has flywheel by the way gets the hit oh! and now dungeon is gonna be imminent he's gonna have flywheel can he time it perfectly though? It seems like it might not even be a factor here. He Dong cannot Shen catch up. up. Yeah, yeah, Dongshen can catch up for sure. The flywheel. Ku Chao, my goodness, in face of advers adversity, managing a draw against Dong Shen. I mean, Dong Shen's done, done the best he can here. He, can. Uh, he, he got a draw, GG. And honestly, it's just up 
to <laughs> to those survivors Whoa. to come up against um Xiao Mai Xiao the Ma. next yeah. So if you think about it, it was the survivors, right, of of GG to get the three and then Xiao Ma the tie. So this is actually very poetic. If Xiao Ma, it's it's Xiao Ma's turn to get the three man kill while do while uh, the survivors get the two uh, man escape. But then that was a tough matchup, I would have to exactly. say. Dong exactly. Xuan constantly changing targets. And this brings up the fact that, I mean, you got to give it up to him, right? We, we say that Clerk, you cannot play Clerk kind of tilted or kind of in a, in a, in a bad state of mind. He was able to bring it out and still get a tie. That's still very admirable exactly. from Dong Xuan. At, in this situation, right, maybe the tie is actually more than enough uh, for Dou to secure, oh, to secure a win through just getting draws because getting a draw against Shelma is very doable um, in the next half. Like right. those survivors have been doing it constantly, three escapes, three escapes. But um, but we have to take into consideration the factor, the X factor of Shelma getting that three K. Mm -hmm. Starting you know starting slowly like he 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 got a he got a two K disciple slowly building up mm -hmm. to a breaking wheel three K. So. I have to say, the possibility is still there mm -hmm. for both teams. Mm. 4K Shaoma could happen. And can I just say, no, this is this is really going down to the wire. It's not like, oh, it's a, it's a big point differential. One has it in the bag. No, this is tie or win or, uh, on, the, on the side. It's either win or win on the other side. And uh, I, I, I'm going to bring it back to some of the fan chants. You know what? They got to leave no regrets on the line here. They need to be able to bounce back. They need to face adversity and try and get the championship here. And bringing it back, right, we did see a moment where PPZ, unfortunately, the elbow pad didn't work out quite well. If that situation didn't happen, could have been a different story, but this is the reality we're living in. 2-2 two, two, GG and Dou, uh, and it's going to come down to the final half of round number five. Honestly, Kuchao bought so much time there. The teamwork is just phenomenal, right? Xia coming in for the stun, yes, that helped a lot. But Kuchao, the raw kiting. Yeah. <laughs> and and you can see for yourself the result until <laughs> the dungeon he he really is uh one of the like the ogs mm -hmm. um of gg and i i would i would safely say the backbone um uh, and it, it just shows the communications there ppz yeah there were some some comments going on about the uh the the, the, the moment, pad, yeah the pads and i mean they they've been playing five long games five mm -hmm. long rounds and Honestly, fatigue, uh, hunger, loss of focus can happen to anyone. I mean, I mean, even for us, right? Like watching yeah. more than thirty seconds, we, we, lose, <laughs> we lose focus straight away. True, true. Yeah, and if you guys, too. if you guys focused on the screen down there, if uh, it, th those were the win conditions, right? So it oh. is favoring Dou. Uh, Dou just needs the tie to win this, while Chama needs the three K, three K and above to win this. So exactly. that's that's the win conditions. I know people were asking for it, but this is the final round. This is the final standoff between these two teams. And I think it's one of the most intense Koa sixes that we have witnessed. And it'll definitely go up there as one of the most memorable ones because of how evenly matched uh, this team is and the comebacks that are that are being put on display. But now Mr. President has to leave it to his, his board of directors, his, <laughs> his cabinet members to kind of take this great. one for the team. And Shalma, the slipper gang. Let's hope he's got the size twelve slippers to bring to the table here. Exactly. He he he's like the boss of slippers. I, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> but he 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 has a lot of weight he has to carry for this last round because, I mean, man. I mean, just not too long ago we were just talking about him. Yo, Shelma, at least get a one k, at least get a two k. That's what we require. And suddenly now you're saying, bro, instead of one k, two k moments ago, now I have to get to three k. That's definitely going to add pressure to him, undoubtedly. Yeah. But you know what? It maybe, would. Maybe it's cautious. It, it, yeah. I would say, and like you said, like it's it com coming off of a 3K, you can get that confidence back. So I think it is a tough task ahead of him. Uh, but coming, he still has that momentum, right? He's still able to get that 3K uh, off of those survivors. So we're, we're just going to have to wait and see now because this is... Uh, yeah, hunger, fatigue, all that's gonna set in. But what what's your extra resolve? What's your your extra that the extra the X factor that you bring to the table for you to get the victory here? Because you need to bring it here and now and leave no regrets for your team, for whoever is supporting you, and for everyone in the chat. 
again, keep spamming the, the pandas and for the survivors of uh, Dou. Again, yeah, crowns. Let's go with crowns and pandas here. Crowns and pandas. And like, if you see moments ago, Shama was hyped up. He was like clapping hands like, yo, I'm ready to clap them. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's what, <laughs> what, what was meant by the gesture. Mm -hmm. But honestly, man, someone give that guy a massage. <laughs> he deserves it. <laughs> yeah, right? And look at the whole survivors as well. Someone give them a massage as well. Dude, um, one, yeah, one was closing their eyes, just like how you were closing your eyes and I was closing my eyes as well. <laughs> Just trying to get in the zone, right? This is the final the stand for both the teams. And even the fans out there, they're trying their best to cheer their favorite teams on. Just like you guys in the chat are trying to cheer on your favorite teams as well. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, no. What a time to be an Identity 5 fan. Exactly. Honestly, I I'm just loving how the progress um, is going on, right? That The growth of Identity 5 and community. And you heard Siler saying as well, we're, we're celebrating. Like, what, mm -hmm. Koa 6 now? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a long way that we've gone through, and honestly, I I wouldn't trade this community for any other gaming community out there. It's it's very unique, right? And we've we've been around in other communities as well. I've also hosted other communities, but there's nothing like an identity five community. The the just the inclusion of everything when it comes to your favorite um, cosplayers, fan arts, casual games, and also the esports community. It's just. I, I would have to say it's really unique and if we keep you know what cherishing it and we keep soldiering on this this could be a lot bigger this stage like if it's like this now what more in the future again sky is the limit for the identity 5 community and we're gonna find out and crown after this round we're gonna crown our koa 6 champion folks let's go we, do stay put guys with your drinks and your snacks because yeah, you, you would not want to be anywhere else for the finale, for the climax of the tournament to decide once and for all who's the champion of Koa number six. But we're going to head into the band pick straight away. Uh, Geisha, Breaking Wheel, yeah, those high... <laughs> Even Hermit, oh my goodness. Oh my the, yeah, he knows that uh, they don't want to deal with that Hermit. They, they've they seen it being heavily countered, right? And it seems like, yeah, Dohu is going to be playing towards that tie. Where they're going to lock in Embalmer Psychologist to start things out. So this kind of forces Shama to play a little more aggressive uh, because he has to get 3k and above, folks. Again, look at that. Just the fan sign. He got the 4k up. I want to see your four uh, number fours in the chat. Also, if you want Shama to get that 4k. But he just needs to get the three, uh, three man kill for him to be able to uh, solid solidify the victory for GG. Working on those side, uh, what, what's scary here, chat, is that if they aim for that tie, they might not be able to get it if they pay, play a little too passively or a little too uh, too much to the favor of uh, Shao Ma and allow him to just be aggressive and not rescue in the first chair or whatever, or just go for full blood. I think Do still needs to recreate that magic of the second round because they were the only ones to actually get a five point game in this matchup against Shao Ma. So that's still living in Shao Ma's head. So he's got to be very careful and not slip to that same tendency of switching targets for him to be able to get it. And it seems like we're going to see a wildling come and uh, lock in here. Well, uh, Antiquarian gets banned, uh, uh, Patient as well, uh, Mercenary, uh, we see Mechanic as well, Seer and Priestess. So solid bans. We're going to have one more ban. Maybe the Acrobat is going to get banned out. Hmm. He can bring out... What, what can he bring to the table here? Because he needs to get a three-point uh, game. Breaking Wheel is banned. That was his most successful hunter that he did bring out. I mean, Wax Artist, but they, I don't know. They did so well up against uh, his Wax Artist. So I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. He definitely has to bring that detention, I believe. We are seeing that the there are some communication going around. Hmm, interesting that he brought barmaids here could he be going for a dream witch here dream witch can actually bring that um that late game i, I would say the the 4k potential and they're gonna round things out with a weeping clown so i mean though are no pushovers they're they're not one to look um look past so they can in fact gear up towards a uh, possible dream witch here so rounding out the survivors here with a weeping clown last pick uh wildling and balmer as well as psychologist so now uh all eyes are on shauma's side here and what he will be picking mm -hmm. uh now because i i don't know with the <laughs> last barmaid ban dream which could be i mean it's available it uh, could be 
Good. But those prepared to tank up. Look at how mm. tanky their their Very lineup tanky. is. I'm just mm. thinking, and I was asking chat too, like what kind of hunter has a 4K potential on Xiaoma's side? Since his his breaking wheel was the most uh, the most aggressive mm. one to get that right. His disciple mm -hmm. didn't quite work out. Uh, he, he can't bring Bonbon bon because that plays too much to a tie. And mm -hmm. Nayad can also, but I mean, ta like you said, they're tanking up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has to go super aggressive here. His, he just want to commit and the heart. There, she's able to get it. There we go. We should do that next time. But <laughs> yeah, we should. We should complete do the the thing. I hope I don't freeze. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. But here, he, they're sort of like just leaving the choices of um, him playing high hunters because he doesn't really have any. 4K hunters, except for... Hey, it's Malm. Clerk, you think? Oh, BQ! Oh, okay. God. Wait. Very risky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. BQ and the, this lineup. Look, you got a wild lane. You got him. I mean, you can close it out with Embalmer, too, but you're playing too close to that tie here with the BQ, but... Exactly. Trust. We got to trust. Shama's cooking, right? Exactly. He has no choice, honestly. What can what can he play? Do you want to play the, the Disciple? Disciple's even worse. Mira, at least you can close up the distance much, much faster. Mm. Uh, with the disciple, you can leap with the cat, but without presence, it's it's not gonna be useful enough for him to pressure ciphers, and and the chase is not gonna be good enough. So here, Shelma needs to make it work. Mm -hmm. He needs to get um he needs to catch off he needs to catch um at least the the weeping clown or the embalmer off guard, or even get 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 the the psychologist out but honestly though everyone's such a hard target it's you a, chase <laughs> yeah it's 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 tough i mean yeah, yeah like you like you're about to mention you can make a case study for how each of them are so hard to deal with but exactly uh shauma will be on the back foot here since he needs to get a three kill so he's gonna Both. spawn right where everyone is at no one's at first stop so they're not gonna have access to the coaster so seems like to bring the fuck to him? What? Yeah, they are. <laughs> this lineup that doesn't have that much stunners. Yeah, we almost, almost always never see this kind of lineup. It's like they're surrounding the hunter like, yo, we're, we're going to force you to pick one of us. We're close enough for you to choose. Who are you going to go for? And mm. honestly, no one's good enough to go for. If he goes to Silver Tzu, three hits, it's going to take too long right. <laughs> for the three hits. Mm. Uh, not to mention ZYJ is in the perfect spot for a coffin play. Yeah. Um, and honestly, yeah, the the walling is a it's a no no. Oh, speaking of no no, is bringing all flywheels too. So <laughs> oh this God. is actually gr a great build. So yeah, they're really gearing up for that tie. And I know Yihua bringing in the uh, the tie tuner just in case, but they could just choose to let the embalmer expire, or if the embalmer is able to coffin anyone. So just a pretty standard blink detention trump card on Shaoma. So we gotta trust. <laughs> in Shaoma chat. Once again, I want y'all to make some noise in the chat. This is the last stand of GG versus Gowu. Once again, yours truly, Pot Spice and Nello Mello, your casters for this last half. Let's go, Shaoma, Bloody Queen, Bloodbath. He's gonna place the first mirror. Let's see if he's gonna hit. Nan is in the vicinity. Nan, the Weeping Cloud. Oh my god, will he be able to hit before he Ooh. uses the. No, Nan has already used up the rocket. Oh. He's gonna be far away. Yeah, and this allows him to actually go for the coaster. And I believe someone was coming out of the first stop just to push it. So Xiao Ma, he's trying to use the hunt trait. And yeah, that's just gonna be easy for him to just go for it right away. Blink is still on cooldown here. So the rotations are happening while Cyphers are moving on slowly. Let's see, Yihua is caught out here in the open and Silver Chi is already at the third stop. Uh, and Balmer is still there, but now the, the mirror is going to make him catch up. The drop down, let's see where he's going to go. He's going to drop down for the gods. Whoa. Whoa. Unable to get it, but still. That was pre. That was a premature jump, honestly. It was. Uh, but he still has one more rocket to work with. And this is why you see, even though you have that stop and the second stop open, doesn't matter. With one mirror, he can catch up. One mirror, catch up. So. Weeping Cloud is going to use the second rocket right away, uh, trying to make it to the second floor. Probably that Mama will be able to get a glimpse, but the mirror again! Oh, the flywheel! Posh! He will be able to catch up here. The body block's going to happen really, really soon. Oh. Oh my god. ZYJ managing that tank really, really nicely played, but Nan is not out of hot water. But the final rocket is going to allow him to at least make more distance, but Mira's gonna be up in three, two, 
one, and he'll be able to use the mirror to just down none. No more flywheel, no more rocket. He was in the vicinity, but will that be able to be enough? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, Nell, I'm finally back from being frozen, and we see <laughs> that the Wildling is able to support. This is just, I mean, an amazing teamwork so far on, on the side, and trying to get the push, unable to get it. Let's exactly. See. Yeah, he has no more rockets to use. He's still running the routes here. Cool down, blink cooldown will be done in just a bit. We're going to see another slide play here. He's going to try to uh, force hits out here. And now, get able to get the slide. Unable to get the mirror hit here. Oh my god, Nan is so close. He's playing with fire. Able to hit down the Weeping Clown. At th uh, Two ciphers have already been popped, though. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the risk, right? Like... You you have a you have a walling. You're really tanky. You have you you're playing with the tanky build here. You have a walling to support. But the thing is, while walling is doing all that supporting, all, remember only two people are doing the the decoding here, and you're actually fighting really really close uh, to these people. So Embalmer's gonna get the heal from psychologist. Uh, no, he's not gonna get the heal. Weird. I, I thought he would have a really good time in the Watch heal. out. Oh. oh my goodness, the boar was able to actually tank that hit. So now Yihua. He's going to try and gain the attention away with the Weeping Clown, though. ZYJ's trying to be a nuisance here. Wildling eats the hit, able to get the rescue. Tide Turner is going to bring him far away from this. Blink Ooh. is going to be used early on. This allows ZYJ to pop that Cypher. Yihua now, uh, it seems like he's trying to look for the best possible target. ZYJ has to get away from this Cypher. Let's hope that the Weeping Clown doesn't get um, lost in translation here. Going to go for a flywheel, and a hit is going to be a double down situation, but... Embalmer, if you're gonna coffin, uh, he can choose to go for the coffin. So now, will it change the targets here? Let's see if he knows where Nan is gonna be at. It's a really risky play. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, he has to play risky. Now, he might not even be able to find Nan. Nan will be able to heal up pretty heal soon. Up. Oh my god, he's just guessing that the route to hide will be here. He, he's just gonna change target totally. So that's really, really scary. Oh, but maybe it might work in his favor because. Wow down so fast second time now yeah so now this is the down of zyj so that was actually an, if you think about it an early rescue could have waited it out but no one was going to go for that rescue however weeping clown is already up wild thing is going to have wanted order psychologists are already used up that self-heal but now we're playing to the last cypher already and yihua not allowing shauma to even try and pressure down anything he's already here for that rescue yeah i mean Honestly, they're already starting the, the last Cypher, right? They, they started an additional Cypher far away. You can see two people uh, decoding at the same time. Shaman needs to be, needs to be able to farm uh, ZYJ here he does. And, and save the trade for late game. I think that's the thing that he absolutely has to do. Oh, has to be really careful. Will he be able to Terra Shock here? No, the oh. fuck? What's gonna happen? Cypher pop! The pop? Not happening just yet! Oh, What's happening here? It's a whole thing! Oh my god, unable to get it just yet! We forgot, he doesn't have... He doesn't have four time... Uh, right, four time right, right. Oh. oh, correct. Oh my goodness. So now they're gonna wait on the hit onto Yihua here. Thought that he was gonna go for like a self-heal. Gonna try to hit on through. And now breaks down this pallet. They have to time this perfectly now. The win condition for Dou is to get a tie. But a Bloody Queen with detention is still going to be a little tough. They're going to change up targets here. Let's see if he's going to try to bait a pop to happen. He's holding onto this mirror and he's also having teleport. Yeah, I think it's really smart. Uh, he, he wants to be able to catch one survivor straight off the bat. If he goes close, all oh, the, oh. the cypher has been popped straight away. And now with the detention, but again, oh, it's hard to chase. Bro. Yeah, he's unchaseable when he's on this boar. You can keep hitting. You can, he can tank a detention hit. Everyone is, uh, no one's, oh wow, the exit gate. Nan is actually going to be here. Flywheels oh. through, goes towards the pallet here. He does not have a mirror to use just yet. He's playing the, the pallet game here. He's going to go oh. through and he gets hit. But oh, Wild he... Thing's opening up the gate. But can he use the mirror? I think he can close the distance. He, he just needs to chair closer to the middle, use the mirror. Oh no, the gate's gonna be open. It is looking closer and closer. The who might be tasting the sweet taste of victory. It's, go it's open for us. The draw's gonna happen and we have it. We have our champions, ladies and gentlemen. Do Wu in an intense match was able to tie things up and they are your Koa 6 champions. First time they win it and look at that, the coach is here. Bring out the president. It was a hard fought battle and you've got to give it up to GG. But the knight, the crown goes to Do Wu.
my goodness, making the walling play work. Oh my goodness, though, ooh, finally, for the first time in history, ever since their establishment until now, defeating champions, former champions after champions, as they lift the championship trophy, they're finally the champions of Koa Posh. Beautiful performance, you couldn't have it better in Dong no, there oh he is, he's getting emotional, my goodness, again, can oh we see God. some crowns in the chat? <laughs> I mean, this is him like loving the survivors, right? Because the, they carried the the championship rounds, and they're able to get a victory. How can you not have a tear as well, or exactly. smile at the sight of Dong Xuan? The hard work paying off, and everyone in the crowd oh not a dry God. eye yeah. in sight, folks. Exactly. After all those sleeper slaps, he's like, "Yes, I finally, we finally did it. It was worth all the slaps." And mm -hmm. honestly, translation's gonna happen now. Let's welcome Chocho for it for the championship interview. Asking them to uh, talk about their feelings. The coach said he's feel, he feels really proud of them. And he definitely see all the efforts being paid off. All of them did work really hard for this. Uh, it's very hard to hear. Uh, Japanese uh, translations of Obli. Thank you to every fan. They have been following us throughout this entire journey. Yeah, every single cheer has, has definitely contributed to our strength and is ultimately winning today as, as, as a champion for COA. And then, yeah, uh, he will be coming up uh, to present the champion trophy to Dou. Oh God, so touch. I think Cho Cho should cry too because he helped you farm the apples. I actually did a bit. I'm not gonna lie. They are a bit sad with the Chinese interview. Oh. I was okay, okay, but I saw Dong Xuan cry, then I was like... <laughs> oh, the slippers slaps for my apples. There we go. Look at that. Oh All the God. hard work paying off, folks, for exactly. Dou. My goodness. Yeah. What a touching moment. Is that real gold? It looks like real gold. It looks heavy. Mm -hmm. 50 like, grams there, like set for life. Yeah, <laughs> like we said, it's he heavy as the crown, but now everyone's gonna gun for the crown, but Do Wu, you know what, they can celebrate. And you said we wanted to see them with the crown, they got one. Exactly. The crown emoji supports happening. They're gonna present the prize uh check the big check right they usually present the winners chocho -cho is too touch crying now to translate can't translate uh, wait, wait. i got this on my hand but i'm not crying wait, wait. <laughs> sure you're not oh, okay. yeah. one million seven hundred thousand oh my god huge i'll go on a vacation with this <laughs> my god. <clears throat> oh, and now you'll be re revealing who will be the FMVP. FMVP. Yeah. Oh, Honestly, who do you think it's going to be? Posh? <laughs> Should be Dong Xuan, right? I'm not sure. And Cho Cho. Maybe Silver Chi? Maybe Silver Chi, yeah. But ZYJ's? Uh, mm, we'll have point. to see. Here we go. 
Dong Chen. Yeah. yeah. How can we doubt him, man? Yeah. yeah, no, right. Mr. President. Mr. President, you have the keys to the city. F for president, bro. Mm -hmm. The letter F. Oh, sorry. That's not how you spell president. President. President, bro. President. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he carried, yeah. Yeah, he he carried best one, best of two. Best of three, he, he never lost. That's the thing. He never got a four-man escape from any mm -hmm. teams at so that's really oh, let's go let's go oh my god it looks like a world cup mm -hmm. mm. very prestigious for sure <laughs> oh more interview uh, yeah. oh. Thank you to my teammates. Uh, thank you, Identify. Yeah, I think he said most importantly, uh, for sure, teammates, they played really well. And then he said, this, this award definitely is deserving to all of them. It belongs to all of them. Congratulations, though Congratulations. their first Koa, maybe first of many. Who knows? Exactly. I mean, very well deserved. Remember they were. Remember they were in the bottom uh, for for a period of time, but but they they shook that shook it off, and mm -hmm. here they are. Like it, it's what defines them. They never gave up. No yeah. regrets. And that's what mm -hmm. defines the champion, folks. They redesign. They rebuild. They reclaim. I mean. They claim, I would say. This is the first of many accomplishments that we'd have. But you also got to give it up for GG. An excellent performance. And hey, they get exactly. still gun for that second uh, championship Koa. But tonight, the night belongs to Dou. Exactly. The night belongs to Dou. And of course, happy birthday, Fosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's just uh... so... It's just so mm -hmm. touching to see them and mm -hmm. you know you know like when you spend all your life trying to do something you know trying to achieve something that some people might say yo you're not doing the conventional thing you're not doing a convention orthodox job you're doing something out of the ordinary something not stable but they did it they're one of those many um who came who, the few who made it and honestly the determination to pull through mm -hmm. Um, it just makes the victory taste even sweeter uh, for Do Wu. The sweet nectar of the gods, the sweet taste of victory. It go belongs to Do Wu. And you guys witnessed it here tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. All the crown emojis and whatnot. And I'd like to also, you know what? If you guys want an after party, you know, we're going to head on over to Nello Mello server. So do check Let's us go. out there. Uh, Nell, any, any final thoughts, any final messages you want to give out to the people of the chat here? People of the chat. <sighs> I'm, I'm so glad you guys are here. If you want to join our after party, please do hang out in our Discord. We do not want to see you once a, once a year. I would definitely love to keep in touch with you. We would love to hear from you, about you. Um, of course, your feedback for any event because, you know, your feedback is really important to us. So, yeah, just very grateful that we are the strong ones standing from day one until now. And you yeah. guys are champions in every right too. And I would say it's just kind of poetic with how this ended, right? Like it's, it was it was an, such an evenly matched bout. GG, the storyline just wrote itself with GG wanting to claim the crown for the second time, but though having not to do that, mm -hmm. and it's just so poetic. And people are already talking about Koa Seven, what's gonna happen? You know, we still have to wait for a whole year. But as Eli said in the start, you know, Koa season being our favorite season, you guys being our favorite people. And I'm, I mean, there's not, not, there's not a better way to celebrate my birthday. So thank you again for the greetings. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for tuning in. But for now, we will be signing out. We'll be seeing you in the next big Identity 5 event. So please, for now, good night and keep playing Identity 5. Peace. Keep playing Identity 5. Yes, sirree.
I'm a fire. 